So it tells you all Oren? the Oren? Like A U R A? O U R A. Okay. Yeah, so it tells me like the steps of my sleeping and everything like that. Um, and so what it told me is that with the Umrah, it was about eight to nine miles, okay, of that, the approximation of eight miles, nine miles of walking, plus, um, yeah, about nine miles of walking, uh, 13, 15,000 steps, I don't know what it was, and it took me about two and a half hours to complete. Um, and bumping in the shoulders with everybody. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's... Wheelchairs it is, it's over your feet. For me, I, I find anything long distance, whether it's long distance walking, running, I'm not going to lie to anyone, I find it difficult. Uh, some people that are lighter would find it more easy. Mm -hmm. Like people that I speak to that weigh less, they find it like a breeze, nothing. But for me, it hurts my back, it hurts my feet. It's, a, it's you're grinding, you know, in these kinds of experiences. And then how, how did you get over here? You drove here today? I don't know why you did that. It was, how long is the drive, like seven hours? It's about four hours. No, no, it was about four hours. I just, I know there's the bullet train, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, it's just... Um, Sometimes I prefer being in the car, you know? I, I understand. And I, everybody, uh, people online are saying that this, there's something special about this Ramadan. Would you agree? Like, mm -hmm. is it, I don't know, maybe it's my first one, but mm -hmm. it seems like, um, it's, it has it been more packed than it usually is? I haven't come here before in Ramadan. I've come, I've done two Hajjs before on five Amras. Um, I haven't ever come in Ramadan. The Hajj is actually more crowded. It is, okay. Yeah, it's more crowded, uh, but, this for a non-Hajj time, it was it was almost comparable with Hajj. Um, but uh, in terms of the crowding, it's uh, it's almost it's frightening. It's scary. In fact, if someone's never been in a situation like that, for example, Westerners, if they're watching this, and they'd be they'd go to things like a football match, a soccer match, a football match, or, or even a festival, or a festival. Or rolling loud. Yeah, and what we're gonna say in that situation, maximum two hundred thousand people would come. Even mm -hmm. for a World Cup final, what are we saying? Two, three hundred thousand people. So to, to have a place where there's a million, two million, three million people. Three million in Mecca. Yeah. And and you have to organize that, you know. It's it's not easy at all. Mm -hmm. It's not easy at all. Man. It was so packed yesterday for Tarawi that I couldn't even like it was the people were lined up all the way to my hotel. Yeah. I didn't even I so I just woke up, I walked downstairs uh, after I made wudu, and then people were just praying in the lobby. And I ran into a Muhammad boy. I have a guy filming behind the camera. His little brother was there praying next to me. Like, I think, how old is he, 12? Yeah. 10. 10, he's 10 years old. It's just been, it was 33 minutes straight. It was a long, I have to admit, you, you seem tired of, I, I'm very. exhausted. Yeah, very. The sleep schedule is brutal. Yeah. Um, the, it, I don't know. Like, I don't want to be complaining too much, but it's just like, it's it just sleep, pray, sleep, pray. Mm. It goes tarawi, then Qiyam, then Fajr. Then Especially if you did your Amr whilst you were fasting. Yeah. Because that can be difficult. Did you, is that what you did? Yeah, I've done that. It's, it, was, it was a difficult day of fasting for me. Very difficult. But um, what, one thing which was inspirational was seeing people, like I've seen people that almost crippled, like handicapped, disabled. I, I saw a man hunched down and he was doing the Umrah as well. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Like the resolve that he must have had. So How old was he? Like you know? I would say about 80. Um, like maybe minimum 70 up to 85, that kind of age range. And he was crippled. And you see that all the time. People like disabled, people that are in a bad position, but they still manage to do it and they still want to do it. It's the motivation that puts them through it. And there's something about religious motivation that gets us to do things that we would otherwise not ever do. Like I would never fast 30 days consecutively. I would not eat or drink or have intercourse or anything like that for 30 days consecutively in a time period designated. I wouldn't do that unless there was a religious incentive. And so the religious incentive is powerful. Let alone do that and then, you know, do Umrah and then, you know, pray all this uh, tarawih and all those kind of things. It's very difficult. It's mentally draining. That's something I didn't really understand before becoming Muslim. Mm -hmm. Was that standing there, especially for 33 minutes last night, just listen. And he started crying. The reciter was, I don't know if you saw the videos, but he was getting really passionate because, yeah. uh, if I'm not misunderstood, that's when they're finishing the Quran. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was, I was there actually. When it was so packed. Uh, well, I was talking about Medina here. Oh, is he doing the same yeah. thing in Medina? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we had we had today's in a uh, very famous Khari, very famous guy that you know he was crying as well. He's reciting Khatm al Quran as well, the same thing, finishing the Quran. Mm -hmm. And what was powerful was that they, he did actually make du'a for Palestine uh, multiple times. And when he did that, everyone was roaring like, I mean, I mean, like everyone. This is, this is in everyone's mind, you know, mm -hmm. and crying and stuff like that, which shows you that the Palestinian case is still in deeply entrenched in the hearts of the Muslims all around the world. All around the world. But I didn't understand like how draining and like having to focus there 
and just like make dua and think about like your family, everything that you're praying for, for that long of a period of time, something like here standing and focusing could be so mentally, like afterwards, after the 33 minutes, like I, I collapsed. Really? I literally had to like lay down on the floor. But I was looking at everybody else and everybody looked fine. Minutes. I'm like, on, I, I have a lot to, so other people can I have a lot to Don't be greedy. get accustomed yeah, to. Exactly, because it's, it's good, bro. It's, it builds resilience. <clears throat> it, it's these kinds of experiences, you push yourself mentally. And um, what happens is your threshold for this kind of thing increases. Just like anything, anything else in life. Progressive overload. Yeah, it's exactly like that. I mean, it's, uh, I kept mentioning this before in the last uh, podcast we had, but that book, Willpower, um, where he talked about the fact that willpower can expand and stretch like a muscle. So you have to put yourself through these experiences. And there's something about, um, you know, draining yourself, having a detox, you know, not being always on the phone for half an hour. Even if you just, like, leave social media for half an hour and just focus on something completely else, um, fasting, all these kind of things, is it builds character and depth in character in a way I don't, I don't think anything else can. I definitely realized, and I didn't expect it going into Ramadan, I thought it'd be like, I was thinking of it from like the LA intermittent fasting, like, okay, it'll be good to like cleanse my body. Yeah. Like maybe I'll detox the toxins or whatever. Yeah. But I think the number one takeaway, because this is the last day of Ramadan, correct? Yes. In, uh, and then eat it. So can I eat tomorrow? It's not, tomorrow you're going you're gonna to fast tomorrow. So tomorrow's fasting. Last day of fasting. Last okay. day of fasting. Yeah, that's true. Then, um, so then after that, it's Eid. But the, what's powerful is you're going to have Eid here in Medina. You don't have Eid? You're going to have Eid here. You're going to do the Eid prayers here and stuff. Okay. Which is very beautiful, man. I That's thought it was extended one day. Like, there's a, someone was saying online that Eid was extended one day because something about the moon. Is that true? No, no, it's not extended. It's just like, because it can either be, Ramadan can either be 29 days or 30 days. Depending on the moon. Yeah, depending on the sighting of the moon. So they, they looked at it today to see if the moon is going to be, it's going to show for Eid. The, the, the moon and they, they looked at it and it's not the case so it's going to be after tomorrow so tomorrow's the last day of Ramadan okay so effectively Maghrib okay is when Eid will start Maghrib the, the, the last prayer tomorrow like 5.30 officially 6.30 you know officially that's shorts? in this country but Eid officially shorts? that's when Eid will start and then, and then I could eat you can eat and in fact it's haram not to because really? on okay. the day of Eid you cannot fast you're not allowed to fast on Eid day really yeah okay good yeah. And I want to fix that, but I would say the number one, I was thinking of it like from the health benefits and stuff like that, mm -hmm. like maybe I'm going to, I'll feel like a superhero afterwards. I think the number one takeaway has just been patience. Like that health wise, I, I'm not really sure what the benefits were, but you of know, fasting. of every, of like everything of, of the schedule mm. of the patience mm. of being around these people, of seeing the way that people are able to focus, um, having to like, comp like cause I'm a very short tempered person. Yes. I think because the, a lot of it has to do with social media, the fact that like everything is instantaneous. And so then having to wait in line when there's 30 people exactly. or being in a country here, like where if the police tell you to do something, you're not going to argue with the cops like I do in New York. You're just, okay, mm -hmm. this is how it is. Mm -hmm. Or if the hotel receptionist is taking a long time, just, just if, I, if we were in Mecca um, two weeks ago and they're taking, they're taking an hour to get me the room. Exactly, yeah. You're not going to complain. Like in the United States, you might have an argument, ask for the manager, or have no, a Karen moment, mm -hmm. but it's just patience. Okay. And hopefully, I actually, I think that I, that did help me learn a lot of that. Um, hopefully, that I, I got some mental resilience from there. It's true, but sometimes they can take it too far as well, let's be honest. Like, these guys here. Yeah, they do. Yeah, and I've had my fair share of uh, problems here as well. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the issues. Because everyone is frustrated. Everyone is hungry. Everyone is tired. And, and there's like, to get food here, like I say, it, this, this is, is Medina, it's yeah. hard. The Mecca was a mission, bro. Like, to get a burger, <laughs> I was standing there. But I was sitting down like a like a homeless man. People were coming because I, I had the ticket and I had to just wait. And I just said, oh, I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to preserve my energy for a week. So yeah. I just sat down, Yeah. you know, and I think people thought I was homeless. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, this is how it feels like, you know, to be to be in this position. Yeah. I was, same thing, too. We were praying yesterday. Uh, I think it was after Fajr. And I was just trying. Oh, no, it was right before Fajr. It was, um, it was called Sahur. Yeah. And I was drinking an orange juice and, like, having a... Um, a cookie or whatever and there was just nowhere to sit so i just sat on the street and the cars are going by yeah. and then like sitting on the road like a homeless guy but then the, like the weird dichotomy like sitting there like homeless like with the wrappers everywhere yeah, and then yeah. people asking for pictures it's like leave me alone for one second yeah, like this yeah, is yeah, not yeah. how i want to be seen <laughs> exactly. i'm hunched over like yeah. eating like a gorilla yeah, and yeah. then people want to take some uh, how do you manage that because it's like um he was telling me too muhammad was saying oh, like yo you're like famous here but like i come here to, to in medina to just kind of like get the peace aspect and to, to focus and I put my phone down I go to the mosque to just read Quran alone and then there's like oh there's always like a lot of people how are you right. uh, how do you manage that I uh, that's that's part of the life now I'm afraid uh, to say I mean once you're this famous 
I mean, even I, you know, I get it. I get it quite a lot, actually. Uh, coming here, I had to take a few pictures. I don't know how many people had to stop and take pictures of me. It's, it's, it's kind of... Um, on, what, I would, what I usually yeah, do like is go video. to places where so the people I know that my demographic are not there. So I know where that is. Ramadan, you know, so sometimes in the UK I know where that is. It's usually the areas which are... Um, there are some areas which, like, the elderly people go to, you know, over the 65s, certain times and stuff like that, certain parks, certain places. Same thing with here. There are some countries that are not familiar with your content. So if you know that, okay, these guys are staying in these hotels, so I'd go to that hotel there. Because mm -hmm. in this, like, for example, this area here, I know there's a lot of people that are going to be, like, English speaking. Someone knocked on my well, hotel Arabic room speaking. door to try to get a picture. Yeah. He woke I me up like he woke February. up Warner because <laughs> no, he thought Warner was my room. Yep. That's very inconsiderate, to be honest. Yeah, he was 15, place. but, you know. Yeah, but even then, I mean, it's... <coughs> it's still very Yeah, that's yeah. very, very inconsiderate. I mean, I'm very surprised by that. But things like that, you know... If you go to a place where you know they're not there, sometimes I can help. But otherwise, it's, it's, it is a bit of a, it is a bit of a juxtaposition because on the one hand, you're living the the hard life, you know, you're going back to a humble kind of life. Everyone here is living that life, everyone. But on the other hand, you you still are a celebrity, so you have to kind of deal with both at the same time. You could probably wear a disguise. I saw I saw Makachev with hey, he had giant sunglasses and a hood. Yeah. And a scarf. Yeah, the picture of Medina. It's like, oh, it, it makes a lot of sense. I wouldn't recognize him. I saw it, the way he took the picture with the hood and the glasses. There's no way I would recognize him if he walked right by me. Oh, really? So maybe, but it's so hot. It, it'd be hard to, to do that. <laughs> is, um, he, is he doing Ramadan now? Do I don't know. I saw a picture of him in Medina two days ago. Oh, is it? You, yeah. you were with him, no? No, no, no. With Islam? Islam, yeah. Uh, no, I met him back in Las Vegas, but oh, I, I didn't meet him here. Yeah, I met him in Shaitan. I saw that on, some, on Twitter or something. Yeah. I met him at a casino and he said, uh, get out of this place, brother. Like, you can't be here, brother. I was there, it was uh, a UFC event or something oh, like that. Oh, okay, fine, yeah. fine. Well, he's, yeah, he and Khabib come here quite often, Yeah, actually. Um, a, a lot of guys, I just see them, and that, that's a good testament to their kind of character, actually. Because you, you'd have to put on the two, everyone, doesn't matter what you're making, you have to put on the same two garments that you'd wear if you're actually going to die. Because if, you, if, you, if you're, if you're going to die in a slam, you have to put on these two garments. The two then, towels. The two towels, you know, uh, the Rida and the Izar, and then you'd have to, then you'd be buried in those two garments. And so, in a way, Hajj is a bit like a reenactment of the Day of Judgment, because the Day of Judgment, everyone's going to be raised up in this way. And so, it doesn't matter who you are and what you're doing. You're going through the same motions. You're going through the same experience. There's no fast track for this. I mean, I've only seen it with the very, very high elites where they have like a whole posse around them and then, they, you know, like, for example, royalty and so, and so on. But apart from that, even the most famous people, they have to go through the same crowding and the difficulties and all this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's good, bro, because at the end of the day, like, we can easily become um, very, very entitled and that can drive us. And then when we have that level of entitlement, it become, can become delusional. We think we're owed things that we're not actually owed. We can we can start people treating people with a bit of disrespect. We lose the humility, a good character. And so being in places like this, it reminds us a bit of the rough life. The Andrew Tate experience is a good example of this. Because the Andrew Tate experience is like, look, look how he was living, yeah? Very famous, very rich, had all this money, right? Everywhere he went was, was well known. But then he went to prison. Mm -hmm. And so he had to contend with the most difficult living after, li after having lived like a king, effectively. And it's even more difficult to live like, uh, to go to prison or to live in a difficult manner after having lived like a king. Because you're used to a certain level and then you're thrown into this situation. So by putting yourself in continuous difficulty, if you ever have to go to prison, if you ever have to go to a hospital, if you ever have to be put into a strenuous position, then you've already got kind of training for that. You're already accustomed, you're pretty much living like a prisoner already. Yeah, you need to have a little bit of that in your life, you know. I, f I feel like we always need that, especially in the West. Because, you know, if you think about it, bro, the way we're living in the West, where the layman is living like the king. Hey, guys. A king, imagine what he was, what kind of hey service. Hey, guys, I'm going to have to go to work. Come and give him great is not paying anything he wants to be here. Straight away. Uber Eats so, now we're going to leave the stream on. King would have. So, and then you guys just enjoy in it. order to Make really sure like, to strengthen right. ourselves, I'll leave you guys with the resilience in that. Actually, if th these positions do arise, then to put ourselves in these kind of positions is, is very powerful. And in fact, that's why a lot of Western people are moving to stoicism. 
which is this philosophy, yeah, it's called stoicism, which basically is the idea that you're not in control of anything, and and also asceticism, the idea of divorcing yourself from the world. A lot of Westerners like to go to, um, for example, China or India or anywhere else, and indulge in Eastern meditative practices, you know, meditation, these kind of things. They restrict themselves intentionally. Yeah, because they realize that overindulgence in the living that they're used to is actually destroying them. Mm -hmm. But with it, that isn't, once again, there's not really a, an ob obligation for them to do that. And it's, it's not moving towards a particular objective and, and true purpose. In Islam, there's an obligation and it's connected to a true purpose. Right. So everything, and you cannot compare. And I would, if anyone has been here in Mecca and Medina, and I've done anything else in the world, in any other religious practice, you cannot compare the two. The seriousness, the amount of people, the dedication, the hours, the actual practice, nothing compares to the religious practice of Islam. We're being honest. No, I haven't ever experienced anything like this in my life. Yeah, it's it's, it's been brutal. Everyone is serious about it, dead yeah. serious. Whether you're a child, whether you're an old person, whether you're somewhere in the middle, whether you're, you know, able or disabled, whatever it may be. Right. Everyone is serious. Yeah, during the prayer yesterday, I was like, I was struggling. I was like mentally, like I got to do this. I was like, it was it was it was genuinely like really hard to finish the 33 minute prayer. Yeah. And then I saw his brother, the 10 year old, reciting the Quran in time. Uh, with the reciter and he was there doing it he had to sit down for a couple seconds but he was like he was locked in i'm like how am i having to struggle when somebody half less than half my age is able to do this and then just remember that helped me stay back in the mode and realize that uh and even yesterday like sitting in the majid reading quran seeing like five-year-old kids reciting quran like while they're reading it like better than than i could in, in years and it's it's a reminder about how seriously people take this like the, like you said the old men walking around but i'm curious what what, what was the I mean, you've done uh, Ramadan your whole life. Mm. What do you think this specifically um, is something that you focus on and learn the most? If mine this was, Ramadan. Yeah, this Ramadan. Do you know, like, honestly, what I, what I do is I try and make dua. I try I really think about dua is supplication. I try and supplicate for myself, for my family, for my community. And this Ramadan, which has been different, has been a lot of the dua I've been making has been about Palestine, to be honest. Sure. Like so much of it, I would say maybe 60 to 70 percent of it, genuinely, because it's um, it's something in the in the hearts and minds of everyone, and, and just seeing it, I feel like it would be selfish of me not to do that. One can really see what kind of a person you are by what kind of du'a you make. So if you can, mm. if you make du'a for, if you make supplication to Allah that all you want is things in this world, then you're a worldly person. Right. If you make du'a only for yourself, then you're a selfish person. Mm -hmm. And if you make du'a for yourself and for the community and for people that are in pain, then that's the kind of person you are. You're a communal person. So, uh, you know, I've been trying to make more and more du'a for my family, my loved ones, the community in general, the Muslim community. I'll make a lot of du'a for them, but in particular the Palestinians. And I think there's something about this time round where Palestine has been attacked, which has really brought the Muslims together in a way I haven't seen before, to be honest with you, uh, coming here. I've been coming here a lot, but I've not seen the unity that I've seen this time around. The emotion of the Palestine. You can tell it's on everybody's mind. Oh, it is. It is. As soon as, the, as, soon as they, they mention the word Palestine, it's like everybody knows what that means. Right. And so, yes, th that's what I've been focusing on this time around. But also, I've been trying to focus a little bit more on my qualities. Like, I'm a bit of a wild card myself. I'm rough around the edges. I'm trying to work around, like, on certain qualities. So things that I want to improve on as an individual. I want to become more humble. I want to become, I want to remove my vanity and my, you know, arrogance and these kind of things and um, anything like that, or any negative thing. Because, uh, you know, sometimes we focus on things we can do like prayer and fasting and stuff, but we don't focus as much on, on the virtues. And, uh, you know, that's what I'm, I'm trying to improve on that as well. Uh, that's what I, I would say. I had a similar experience. Like in the beginning, I remember I was asking you guys at Hoshi Dochi in London, um, like, is it okay to ask for worldly things? And the common answer, I don't know if it was from you or from Warner, but it was like, you're supposed to ask Allah for, for everything because who else are you going to ask for? But every time I put my head to the floor and I would think about like, I mean, I was banned on Instagram Without during Ramadan parties. in Mecca with Abu Tamiya during the stream. And so sometimes I'd make dua for that, like, can I have my Instagram back? Or specific things like wealth. Um, but it, it just, like, while I'm making dua for that, it felt trivial. And it's like, why am I asking for these worldly things? And it, it almost seemed like a sign that I wasn't supposed to be, that I could ask for something greater. Like, instead of asking for my Instagram back, 
how about I ask for the ability to remove that need for that in my life? Mm -hmm. Why do I need that? Like, I only want that so that I can make more money and so that I can bring people to my stream. Well, if people want to find that, I'll find another way. And, you know, th there's always, I think there's a step above a lot of the worldly things that you ask for. If you think about why you're asking for that, there's something greater that, that you could look for and show gratitude for. Um, I think that's a very mature way of thinking about things, bro. Honestly, and, and there's nothing wrong with asking for both, uh, the, the Instagram and, and uh, the afterlife things and, you know, the virtuous things. But it's, it's a good way of, of thinking about things. In fact, in psychology, there's, there's this thing called trait neuroticism, um, which is, is basically when, when something goes wrong in someone's life, their ability to moderate their emotions. Basically, that's what it is. It's one of the five main emotions or five main markers that psychologists look at when they're looking at um, an individual and their makeup. So trait neuroticism is one of, the, of those things. And, um, and so if, if one, th for example, let's take your Instagram thing as an example. If something bad happens in someone's life, a person who thinks of things in a very low or primitive manner, let's say, will ask questions like, why is this happening to me? Why me? Why it was me? Mm -hmm. Why is this the case? You know? So victim mindset. Yeah, exactly. The victim mindset is the most primitive way and it's the most useless way mm. from a psychological perspective. The weakest potential way. It's like almost the infant uh, level of dealing with a calamity in one's life. Mm. And then you've got stage number two where someone can at least evaluate and say, okay, well, you know, it's a bad thing that happened, but maybe there's some good things that come out of it. And then the highest, the pinnacle thing is that when bad things happen to people, they think of the best possible reason, or best possible thing that, how that connects to their life. So for example, the Instagram thing is okay. The Instagram thing, they've banned me on it, but what does that actually mean? You can start thinking of it from a dunya and deen perspective and a manner, you can frame it in a narrative, which is actually favorable. So you can say to yourself, well, they've taken on my Instagram, but it's better that they've taken my, my Instagram at say one point whatever a million than at five point something million because it would have been more painful. Right, sure. Okay, that's one way of putting it. Or another thing is they've taken away my Instagram, but by them taking away my Instagram, they've made me into a case study, a historical case study. I mean, they're mentioning your name in the Senate, for example. That's a pretty significant ordeal. That makes you eligible to be spoken about and written about actually on a historical level. Before you were just a YouTuber and a streamer, now you're a historical figure. Now on, someone can, can write your name, Sneeko, and, and the case where he was removed from Instagram and Meta in the year such and such, you can be referenced. And, I, and in fact, it, you can be referenced in a way to show how these organizations and these major you know, uh, social media platforms are censoring certain things which they consider to be disfavorable to their own narrative. Another way you can think of it is, well, it's made me think of new creative ways to spread my message. Mm -hmm. It's made me focus more of my effort on just these other platforms. It's made me um, think about diversifying not just my social media pla um, portfolio, but also diversifying my life portfolio. Mm -hmm. Because I realized that if it's the case that by a click of a button or decision of a decision maker, someone can take me off a platform like Instagram or YouTube or anything else, then I shouldn't allow these people to have that much control over my happiness. And therefore, I need to bring happiness from within. Right. You know, and, and that's something that the Stoics speak about. They call it the dichotomy of control, where they say that in reality, if something is not in your control, if something, you've tried everything you can within the law, within the parameters, within what's in your control. Once you've tried everything in your control and the thing still happens, you would say, okay, well, then I've tried everything I can. This, it's out of my control. And we would say, from a Muslim perspective, it's qadr Allah. It is the will of Allah that that happens. And the will of Allah is always good for you. Like, even bad things that you may think are bad for you are actually good for you in the long run. There are many things maybe that happened in your life, which at the time you might have thought were bad. But when you look in hindsight, think, okay, well, this happened because of this reason, and this has helped me in these ways. And so... Uh, the reason why I brought this to your attention is just to show you that sometimes bad things can be good for you, but the way you frame them in your mind is what makes the difference between someone who thinks of things in a primitive, ma primitive manner versus someone who's thinking about it in a mature manner. And b by the way you've just framed it, it's clear that your ability 
to look at the world in a, in a perpetually optimistic way fits more into the more mature category, which is a good thing. And I also realize that there's no other outlook. There's no other way to view life. Like, there's, there's no benefit in seeing it from a victim mindset exactly. or having a pessimistic view. Like, how does that benefit you at all? It doesn't. The best way to go about life is to think that everything, to try to see the good in everything. And then even if things are stressful and there's more attacks from different angles, the fact that that's going to harden you and you're going to be a better person and be able to avoid that in the future. Uh, it's part of the frustration is you, even someone like him, He's like, oh, I've seen your stuff everywhere. He doesn't know where I stream, mm. you know. So, but that's gonna, it's gonna make me um, a better content creator and figure out how to advertise myself in, um, in different ways and, and how to get the content out in a way that other content creators don't need to think about it because they have access to the platforms. But then once again, it seems so trivial because then, I, again, I've been making lots of du'a for Palestine as well, and it's like, the fact that I, like, even that's a struggle, you know, losing a platform when these people, obviously, we know everything that's going on. Mm. Um, it's, it seems so childish really to, to think that that's any any sort of struggle and so i think everybody here has been um i i, I definitely can feel the, the the same sentiment that everybody here has been thinking about mm. about palestine as well mm. um but do you think that next year it's going to be the, the same sort of attitude do you think that the the amount of people here right now is because of what's happening in palestine is it because it's the fastest growing religion what's the reason that there, there's so much energy here right now to be honest, in Ramadan, this place is known to bring a lot of people in Ramadan. It's a standard thing because, you know, in Ra you've got the rewards of Ramadan and then you've got the rewards of being in one of the mosques. So when you combine the rewards, you have like massive rewards and people just want to, you know, people just want to take those rewards. And you can see it's, it's a historical thing for the last, I think, 10, 15, 20 years. It's always been packed. But as, as I say, I think the energy is different. And that energy is because of Palestine, I think. That, that energy yeah. of people are now looking, making longer du'a, they are wor working harder. I think that that, that oh. has changed the game. Is it good? What's wrong? Huh? The battery's dead? Okay, it's fine. Thank you, sorry. Okay. Yeah, so I think from Somebody that angle, yeah, the Palestine thing is definitely the volume, so um, a game changer from that perspective. But the, the, it's always been crowded like this. People have always been serious. And if you come and Hajj, inshallah, which is the next level up. That's in June, right? It's, it's in June, yeah. I have to look at the, the calendar. It's, it's, it's and there's 30 of you guys in here with eight likes. Come on. What are we doing? Come on, like it up. It's the Hijjah. It's the month of Hajj in the Islamic calendar. It's also synchronized with the moon? All right. Yeah. On. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so this is uh, maybe, yeah, uh, June sounds about right. If you, if you do a Hajj, you'll see a different level, and it's even harder. The walking is more, you have to, now, you, you'd have to go to a place called uh, Mina, and, like, you're going to be sharing a room with, like, 20 or 30 other men. Uh oh Yeah, and it's going to be difficult, you know, you're going to be... You have to do that? You, um, when you say you have to, it's not obligation. Uh, it's, it's, not a, it's not a pillar of, it's not a pillar of the Hajj according to some of the schools of thought. But it is an obligation according to all of the schools as well, apparently, uh, effectively. But you can stay for two days, which is the obligation, in that place. Or you can stay for longer, which is more the recommended action. So the Quran says, فَمَنْ تَعَجَّلَ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ مَنْ تَأَخَّرَ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ لِمَنْ اتَّقَى So if you stay in two days, for two days in that place, there's no problem for you. But really and truly, there's differences. Like you can, you can do a Hajj, which has all the obligations inside of it, like going to Muzdalifa and going to, you know, Mina, um, spending time there doing that. Obviously, Arafah is a, is a rukun. Arafah you have to do, you know. It's just, it's just basically it's a, it's a small mountain that you go and uh, you, you make du'a the whole day on there. But there are things like Muzdalifa is very interesting because it's a rocky floor, the desert. You're going to be walking in the desert and you have to sleep. I mean, you don't have to, but it's, it's sunnah to sleep in, on the floor in the desert. In the desert? Yeah, effectively it's the desert. I mean, there's, there, are, there are people that, have, that sell Coca-Cola, or maybe not Coca-Cola anymore, but drinks and, and ice cream right, and, right. Stuff, <laughs> oh, yeah. and stuff like that. But it's, you, you, have, you get a sleeping bag and you'll sleep on the floor, for example. And people do it. And it's very interesting because you have a very sweet sleep when you mm. do that. It's like, it's very, because you're so tired, you've been walking for such a long time. Now you're literally camping in the, on, on the floor in mm. the desert. And everyone, you, you're next to people that are strangers. Someone from Nigeria here, someone from Bangladesh over there, someone from Pakistan, someone from Egypt, and you're just sleeping and you're sleeping back. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's an experience and a half. Um, very interesting. And then you get your, 
get your head shaved off. You've done that with Umrah as well. You do the same kind of thing. Do you have a shaved head right now? Yeah, yeah. I have a shaved head, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I decided to. I have hey, to it doesn't look that bad. You know, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> <you know? laughs> and so I realized during Ramadan how the absence of something makes you appreciate having it so much more. Like the yes. way you described the sweet sleep. Like getting a good night's sleep here is like a probably equivalent to what heroin is like. It's just mm -hmm. the, the, the dream state that you get to be in, the appreciation you have. Or like even breaking fast. I've never appreciated food more, never appreciated sleep more. Uh, I think that I, I would recommend that to everybody watching. And then also the, the, the fact of um, you were talking about good deeds and how you're, you know, it's multiplied during that month and, and during this month as well as also being here. Mm -hmm. um, it made me think about like things like charity in a different way or being kind, or when someone says salam alaikum, replying like greater than how they were, um, greeted you, mm. like with the walaikum salam, with more gratitude and more mm. peace behind it. Mm. Um, I, I haven't, I didn't think that way before, and, mm. and think about it like, like good deeds in terms of currency. Um, I never really thought about zakat like um, in that way. And uh, do, you, do you remember the, um, the charity that we were promoting back in London, uh, Project Iftar? Yeah. Yeah, we broke the record of uh, of sixty thousand, and now I think we're at a hundred thousand oh, dollars right man, now for, so for people. That's really good for people in Gaza. Uh, someone had a question for you. They're, they're yeah. wondering, uh, can they do zakat online, or does it have to be? Does it require that you do it in person? So there's two kinds of zakat: the zakat al mal and zakat al fitr. Yeah. So zakat al mal is like two point five percent of your wealth, um, and zakat al fitr is effectively feeding for every member of your family that you're responsible for somebody uh, let's say for example the meal is worth five pounds sterling or five to six dollars um for each person in, in the family you'd, you'd have to f pay that classically in the books of fiqh of the books of jurisprudence they would say that you'd have to you know give them the actual material mm -hmm. so for example you'd have to give them dates or you'd have to give them barley or you have to give them wheat now because it's so difficult to find people especially in the western world who Me are too. so impoverished that you would actually have to give them dates so that they can uh, they can consume. Doing it online is the main fatwa that m most of the scholars of Islam, they, they follow it now or they do it. But obviously it's much better if you could find the impoverished people in your... And it usually happens before the, the, the Salat al-Aid, the, the prayer of Aid. In our case it will be, let's say, Wednesday. Wednesday. In Salat al-Aid will be Thursday or something. So before the Salat al-Aid that should happen. That's the Qatul Fitr. And zakat al-mal is 2.5% of your wealth. Um, that obviously has conditions and so on. It's how, how much wealth you have, which is not... I mean, you, for example, your properties are not included in that. Mm -hmm. They're not included in that. So if you have houses or property portfolio... It's like zakat evasion. No, not really, not really, because it's, um, it's, it's not really... Um, that's not the wealth that we're talking about. For example, if you own jewellery, right? We're not talking about money on the jewellery. We're talking about money that... If you have, if you have, for example, a business and um, the stock that you have that's left, that's left after the year has elapsed, that 2.5% of that, or let's say you have savings in the bank, uh, let's say you have 20,000 or 50,000 or 100,000 in the bank, you'd be, you'd have to do 2.5% of that. So that's zakat al mal. Zakat al fitr, as I mentioned, is if it's just yourself that you're, you're right now you're not married, it would be Muslim people that you're responsible for. So even if you, very interestingly, the scholars say, if, for example, even if you have like a wife who's pregnant, yeah, uh, so long as the baby is over like 120 days, some say you have to pay zakat al fitr for that particular. For the baby too? Yeah. So if you, children, by the way, are liable for that, but the father pays for it. Oh, so, okay, okay. So for every child that you have in the house, you pay zakat al fitr for them as well. Mm. This is the classic view. I mean, this is no controversy, so. The al Fitr is, is once a year, and uh, Islam doesn't have, by the way, taxes, taxation. Like, there's no, the, in the Islamic State, there's no such thing as taxing 20%, taxing 30%. They don't tax your income. There's nothing like that in Islam. Some scholars have tried to squeeze that into the Islamic paradigm, but it's not, let's be frank and honest, there's nothing like that in Islam. There's only Zakat and Sadaqah. Sadaqah is giving charity. But there's no such thing as dariba. Dariba is this idea of taxation or taking 20%. Even in everything. Egypt, I know that they have that in, in the UAE. And yeah, they have it all over the Muslim world, but it's not something Islamic. It's something which they've taken from the Western world. Okay. 
Something that the government's implemented. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not something that's it's not Islamic. Um, that's not to say that, I mean, there's a whole discussion as to is it possible to take money for taxes from people or not. I'm not getting involved in that discussion, but clearly from an Islamic perspective, there's no such thing as taxes. It's not an Islamic concept. Whether it's possible to put it on, and it's, some scholars will say no, some say this is actually a kind of theft. Why are you stealing from the money of the people like this? One of the seven uh, greatest sins in Islam is usury. Yes. So. But taxes are different. They're not, not necessarily usury, but it's, it's the government now taking it from the people, right? Right. But in this situation, um, I'm saying that Islam doesn't really have a system of taxation. It has only a system of zakat and sadaqah, those two things. I think you, that was good da'wah for a lot of people. They, they, they might convert just because I, of that. I, I know that in the right wing, you know, this idea of small government. That's yeah. an idea, this is actually a point where we agree with uh, what you would call classical liberal, fiscal liberals on the right. I'm, talking, I'm not talking about social liberals. I'm talking about monetary liberals, the economic liberals, the ones who talk about small government. We would agree with them on that point. We would say, like, really and truly, this idea of exuberant taxes and stuff like that, like, especially in, in Europe, 30, 40, 50 percent, this is completely un-Islamic. I don't know if you saw those, um, well, I got some backlash, and by extension, you got some backlash for that, that podcast you did uh, with Ali Dawa and the Warner oh. for, um, uh, that was the one thing where I said that, like, a man needs to guide his woman in order to, like, a man helps his woman, like, come closer to Islam, and then I, all the, a lot of Muslim feminists got upset, and they were saying that, like, uh, more yeah. women than men are converting to Islam, they don't really need to. You mind yeah. grabbing some waters for, for yeah, thank you. Thanks, thanks, uh, did, did you see any of that? I, I think I saw it, but I didn't click on it. Okay. I didn't click. I, I just saw it. I said, you know, this is one of those things, you know. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. I appreciate that. Man. Is the tea still coming? He called it in. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, make another call. So I, I, they, they could probably see we're, we're getting tired, but um, it's good. Oh, anyway, we were getting, well, I was getting backlash for saying that. Yeah. Yeah. And then I explained it. I had this debate with the, with the brother, brother Adele. I don't know if you know who he is. What's his name? Uh, Adele. I don't know if he, he's there right now. He's doing something where you have to only stay in the Majin for... Oh, at the Kef, yes. At the Kef. So, he, yeah. so we met there and we spoke about it. He was saying how, um, how, how important women are and that like, a man is not supposed to... Uh, is not in charge all the time. But do you remember, do you remember when I said that on the podcast? Like it, it goes, man... Um, yeah, I mean, people make a big thing out of nothing, uh, nothing because I do remember you saying that and it, I, I don't see it was that inflammatory, to be honest. I mean, I, I'll be honest... I, it, I was trying to decipher what you said or meant or whatever, and I think Ali even challenged you on the point. He did. He, was, he, he, he said like, that more women convert than men. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's not like everyone agreed on the, on the panel and everyone was, like, singing from the same hymn sheet and stuff. I think Ali was responding, and I think he was trying to maybe politely disagree with you on some issues. Mm -hmm. But for, for why would someone be so sensitive as to find that inflammatory? I mean, there are contexts in which your statement could be considered to be true in the sense that for example, a woman being guided by a man in Islam. Uh, for example, a husband, right? Mm. That's or a father. Like, or a father. Like, for instance, the, the hadith of the Prophet, Kullu ra'in mas'una an rayatihi, that every shepherd is responsible for his flock, and that the man is responsible for his flock, and the woman is responsible for her flock. So the man is more, is more responsible than the woman because he's responsible for the woman and the children. And so there's clearly... a an added responsibility. That's not to say a woman cannot find guidance by herself. Yeah, I mean, for example, if you had the Quran and the Sunnah, she could, it's, not, it's physically impossible for her to, it's logically impossible for her to find guidance. For example, there are stories in the Quran like Mary, you know, mm -hmm. she was isolated and she found guidance just through Allah. More so Pharaoh's wife, Asiya. Okay, she was Pharaoh's wife. Okay. The one who adopted Moses. Uh, yes, uh, so, so they both adopted Moses, I and mean, Pharaoh himself, him, you know, um, adopted Moses in a sense because he was Moses grew up according to Quran in Pharaoh's household. But Asia was um, was praised in the Quran as a result of going against Pharaoh. You see, because Pharaoh was against her, he was, and she even made du'a to Allah. She said, "Rabbi najini min Fir'aun wa amalihi wa najini min al-qawm al-zalimin." that may God Nejini, like save me from Pharaoh and his people and save me from the oppressive people, which are Pharaoh's people. You know, so Allah praised her because despite having all the forces against her, she was able to find guidance because she, she saw, but then you could argue, well, just because she saw Moses and Moses was in a sense, even though he wasn't related to her, a kind of role model 
for her. But nevertheless, she was, it wasn't like a father or a you know, husband guiding her. It was, in, in that story, it was, uh, she found guidance through Allah mm -hmm. because she saw the prophets, who was in this case Moses and, and Aaron, and Allah praised her for it. You see, the Quran doesn't have this, I mean, if, if we did a, an honest assessment of the Quran, it's not, the, to be fair, the Quran is not sensitive to the idea of women having power. Do you know what I mean? Like, no. for example, what do you mean? let me give you an example, right? So, there in two surahs in the Quran, chapter number 27 and chapter number 34, Surah Surah Naml and Surah Al um, Saba, chapter 27 20, and 34, in both of those chapters of the Quran, a story is related of a woman called Saba. In fact, chapter 34 is named after her, okay? And she was a queen, okay? Now, it's really interesting because in the previous surah, in the case of uh, in the first surah that I mentioned, Saba was depicted, uh, sorry, Pharaoh was depicted as a, as a tyrant, Pharaoh, okay, in Egypt. But then Saba, who was at the same time as Solomon, uh, Solomon, or Solomon you know, King Solomon, She's depicted as a very wise woman, and she was a queen. So, for example, the Quran, here we have a woman, okay, in the Quran, who is a queen, who is depicted in a very fair-minded, you know, wise way. She, she even sought consul, uh, consultation from her in a council as to what to do with Sol uh, Solomon, the king, and who is also a prophet, according to both religions, actually, Christianity and Islam. Um, and so, for example, Solomon, uh, or Solomon, he, he threatened, uh, or he threatened Saba in the story, and then she didn't know how to respond. So she, she went to her, 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 her you know, council, and she asked them, you know, in, uh, in the Buluka, she said, no, in fact, firstly, she said, what do you, what do you advise me to do? So they responded and said, uh, we are uli betsin shadidin fa'muruna madha ta'murin. Tell us what to do. She says, in the muluka, ida dakhalu qariyatan afsaduha wa ja'alu a'izata ahliha adhilla wa kadhalika yaf'alu. That truly, kings, and she was yani, in, implying Solomon, when they go into a place, they destroy it. They destroy it. And they make the people who are lofty very lowly and they will do the same thing to us and she goes what i'm going to do in this story she says what i'm going to do is i'm going to send him a, a, a hadiyah a gift now she said solomon a gift solomon now he's a prophet and he's a king and saba sends him a gift as soon as he sends her you'd think of solomon would be you know calm and this and that and she said he said uh, he said are you sending me this uh, why are you sending me this he said what, what allah has given me is better Mm. than what, you ha what you're trying to give me. And then he said, uh, send back this letter. This is what Solomon said. He said, send back this letter. Don't become arrogant on me and become Muslim. That's it. And if you don't, we're gonna, we're, we are going to fight you. We're going to do that. So, so basically what happened was, Sabah, she went to Solomon. And she, she was invited as a queen. She looked at how they were doing. She looked at his life. She saw how they were worshipping God and she became Muslim. So it was a happy ending for her, but she was a queen. So it's not like Islam as a religion or the narrative of the Quran were triggered by women being in power or this and that. Because if this was the case, why is the Quran keep telling us stories of women mm -hmm. who are in power, who are positions of influence, who are positions of piety and so on and so forth? We have, we have, we have no issue with that. The issue is where you think that a woman in a familial setting Okay, in particular in a familial setting, should have an equal say as a man. Because the Quran is very clear about that. No. Yeah, the, the Quran says, for example, in chapter 4, verse 34, that men are maintainers and protectors of women because of what Allah has given some that He hasn't given others. Mm -hmm. You know, and Allah says in the same chapter, that do not wish what the other one has. Um, for a man mm. is a portion of what he has earned, and for a woman is a portion of what she has earned. So we have this complementarity idea. It's a complementarity situation. It's not a 
it's not a competition. It's a compl- it's, it's compliment- complementarity uh, between a man and a woman. But on the point of, I mean, it depends on the context. That's why I was I'm trying to understand from you what exactly we were trying to say. In Islam, yes, the man is given, uh, you know, rights in a familial setting. He is the husband, he is the father, and he has the final say in these contexts. Um, but it could be that a woman, if, for example, let me give you an example. If a woman, she's pious and Muslim, right? And let's say she's a daughter of a man who's not in none of those things. He's not Muslim even. Then in a way, she has to take, he's relinquished his leadership. Because she has to take a kind of leadership, a spiritual leadership. Oh. And, and, and in the Quran, you're not supposed to do that. It's supposed to be that a, ma- a Muslim man can marry a Jewish woman or a Christian woman uh, under the, the idea that he's going to convert her once they get married. But on the reverse, a, a Muslim woman cannot marry a Jewish man yeah. or a Christian man because he's the one who's supposed to be leading spiritually. And it, overall, the bigger point was it's not to say that women cannot, ever, cannot be religious without the presence of a man. Yeah. But the, the bigger point is that men should take the responsibility, and, and it's Sunnah, it's, it's in the Quran, that we're the ones that are supposed to be leading, especially with those ideas in the household. And ultimately, it's our job to, to maintain those, those rules in the family. Absolutely. But, yeah, that's true. And I was wondering, because I, I got a lot of backlash, like, you know, I don't, it's the month of Ramadan, but like, people, are, people are getting really angry. About that? Really, really upset. What are like, they saying? Like, what's the issue? Um, I would say it was a lot of like, uh, Muslim feminists, which mm. I want to get into that idea yeah. first, like how that even works. Um, but like, the Muslim feminists, they were saying, like, um, you know, calling me a grifter, saying that I'm a misogynist, like wishing death. Like it was, it was bad. Like, it was, um, it was pretty bad. But uh, it seems um, kind of hypocritical to me because how could you be a Muslim feminist? Because the ones that were really upset and were wishing harm upon me, I click on their profile and it's it's all these like feminist things, like you know the Cardi B, a lot of the oh, same yeah. ideas that we see with like um, feminist w- women in the West who are godless. They kind of they attach those ideas to Islam. Uh, I'm wondering, how can feminism and Islam coexist? Well, I mean, they, they can't. I mean, th- this is the short answer, because feminism, if one wants to be integrous and actually take feminism, like, let's say, we're talking about secondary feminism in particular, um, where the writings and the movement and these kind of things, if you want to take that seriously, and you also want to take Islam seriously, then you can't take both seriously at the same time. Because if you want to take feminism seriously, Especially in the, sec- in the 60s, second wave feminism. This idea of domestic drudgery was, was one of the top things that they were talking about. So people like Betty Friedan, people like Simone de Beauvoir, people, uh, obviously, uh, Germaine Greer, who's still alive now. All of these were like, you could, you could call them the mothers of feminism. One thing united them, which was their idea of domestic drudgery. The idea that uh, in... in in the domestic environment, a woman should not be cleaning, cooking. She, in fact, Simone de Beauvoir, in one of her books, The Second Sex, which was seen as a seminal work. In fact, most universities consider it to be the most important works of the 20th century. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I've got all, I've done you know courses on this and I've written books on this. But the, suffice it for me to say, is that she writes that the institution of motherhood itself is something to be, is something that you should try and avert that you shouldn't even try to be a mother because it's, it's, it's exploitative, she, she says. In fact, the way she frames it is that a man is biologically oppressive to a woman. It's just like that, my biological determinism. Mm-hmm. But that, you could say, is an extreme position. What wasn't an extreme position in feminist works was the idea that a woman in the house setting uh, is considered to be an inferior and therefore should not accept that subordinate position because equality would, did, would uh, indicate that there shouldn't be uh, differentiation in roles between men and women. This is, this is the argument, effectively. And so if this is the argument that you want to make and you want to be, you, you want to be, believe in these kinds of principles, you want to be connected with these kinds of principles, how on earth can you believe in this but at the same time believe that the man, you have to obey him? I mean, if you went to any of these women in the second wave feministic movement, even going on to black feminists like Bell Hooks and Audre Lorde, because in the 70s and 80s you had this kind of black feminist movement, right? Because they said, well, we actually haven't had enough representation of black people, that, so these women came up. Up until Kimberly Crenshaw in 1984, where she wrote a seminal work for them, because it's, it's rubbish, to be honest. I've read it all myself. It's called, and she discussed uh, what she called intersectionality, yeah? So that whole tradition 
if, if you even want to call it that, but well, that whole corpus from the 1960s until the 1990s and beyond of feminism, where we're talking about obedience is considered to be oppression, patriarchal society is considered to be wrong, and by that they mean the man being in any kind of power position over a woman, a domestic drudgery, an attack on the institution of motherhood, all of these points are fundamentally and diametrically opposed to the religion of Islam. To the mm. point, and this is going to sound harsh, where I suspect many of these Muslim feminists, that the so-called Muslim feminists, are either apostates from the religion of Islam, mm. uh, clandestine apostates, so they're hiding it surreptitiously. Mm -hmm. They don't actually want to, because for some reason, socially, they don't want to, um, they want to still have the label of being a Muslim. But covertly, you know, they don't really believe. Because how could you read Surah al -Nisa? How could you read, for example, uh, verses of the Quran which says that man, you have to obey him. فَإِنْ أَطَعْنَكُمْ For example, the verse, the verse on 434 mentions the word obedience. فَإِنْ أَطَعْنَكُمْ It's in the Quran, it's not just in the Sunnah, because mm -hmm. in the Sunnah is very clear. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you have to أَطَعْتْ زَوْجَهَا Very clear, you have to uh, obey your husband. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's in the Quran, it's in the Sunnah. I believe that these Muslim feminists, they fall into two categories. Either, number one, apostates, com yeah, apostates from the religion of Islam, not, not true Muslims, clandestine apostates of some sorts, what you call zanadiqa, zindiq. Um, they don't represent outside here what, what we're seeing in Mecca and Medina and these kinds of religious people uh, yeah, in the Muslim world. They don't represent the 95%. They really don't. According to all the polls that have been done, even by Pew Research and other things, they are a loud minority of minority of minority. Yeah. And, yeah, and I like that you call them apostates and not like adaptive Muslims because that's how you get. Uh, right now, Don Lemon just got married. Um, to these gay guys in New York. I married the CNN reporter. Yeah, uh, the, the marriage photos with a giant crucifix right behind his head. Yeah, right. And people aren't calling them apostates of Christianity. They're just saying like this is like new wave. There's no such thing as new no, wave some Islam. Some of them are apostates, and some of them are ignorant though. So some of them don't realize that, okay, you cannot have these two beliefs at the same time. Well, I'm saying, but there's no, there's not criticism from within the Christian, like, peop, generally people do not call that apostate, but there's, there's no, you can't adapt Islam. Islam is the way it is, and exactly. that's, it's not... There are some things about Islam that there's no room for interpretation in, in there at all, and these are some things. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't go and pronounce an individual person to be a, a, a disbeliever, because they, they could still be ignorant. Mm -hmm. And this is called al-adr bil jahli And it's not for lay people or anybody to go out and say, okay, you're a disbeliever. Unless they come out and say, like, there's a particular woman. Uh, her, her name is Amina Wadud, actually. She's, she's based in Berkeley. Uh, in, in, in L, not LA. Uh, in Berkeley, yeah, in California, yeah? But she has a book, and she says that when she... We mentioned chapter 4, verse 34. When she read 434, she said... I had a conscientious gap, and I said no. That's what she said. <laughs> so many people have, and I'm not saying I'm one of them, but I said, well, if you're saying no to the Quran, then you're not a Muslim. Why, why are you still wearing the headscarf? Why are you still you know, pretending to be a Muslim? Somewhat? And 434 is obey your husband. Yeah, because it's, it's, it says all, uh, lots of things in that verse, but it's the most, I would say it's the most clear verse about hierarchy in the whole Quran, about, you know, in terms of uh, men and women, husband and wife, 434. And it's also attacked by Orientalists and feminists and stuff like that. So she says no. So if I'm saying you, so you're saying no to whom? You know, saying no to Allah. So so what, how does that make you a Muslim then? Mm. Is the question. Now she could still be an ignorant person, even though she spent her whole life studying Islam. I don't think she is, personally. I don't think uh, that her belief is compatible with Islam. I c consider her to be a disbeliever of Islam. I would not pray behind. I would not, not let any woman of mind pray behind her or something like that that I know. Mm -hmm. So it would not happen like that. But uh, So what's know, the other one? So it's apostate, what's the second one? Ignorant. Okay. There's no third there's no third uh, unfortunately there's no third uh, category. Right. Either you're an apostate or you're ignorant. If you if you want to say that okay well um, it's about obedience and all these kind of things I don't agree with them. Do you know what I mean? If someone is I would say either you're an apostate or you're ignorant. There are some things in the, like for example, about homosexual sex. Okay. Very clear. Yeah, no, but some, some Muslim come and say, you know, um, <laughs> this is uh, okay. I say, Khalas, it's okay. It's okay for non believers. You're not one of them now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It's okay with them. Right. So, because if we open the door for the, the religion of Islam will become like Catholicism. 
Mm. Well, Catholicism, there are so many things in the Catholic faith that were considered to be wrong, which are now considered to be true. Yeah. Now, I, I don't see, like, for example, you could say, well, that's because the context has changed. But some of those things are not contextual, they're theological. I'll give you an example, right? There was this whole controversy, and this is up at the time of Augustine, about babies that are not baptized, that they will go to hell. I don't know if you've come across this. No, I did not know that. So there were proclamations, even Augustine mentioned this. I mean, it's a very big controversy in the, in, the, in the Catholic Church. Babies that are not baptized, they go to hell. Baby. For Muslims, I don't know baptized when you put them in the put water. Put the water. Yeah. I was baptized. Yeah. So, so some scholars, I mean, in the Catholic faith, this was one of, if not the official position. And then, okay, recently the popes have come out in these declarations and so on. I said, actually, that's not the case. <laughs> but that's not something which is a context-related thing. That's a heaven and hell. So what, all these babies went to hell. These babies went to heaven now. Yeah. Because the pope changes mind. So who's the god? Pope or you? Go to god. <laughs> who's the, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So uh, the religion of Islam cannot be subject to that kind of change. It's one of the miracles and evidences for the veracity of Islam that the religion of Islam is actually preserved. Mm -hmm. It's preserved in text, it's preserved in practice, and it's preserved by the people. Mm -hmm. it's pres it is preserved. Like what you're hearing outside now is a testament to the preservation of the religion of Islam. I hope they can hear it. I really hope it's very yeah, beautiful. Uh, what you, this is a testament to the preservation of the religion of Islam. There is no equivalent anywhere else for any other religion. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, and so that's... Once you have someone like a Muslim feminist thinking that they can come and change and corrupt the religion of Islam, I consider that to be a disgrace, uh, an abomination. Yeah, she could be a kafir, but I'll, once again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't label her that. Be careful of making <laughs> yeah, 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 people, yeah, yeah. right? But yeah. I mean, I wouldn't personally label until I've seen her spoke and you know and so on. But mm -hmm. it could be absolutely. It's got yeah, to they're very upset with me right now, and I had a back and forth with Adele, and Adele was basically defending them and, you know, trying to get, like, sympathy from, um, from Muslim feminists. Uh, but it was, was pretty ironic afterwards because I'm siding with, um, I think that men should lead, you know, that I think women should obey their husbands, and I think that, like, we should be the, the leaders of theology in the home. Um, and then after we had this debate, it, it went viral again, responding to that. Thank you, you could bring it here. And after he was getting praise from these Muslim feminists, one of them tweeted, oh, let's not praise Adele. He's been accused of such and such with the woman. But don't praise him. And without any evidence, uh -huh. she just accused him of, of being like, they, she said he was, he was violent towards women. Thank you so much, Saka. Um, uh, how do I pay? Um, can I put it in the room? No, 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 no. I'll put it in the room. One, two. Yeah. Do you have a pen? Shukran. Thank you, brother. Is that the Saudi Arabian one, yeah? Very good one. Yeah, Saudi coffee. I like that one, brother. That's the best one. To be honest, it's world class, bro. It really is. I've been drinking, that's all I drink besides water here is Saudi coffee. Thank you. Well, basically this guy, after he defended the Muslim feminists, they, um, they started accusing him, saying that, oh, of nothing. They just said, they insinuating that he was a rapist or something and yeah. didn't provide anything. And then um, ah. some of the brothers were, were messaging this girl that were putting out those accusations. Yeah. Yeah. She had no evidence. She had nothing. She, and she said that we should believe women. And if mm -hmm. women say that they were hurt or they were wrong, she's inclined to immediately believe them. So she's believing a random DM yeah. and then putting... You have to believe them under every circumstance. Believe all women. That was like one of the feminist ideologies. And it, it's, I messaged him afterwards, I'm like, hey, I was right. And he said, I, he agreed. He's like, actually, maybe you were right. Because she, she just said that. I don't even know what she was accusing him of, but all the women believed it because, I, I mean, let's be honest. Guilty women are, until proven innocent. Women are easily manipulated. You know, Absolutely, they're yeah. very easily going to be swayed by something like that. They can be, and there's evidence of that. I mean, so that, look, I mean, especially with the emotive arguments, you know, and especially a woman who's been through something like that and, and actually been through it. Right. So because there's a lot of women out there that have actually been through traumatic experiences. I know it's a buzzword now, and to be honest, I think that this word has been abused as well, the word trauma. Mm -hmm. People throw it around, oh, I've, they hit their head on the, the, on the wall, they say, oh, I've had a traumatic experience today. But um, some women have been through some very difficult things, and as a result, um, they can sympathize with, with false claims. But what this is, ironically, in terms of that, is when the, when the evidentiary bar for such a thing becomes so low, a DM, it, that's Yeah, no, it becomes so low. Like, it, you know, it becomes so... It basically, he's guilty until proven innocent. It becomes so low. That actually trivializes the actual cases where someone has been raped or hurt or, or sexually assaulted. Right. Because, let, let's be honest, right? There, there are those cases. Okay, let's be frank. There are those cases, yeah? Like, for instance, if any of us, we have, like, you know, I've got daughters, you know, we have wife, whatever. 
if we actually witnessed someone sexually assaulting our loved ones who are women, there are some scholars like Ibn Hazm, right? One of the great Andalusian scholars in the fifth century. He says that you know the the, uh, the ayat of muharaba actually apply, which are the ayat of war. You can you can do you every can one of them. Yeah. yeah, kill them. You can, but you cannot imagine if you witness such a thing that you would you yourself wouldn't have an emotional reaction. So in fact, I don't know of anyone that could have more an emotional reaction than me if I were to witness something like that of a woman being dealt with in that manner. Uh, so, but I would require some kind of evidence. A DM is not an evidence. No, it's, you it's know not. what I mean? That, that's what women run with. These Muslim feminists, that's all they need. Mm. And all of them believed it. Like, all mm. the people that were uh, accusing me of being misogynist, all this, all of them, like, they flipped on Adele. And Adele was siding with them just because of one DM that they didn't even read themselves, which is because one woman said it. He's going to fall on his sword. Because he's using the same, if you allow this evidentiary bar for yourself, for other people, then it will be used against you in the same way. Mm -hmm. If this is the evidence that you allow for other people, even if it's your enemy, Okay, a DM, believe a woman, all this kind of thing. One day, a woman can be have some kind of scorn against you, and she uses the same evidence, and you finish. Yeah. Because well, now, you finish. yeah, well, I finish. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because now you've said to your, you've said to the public that I accept as a genuine evidentiary bar this level. Any woman that's just giving me, you know, a DM, mm -hmm. no, I don't accept this. I'll accept it. Uh, so I, I kind of feel bad for the guy, but I mean, he did kind of prove me right. But anyway, since um, you, you have been really active on social media during Ramadan too, which uh, is not easy. Uh, you just came back from that debate with Fresh and Fit, and I got to say that that was, that was very entertaining, I'm not going to lie. Mm. And I was asking about the love speech community before the stream, like, what's some questions? Mm. Um, it was one question from a sister. She said, uh, did Paul meet Muhammad? Yeah, what the hell, what's that going to do with I don't know. Listen. Look, the brother Fresh... Um, and Myron, I think that they are ess essentially good guys. Very good guys, yeah. I think they're good well, Some of my best friends. I think that these guys have, I don't even think that they were trying to, I didn't go hard on them. I didn't try to attack them or hurt them or debate them. Because I feel like they're coming from a place where they want to improve men. They're seeing the problem. The yeah. problem where men have been emasculated, they've been harmed by certain ideologies related to feminism. The, o the main thing I would say about Red Pill community is that they've gone into overcorrect mode. And sometimes an overcorrect is required, actually. Because when a pendulum swings too much this way... It goes the other way. It goes that way. And, that, and they are the manifestation of the pendulum swinging the other the way. The other way, yeah. Yeah. If you keep telling me about feminism and, and you don't require evidence for to prove a man is, is raping, uh, raping another woman, she, yeah. and you don't need this, and the, woman is not, and the man is not respected, and this and this and that and that, okay. That's got to simmer in the minds of men in the West and in the East and in the, everywhere else in the world. And it's become resentment and it's going to become, you know what? We're going to start using women in this way and do this and we're going to act like that. And we understand these methods now of these women, these entitlement women, these modern women. And there's a lot of truth in this. There's, I cannot lie. There is so much truth that I agree with from this, from the whole movement. Mm -hmm. The reason why I brought up some issues of high-value men and this and that and that <laughs> was only because I was thinking about the matter in a more logical and, I would say, academic manner, frankly. And I just wanted to share my ideas on that. But there are so many things that they've got right. There are many things that they've got wrong. And there are so many things they've got right. They've got so much more right than the feminists. There's no doubt about that. It's not... Right. I mean, there's no comparison between them and the feminists. I don't allow it. But... Everyone gets things wrong because it's not unless you're getting it from God. There's going to be false. There's going to be faulty things, and we right. have to address those things. Like course. stoicism, it's adopting a lot of the traits of Islam without yeah. searching for a higher purpose. Mm. So you're just you're doing things for the sake of doing them, but rather than to get into heaven. Mm. So yeah, it is barely necessary, and I've seen they're getting a lot of backlash right now. I think more than I've seen, especially from the conservatives, the religious people. Mm. Um, I think as more people are starting to embrace Islam and are are getting fed up with that. I, th I think a lot of people disagree with Myron's 50 bodies idea, saying that a, a man needs to sleep with 50 women to yeah. understand them. I think a lot of people are disagreeing with that. That's something I've publicly disagree with him quite a bit, too. Yeah, yeah. I understand why he thinks that, but now I'm seeing them uh, get more backlash than ever, and uh, they are doing a lot of good. I, I think that of any yeah. men's podcast, they've saved more lives than any other podcast, and they deserve more respect, and so we, we, I think we should stand think, by our brothers. I think we should help the brothers and not push them away, because I think that these brothers have a lot of potential. 
And my, my approach with people like Byron and people are fresh and other people who I think really either secretly or openly, I haven't seen much of their content to know, actually agree with you a lot of the Islamic principles. They agree with it. They do. Especially when it comes to gender issues. I think we shouldn't be too harsh on them. Because, you know, the Islamic spirit with these things, and, I, and people even till this day, they criticize me on my public support for Andrew Tate, for my help with him. But I, I've said the same thing and I'll say it again. Even if a feminist becomes a Muslim and she has a background like this. You'll welcome her. I'll welcome her and I will help her, even if it takes years. And I believe that's what Islam is about. Because, for example, one of the recipients of Zakat is Al-Mu'allafati Qulubuhum. It's mentioned in Surah Tawbah, chapter 9, verse of the Quran. Which is, there are eight recipients of Zakat. One of them is people who are not Muslim yet, but they, they are people who... The hearts are there. Yeah, their hearts are effectively there. Their hearts are, can be softened by Islam. Mm -hmm. You give them gifts, you give them... You, you treat them nicely. The idea is in Islam, people that are close to Islam, don't push them away, bring them closer. Even if, it, if, if you have to play the long game, bring them closer. And I believe, looking at the way of the seerah of the Prophet, that's how he done it. So we shouldn't be too harsh with people like Myron. Yes, there are some things about how he didn't defend the Prophet and so on. He must be spoken about. Okay, fine. But don't push him too much. Because, you know, he could be a great person who, like yourself or like Andrew Tate or like sure. anybody else comes into Islam and becomes and brings so many people with him to Islam. And he's already a Muslim, actually, Myron. But I'm saying becomes more religious, for example. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think we should, we should be pushing these people away. I, don't, I really don't think so. And I think that they, we can tweak. Everyone deserves to be criticized. We, we've been criticized. And, and we are right us. now. Yeah. yeah, we are criticized and it's good for us. I believe criticism is good. It hardens you and it makes you uh, shave the edges off and make sure that you it get does. to the, the true... Otherwise, you'd be a narcissist. You're just gonna, you're yeah. gonna think. I mean, imagine receiving all praise and no criticism. What kind of a person would you be, bro? Mm -hmm. What kind of a person would I be? Would be a narcissist. Criticism saves us, bro. It saves us from delusion. Mm -hmm. It gives us good deeds because when people criticize us uh, and it's wrong, for example, then we're beneficiaries of that on the day of judgment. It makes us stronger, you know. And so everyone needs to be criticized, including Myron, and he needs to be able to accept criticism as well, of course, because I've seen some recent video of him on Twitter, uh, you know, shouting, at, you know, uh, defending Fresh, yeah, yeah. I think it was. And, and that was... It's brotherhood, that's loyalty. It's loyalty, it's brotherhood, it's all very well and good, but then, you know, I mean, I, I've also had moments where, you know, I regret and uh, maybe I went too emotional, stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're good we, clips. I, I they're great clips, but yeah. then it could be used against you because then someone's going to say, why weren't you like that when it came to the Prophet? Why weren't you like That's that true. when it came to this and that? That's true. And then you're going to have to start firefighting again. Right? Yeah. So what you decide to be emotional about is something which will be held against you. Mm. You know? Especially, but, yeah, I mean, as I say, I think that, that we shouldn't be too harsh on them and they're your friends and I think we can bring them closer. And one day, inshallah, we'll bring them here. Inshallah. And let them taste what we're tasting and, and enjoy what we're enjoying. Yeah, I mean, I can tell that from, from my point of view, I can tell that the, the stress of, it's a stressful world, the content space, especially when you're speaking up for these issues, mm. getting the amount of attacks that they get, like they got demonetized, they speak about Zionism, so they're getting attacks from all these angles, and it's like the stress from, from the world from all those attacks is like really starting to, uh, so I want to see them like, you know, find some, find some more peace, but what's your... What was your perception of um, of that fresh debate, uh, especially with Christianity? It's uh, I mean, basically, I, I that was that specific debate, you know, wasn't um, with you and Fresh, but with uh, Sheikh Uthman in the past. That was what helped bring me to Islam. That debate about the Trinity and how three can be one. It's just something that like uh, I grew up believing as a Catholic, but it just it never made sense and it was never explained properly. So having a, a Muslim debate and, and like just literally thinking, how can three be one? Yeah, like it literally does not make any sense. And then. Um, I liked, it. it was a funny argument, I, I watched it back, I, I th his argument was, um, who created math? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, because uh, he was trying to say like man, well again, yeah, man technically created the, the figures to draw numbers, but the idea of math as a science, it just is, it's objective, without, man did not create that, it, it just is. So that it was, um, it, was it was interesting. To steal man his position at the highest level, look, I think he was basically saying, can God make the impossible possible, right? Because, like, for example, 2 plus 2 equals 4. Is it, can, it, can 2 plus 2 equals 3 or 5? No, it's impossible. But can God do that? And what we're saying is that, I think he said it himself, when I said, can God uh, create a rock so heavy that he can't lift? 
And he said, the question doesn't make sense. So I was trying to make him understand, what do you mean by the question doesn't make sense? Because the idea of a rock so heavy that God can't lift is unintelligible. It doesn't make sense. It's mm. an impossibility. So it doesn't exist. And so he's trying to say, like, oh, that means God's limited. But, well, in fact, like, the fact that God, uh, I think he was trying to say, um, can God die? And you're like, no, God can't die, so God's limited. Well, in fact, the fact that God can't die makes him more unlimited. Yeah. Right? That's a limit. But Death is a limitation. The, the thing is, in logic, there's a, there's a whole category of things called impossibilities. Yeah? Like, for example, a squared circle. Mm -hmm. A squared circle cannot exist in the real world. Mm -hmm. You can't even think about it. I mean, it's not something which exists. They're two opposite things. And they fulfill the criterion for contradiction. Yeah? Now... Because they don't exist, we cannot speak about anyone creating them. Because they don't exist. It's, it's an uh, impossible entity. It doesn't exist and it can't exist. So the idea of 2 plus 2 equals 5, it's not just that it doesn't exist. It can't exist. And God, the idea of God, can God make 2 plus 2 equals 5 is equivalent to can God make a rock so heavy that it can't lift? It's equivalent to can God cease to exist? Can God kill himself? Let's go further. Can God lie? Can God rape? Can God steal? We would say these are all impossibilities. It doesn't make sense. For example, on the idea of God, can God steal? How can God steal anything when he owns everything? The idea makes nothing. So it's not limitations, it's just not, it's an impossibility. These are impossibilities, yeah. These are mm. impossibilities. So I understand where, it, look, someone can attack him and say, look, he's so low IQ, he doesn't understand that uh, mathematics is something which was discovered rather than, but I think I know what he was trying to say. And it's not such a low IQ statement. Um, he's trying to say, well, maybe God can make the impossible possible. But we're saying that if you let that happen, I mean, Aristotle, for example, Aristotle was a very famous uh, logician before mm -hmm. Christ. He wrote a book called The Metaphysics. And in that book, he said that basically, if you, if you don't have the law of non-contradiction, anything can happen. There's no, we cannot even have a discussion. Like, for example, the statement that he said, which is that, can God make 2 plus 2 equals 5, whatever it may be, or God can do it, for God is possible. That statement itself is susceptible to self-refutation because there's no requirement for it to be coherent in a world where it's possible for contradictions to exist. So it's a self-refuting point. So the moment you get rid of the law of non-contradiction, you can't even have a discussion with anybody about anything because truth doesn't need to be coherent. Mm -hmm. If it's possible, if it's in any possible world, the case that truth doesn't need to be coherent and the law of non-contradiction can apply, or two plus two equals five, or whatever other impossible thing can happen, then you don't. There's no more a requirement for us to be coherent or cogent or make proper sense. Nonsense can make is, is as good as common sense in that paradigm. But that is the kind of thing Christians have to resort to in order to make sense of the Trinity. But uh, as I said, I think Fresh, if he, if he just, you know, opens his heart to Islam, he might become Muslim as well. I, I don't know if he's a huge figure in uh, the social media world. He is. Is he? Yeah, he's very big. So he would be a great uh, person for us to have as well. Many young people follow him and stuff like that. He's a fantastic guy. Do we have some more questions? Some of them are silly. Yeah. Um, uh, Parham says... Would Muhammad Ajab prefer to fight 100 chicken-sized Ben Shapiro's or one elephant-sized Rabbi Shmuley? One uh, uh, Shmuley, because the elephant I can run away from. I can run around him. Right, right. Those 100 chickens are going to kill me. Mm -hmm. they're, they're too fast. Right. Now, the elephant is fast as well, but I just have to avoid one. And you can crawl underneath? Yeah, yeah. I, I'd rather go for the elephant. One target. That was a quick answer. It seems like you, th you thought about that before. Do I can uh, circumnavigate them? I can't circumnavigate a hundred uh, things. Well, ten of them could kill me. DGM says, if I get a girl pregnant from Zena, do I have to look after the baby? The answer is yes, right? There's no abortion is, um, is a major sin. The question is... If I get a girl pregnant yes. from Zena, do I have to look after so the baby? So scholars of Islam would not attribute this baby to him. Really? Yeah, they wouldn't. Now... That's what scholars of Islam would say, like from a lineage perspective, because kids that are born outside of the uh, marital confines are not attributed to the father. So who are they attributed to? Satan? To the mother. Oh. <laughs> so she, because she's committed that act, according to Islam, she doesn't need to pay nothing. Wait, so 
Really? Yeah, yeah. So we're good. What do you mean? Like, man, I, I'm, I can go come <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I'm out of here. What, what no, am I? <laughs> but, but having said that, because of new age biological realities, like if he knows for sure this is my child, yeah, he might either want to marry that woman and sanctify the situation and raise a child, or I think it would be right for him to at least do that. But if you talk about technically what scholars of Islam would say, they would, uh, they would say there's no relation. They wouldn't care about that. So you can, so you're good. But Zina obviously is a major sin, so you should never do that anyway. And well, you wouldn't want, a, like personally, I wouldn't want another man raising my child, do you know what I mean? Mm. So. Uh, DJ Mal says, can I listen to music in Jana? Uh, the kinds of, the, yani, what kind of music it is, is, for example, if it, we have to define what music is. Like what, most of the scholars that say music is haram. Now, there's a difference of opinion about that. The majority of scholars say music is haram, right? Based on the view that there's a hadith which is, says in Bukhari, mm. there are four things that are, people will make halal. What is haram? And one of them is ma'azid music. So the majority of scholars of Islam, the vast majority, they say that means that music is haram, although there are notable exceptions. For example, Ibn Hazm, huge scholar, he says it's halal, and he says that that hadith is mu'allaq. Al-Ghazali, huge scholar, he has a whole book in al al Muddin saying it's, yeah, music is not haram. Uh, Al-Shawkani, he has a whole book saying it's not haram. Uh, some scholars from the Shafi'i school say it's not haram. Uh, the music they're talking about is just any musical instrument. But the majority of scholars say it's haram. There were some scholars from the early generation who actually said that, who believed that music was halal, interestingly, like Ibn Majashun and so on. Interesting. But uh, there are three uh, opinions about music. So nasheeds and so on, the voice, if it's with the voice, uh, most scholars allow that because there's nothing wrong with the human voice. If we're talking about the, uh, the musical instruments and the bonjo and the no guitar, if I swear, and all that kind of stuff, uh, most scholars uh, disallow that. Although the, the Shafi'i school some allow some instruments and some don't allow some instruments. Uh, so on your question, there may be some instruments and some music in Jannah, which are which are permissible and allowed and which sound better than anything you've heard in dunya. In the same way as there's, like for example, there's wine in Jannah, but that doesn't create, have all of the negative effects. So it's not going to make you a drunkard. Yeah. But you'll enjoy the taste. Yes. OK. Um, people are also asking, I, I'm curious about this one, because within my community, I have a lot of Christians. The question is, should Muslims and Christians put their differences aside and just focus on the greater enemy, which is Satan slash Shaitan? It depends on the issue at hand. So we, we, we wouldn't pray together, because we have different ways of praying. And we also have different people that we pray to. I mean, we pray to one God, they pray to three. Uh, I mean, effectively, that's what's happened. So we wouldn't, okay, we would say you praying to three God is worse than praying to, it's the same as praying to, you might as well pray to the devil himself, because it's, it's kind of, it's one policy, isn't it? For another policy, isn't it? Right. I mean, praying to Muhammad is, or praying to Muhammad, sallam, the prophet, or praying to Jesus, or praying to the devil, all of that we would consider to be Polytheist, paganism yeah. and polytheism, right? So, but it also uh, says in the Quran to not debate with the Jews and the Christians. I, I read that for the first time. But it says, "Wala tujadilu ahl al-kitabi illa billati ahsan." Actually, so it says, "Do not d d debate with the Jews and Christians except with the way which is better." Okay. Illa ladina dhalamu minhum. This is chapter like twenty-nine of the Quran. Except for those who are oppressed among them. So, yani, those who are oppressed, we don't even debate them. You mm -hmm. know, we don't need to debate them. So, there are some issues which we can com we can combine efforts with Christians. Yes, like the LGBTQ issue, feminist issue, other issues, the, the, the woke issue, many issues, uh, the Palestine issue, other injustices that are happening in the world, whether it be in South Sudan, whether it be in uh, Sudan in general, and now because we're seeing it happening in Sudan, whether it be in Congo, whether it be in any part of the world where there, there's work that needs to be done, Muslims and Christians should come together and work together and put their differences aside for those projects. But when it comes to worship and stuff like that, obviously we have our separate institutions. What about um, free speech absolutism? This is something that I agree with Myron about. Um, mm. And I understand it. I want to ask you about this. Being a free speech absolutist is, is an anti-Islamic position because there's some, there you have to draw the line when it, it disrespects or when it um, 
goes into polytheism and stuff like that. Uh, but when it, it comes to curating my community and curating my stream, I do believe in free speech. The same way that people make fun of, like they make fun of Hindus and Pajits, they say all, all the time. Um, so I think these sh if, you're, if, if all day long we're going to make fun of Zionists and, and Pajits, Hindus, then people should be able to make fun of, um, from, of everybody. Mm -hmm. Is free speech absolutism, um, is that an anti-Islamic position? Should I not allow everything? Should I like, tell the mods to be specific? See, what, you, what one can say is this. One can say that in Western governments, okay, that we're not making a political case for or against free speech the way you guys do it, yeah? I'm, I have an agnostic position towards free speech for or against the way you guys do it. Why, why would I say it like that? The way, the way I would say it like that is because of the same reason that you've just mentioned. If, for example, uh, it benefits Muslim communities to have certain laws about free speech and removing those laws could affect the Dawah, it could affect certain things. The question about the detriments and the costs are questions that scholars of Islam would have to discuss. Now, in Islamic lands, Islamic lands is different. We're talking about Islamic law. Of course, we don't believe in this. We don't believe in that it's okay to attack Jesus, that it's okay to attack Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to attack any of the prophets. Uh, that anybody does it because someone can say well you have free speech to say whatever you like yeah which means you can mock the prophets we say fine then uh, why st why stop at uh, free speech to mock the prophets and not free speech to break the law so for example you mm. can you can mock the prophets we were, these other guys who are the terrorists who we, do, who we also disavow they want to break the law so just as much as I have an agnostic position about this, you have to worry about those terrorists who are going to attack you if you do this. Because it's not just, and this is, it's no Islamic exceptionalism here. There are certain things that if you say, if you go too far in saying, violence. with any community, it can lead to violence. Now, if you go to Mexico, if you go to Colombia, if you go to Harlem in New York, if you go to anywhere, and you say certain things against certain races, certain cartels, certain people, certain gangs, certain mafias, certain religious figures, there's going to be a response, okay? Now, no one is saying you can't say what you want. You can say what you like if you go to those places. If you go to middle of Harlem, like in Die Hard 3, and have a sign that says, I hate niggers. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that, all yeah. you like. Yeah. Free speech. Now, but someone can say, you know what, I've, I'm very offended by this. I'm going to decide to shoot this guy. Mm -hmm. Black person says, uh, this is, offends me. And a lot of black people and a lot of feminists, those woke people would defend that and say yeah. that that's a lie. Say, no problem. Say, uh, I'm saying to shoot him. Uh, he's going to shoot him now. So you don't just have to fear the law when you're, when you're saying what you want to say. You right. have to fear the people. So, so much as, because what is an extension of free speech absolutism? Is free, sp is anarchy, actually. Because if you think about the political spectrum, right? Free speech absolutism is on the way to a kind of anarchical system, at least on a social level, okay? Yeah. If you, if you think about objectively, because the, the government is deciding not to get involved in what people say. Okay, so what's one step further than that? One step further than that is to say, well, the government shouldn't get involved Actions. in what people do either. So that's physicality. So if you want to take a more radical position than free speech absolutism, then you should allow vigilantism, actually. But whether or not you allow it, the vigilantes won't care. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So... The terroristic position, which is something which we, do, we must say on the stream, we completely disavow it and we, we are against it. Well, or the terroristic or the gang position, or let's call it the belligerent position, or whatever it is, which is that if these people speak of my race, my country, my religion, whatever, that's the position, that we will respond in violence and even more than violence. It will be something which we... That position is an extension, actually, of the free speech absolutism position. It's an extension of it. It's actually more... Uh, in the, it, it's more on the side of freedom. And so if, if someone wanted to push the envelope, why stop there? Vigilantism. So, okay, you want to offend him with your words. He wants to offend you with his violence. It's an extension. So I say, look, I'm not against it. I'm not making a legal case. I don't care what the Americans do with their law. Mm -hmm. With all due respect, who am I? Who am I to go and tell the Americans to put this law into place and... and what effect will my protestation have 
on whether the Americans decide to put this law or the Europeans decide to put well, that what law. What about in the UK? I see some criticism more from, I, I would say, the Christian whites in the UK, the, the fact that Islam is growing so fast uh, in the UK. And I even saw some statistics that say, like, 30, I'm not sure if it's real, saying, like, 32% of UK Muslims want Sharia law. And they're getting afraid, they're like, UK is losing its soul. You know, they, UK culture is drinking a pint on the corner and watching the football match and then beating up a Manchester City fan. That's UK culture, is getting drunk with the lads, going out, and then, you know, that's... And, Islamic culture does not really coexist with that idea of... Um, yeah, that's, that's more of a conservative position, actually, if you think about it. Because, it, and when I say conservative position, I'm talking about British conservatism. Mm -hmm. Because British conservative, like, which was promulgated by someone like Edmund Burke. There's a guy called Edmund Burke in the 80s, uh, 1800s, 1900s. People like him. These conservatives, they, they basically want to hold on to tradition, okay? So uh, the question is, at what point do we start the clock? Because let's say, for example... I, I, as a, let's say, aristocrat Englishman, want to start the clock in the year 1650, uh, where, it was, where Shakespeare's works were fresh, where, you know, I don't know, you know, Jamesian, you know, the King James Version has just come, uh, of the Bible has just come out, and I want to use that language. Someone says, no, we want to push it a little further to the 1800s. We want to bring those traditions and cultures back. Someone pushes it further to the 1950s, right before the sexual revolution, before the feminists. Who gets to decide to start the clock when and where and, uh, and how? But what I find contradictory is that the same right-wing people who attack um, people who attack, uh, who, who, are, who are, let's say, free speech absolutists, yeah. who, who, in a sense, are arguing for a liberal position when it comes to free speech, that they also want a conservative reality. So because, look, mm. think about it. If you, if, you want a, if you want a society of 80 million people well, let's say 70 million people, right, in Britain. You want a society to have free speech. That's the right-wing position. You're, you're speaking about free speech. Now, we see in most of the outlets, GB News, Talk TV. Somewhat, yeah. Yeah, we do see. They're speaking about free speech all the time, yeah? So if that's what you want, you want free speech. But at the same time, you're telling us that society is being corrupted by freedom of expression and speech. Isn't that a contradiction? Right. <laughs> Well, so, I mean, they're saying it's freedom of speech, but also the invasion of, like, they call it the um, no, well, so Muslim you, invasion. Don't, don't, don't say freedom of speech. Say selective freedom of speech. Say, I want white freedom of speech, then. Mm. I don't like black freedom, because they're attacking the carnival. Like, you know, the Jamaicans have this thing in the carnival. Yeah. And it has, it has to be attacked, actually, because some of the things they it's do... It's disgusting. Like, yeah. That's the part where people are like, don't make fun of culture. Like, don't disrespect Jamaican culture. If their culture is, like, getting naked and humping each other in the streets... And, and that's, that's only recent, by the way. Uh, I don't know, maybe... Th I used to watch this. Uh, the, the carnival maybe about 15 years ago wasn't like that. Only recently the gangs have started to come out. These guys have started, they're making a, a mockery out of it. I think carnival, like when my dad was growing up, uh, Haiti um, yeah. has a similar one. It wasn't the way it is now. Yes, exactly. And you see all the streamers are going there to Jamaica. They're, they're pretty much just like almost having sex in the exactly. street. It's disgusting. It's you know, and, the, and then if you ever criticize it, like this is Jamaican culture. No, it's I not. mean, shouldn't you, like we yeah. should, I mean, if there were cannibals in a certain culture, <laughs> yeah, we yeah. would say, hey, maybe you should not be eating each other. This is, your culture is wrong of cannibalism. And I personally love Jamaica. Making culture, I like the food, I like everything. Bombacla, yeah. Well, Bombacla, you know. Yeah. <laughs> biakan, you know. It is, you don't, you don't eat a biakan. Don't know. Yeah, you don't know. But well, so we all are affected in England by uh, Jamaican culture. But it's as I say, if, if this, if this, you want to, that's actually a besmirchment of uh, Jamaican culture. I think this is a carnival. That recently, what I've seen, because I, it's like a live, parody. Of I it. live it. I live in the area where the carnival, carnival happens. I see people coming out with knife and this and that, bro. Like you know, don't yeah. tell me this is Jamaican culture, because <laughs> now you're besmirching uh, the Jamaican culture. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, uh, the point I'm making is, uh, you know, if you want free speech and expression, if that's what you're c calling for, yeah, okay, don't complain about the results of that. If the results of that are Muslim people coming into the country, people converting to Islam, then that is the results of what you have called for. You yeah. can't have that and you're not right. have that at the same time. You're completely right. And people get really upset, like they see the videos of one Ummah. Uh, getting like white kids to take shahada and like yeah. that, that really makes them upset yeah. and I don't even think it's like a religious issue I think it's a racial issue the fact that they're seeing like brown people convert their white yeah. people and then you see in the comments deport deport, deport. Yeah, 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 yeah deport what a British citizen so yeah. next who's going to be deported you because you're going to set a precedent for a brown people to be deported then you're going to have something which goes against the state and then you're next yeah I, I, I didn't I didn't realize how strong um Islam I don't like that word Islamophobia because it sounds like homophobia or transphobia mm -hmm. but I, I didn't realize how stigmatized that was mm. i was from the perception that people saw the um, 
the good in Islam. It's like, what's the alternative? You know, it seems like everything that Muslims stand for is, is all the principles of Islam are really good for society. Mm. So I, I, the fact that it gets these people that upset, it's not a, it's not a moral issue. It's a, it's a racial one. They don't like to see their, but you have to, you know, there's, you have to empathize with them a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So, you know, growing up with the James Bond and Wayne Rooney's dominating and then now seeing it change to the way it is, it's got to hurt. It, it does go up, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you, you wanted to take this much money from the rest of the world through colonialism. Mm -hmm. Now, you've called these guys back over to help fix your country after the 1950s and 60s. Mm -hmm. They fix your country, we got to tell them to go get out. Mm -hmm. This is, I mean... This is exactly what happened, right? You had World War One and Two. Um, why are these Pakistanis and these Bengalis and these Jamaicans? What are they doing in England? They're doing that because the English people wanted them in there to fix their country. Mm -hmm. So now that they've done that, you can't complain about the results of this. They're here. They're here. What are you going to do with them? It's a reality. Unless you want to become a fascist state, like you want to become like Hitler and Nazi Germany, and say, look, we only allow this race here. You, and we're gonna, we have a Muslim problem, we're going to get rid of them. Unless you want to go down that route, which you can't say you believe in that and freedom of expression at the same time. Because that is against freedom of expression. What was, do you know what Hitler's position was on Islam? Um, I don't know, to be honest. I've heard some people say recently that, they, that Hitler respected Islam, but I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know. I mean, he, There's a lot of misinformation. I personally there. believe that if Muslims lived in his state, they'd probably, he'd probably do the same thing with them, you know? There were no, there were no like... Muslim, significant Muslim population in Germany at the time. Most people talk about that, uh, they talk about the Mufti and uh, Hitler and that little meeting they had. And they're trying to say that they connect it with the, the fact that, okay, well, you know, how, how could he meet with the Mufti of Palestine at the time? I mean, Mufti mm -hmm. I mean. He also met with the Irgun, or at least he done, he, the Nazi party had connections with the then Jewish uh, parties who would make up the state of Israel, like the Irgun, for example. Mm -hmm. And they both they co collaborated on getting the Jews out of Germany because they both had a common um, objective. And that's mentioned in peer-reviewed journals. So if you say, okay, well, Hitler had this connection with the Mufti of Jerusalem. He also had, a, the Nazi party also had a connection with the Jewish parties as well. They did. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know exactly what Hitler's position was on Islam, but it wouldn't matter because he had his own thing. And he believed in the Aryan race. He believed that the white man was best. He believed in. Is that true? Yeah, of course he did. Yeah. I, I never saw a speech where he was talking about that. Well, eugenics and stuff. I, it was mostly about like nationalism in Germany, stuff like that. I didn't see. I, I couldn't find like like speeches. Yeah. I couldn't find solid information about the about whites being the supreme race. I think there is. I think because they had eugenics programs and stuff. The the blue eyes and the white skin and stuff mm -hmm. like that. There's, they did have. There's a lot of that. Well, speaking about Hitler, mm. um, where do you think the, the future of this, this Israeli-Palestine issue, where is that going to go? I got some, some heat, but I, was, I saw that they attacked the, um, the Iran consulate in Syria. I, I said, um, I tweeted, we stand with Iran, and a lot of people got really upset. I got calls from people, like Americans saying, like, oh, like, don't say this, you're in Saudi Arabia. Oh, okay. Or Americans saying, like, oh, Iran's the enemy, all this stuff. I was just, you know, the fact that they got bombed by, by the IDF um, and the consulate in Syria. But where do you think that this is going, and, and how does this, uh, I didn't get to ask you this like, too extensively in London, but how does this relate to, to the end times? That's something that the, the Love Speech community is always talking about, is the, um, the coming of the Dajjal and you know, the Red Heifer, stuff like this. Where do, where do you foresee the, the future of the Israeli conflict? Some people are saying that Iran is going gonna, is gonna to fight them now. Um, I don't think they will. I, I think Iran is quite strategically um, cautious, actually. They've got two or three pawns. They've got the Hezbollah, they've got the Houthis, and they've also got other, you know, in a way they're connected with Hamas, in a way. So I don't think it would make sense for Iran to risk being invaded by the United States of America by striking Israel. If they did that, it would be unprecedented in their cautious strategic decision-making in the last 20 or 30 years. Mm -hmm. They have never done anything like that. And they, I, and because... That gives America all the legitimacy in the world to go and attack Iran. Right. So I don't think they're that silly, unless they had the backing of China and, and or Russia, like the explicit packed backing of them. So I don't think, I think this is just, um, I think this is just PR. PR for who? 
for them, I th the Houthis and the and the Iranians have have really shot up in, popul in popularity recently in the Muslim world. So their fiery speeches and their attacks and their threats, even though they're Shia. Yeah. There have been times in the in the history of like the Middle East where the Hezbollah and the Iranians and the Houthis have have shot up in popularity, and this is one of those times. Especially Hamas came out recently, and them and the Islamic Jihad, which are the number two um, kind of faction in, uh, in, in in Palestine, both of which explicitly praised Iran for what um, for for their stance, uh, you know, on the issue of Palestine. Mm -hmm. They 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 praised Iran, they praised Yemen, and they praised um, Hezbollah. They, so this is a Sunni group, Hamas, praising three different. I know Shia. Hezbollah is, is comrades of Shia, and is yeah. Yemen comrades of Shia too? Yeah, yeah but it's a different kind of Shia. This, the, the Yemeni ones are the we call Zaydi Shiites, which are much closer to Sunnis. So uh, people are also asking this question: like, what's the, um, like, why are so many Shia? Why does it seem like Shias are backing Palestine more than any Sunni nations or any Sunni factions? I think political reasons. I mean, don't forget what's happened in the last twenty or thirty years is unprecedented. It's, it's, um, it's to do with how America has played the game and how they've allied with certain Muslim countries, mm -hmm. including the one they're in right now. Yeah. So I think that that is probably uh, the reason. And so after the, the Islamic Revolution in 1979 in Iran, mm -hmm. Iran became much more alienated in the, you know, in the Middle East. So they've had to... They've had to strategically kind of um, depend or, let's say depend, on, on China and Russia in a much more, more so China, in a much stronger way than the West. What was the, that, I remember reading a book about that, but I can't remember now. So it was it like, it was a clash with liberalism in Iran in 1979? What, what was that revolution? So this was, a, what you had before, you had the person called the Shah. And um, this was a Western puppet, you know, at the time in Iran. He was disposed, actually he ran, he, he exiled to Egypt, he, uh, he, you know, he ran and hid there. And um, at the time Khomeini, who was this figure of the Shiites, he was in, his, his, of all places, France. And he went from France, he came back to Iran, and he led this revolution. And it was, they've created this system now where uh, it's a parliamentary system, but it has at the top of it, this, you know, the religious figure. Before it was called Khomeini, now the guy's called Khamenei, you know. And um, they've, also, they've also got a pr prime minister. So before it was Ahmadinejad, I forget the name of the guy now. He, Ahmadinejad was the famous guy who said that, you know, he, we want to erase I Israel from the map and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's very interesting because Iran is a country which for the last 20 to 30 years have had the most apostates from Islam than any other country in the world. Why is that? And I think part of the reason why that is the case is because of the government. Because they, they were seen, and whether this is true or not, this is a discussion, separate discussion. But I think that they were seen by their population, by large swathes of the population, as very repressive. Very, like, overly a claustrophobic level repressive. And I think that that made people rebel in their mind, psychological rebellion, uh, to a point we've never seen that before. So, I mean, the, the, they've had a war with Iraq. Iran had a war in the 80s with Iraq. But in terms of combat, like one-on-one -on -one combat uh, with any other nation, Iran really hasn't, they've used their pawns, they've used Hezbollah, they've used the, uh, the Houthis, they've used other people, but they have not necessarily engaged in the last 10-15 years themselves directly in any conflict, and they've been quite cautious strategically, so I don't think, unless they have a dramatic change, but for them to have a dramatic change, they, there'd have to be some real thing that they're going to win from this. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they'd be willing to risk this just for a PR victory. So, um, Iran will speak, the t they will talk the talk, but I don't think they'll walk the walk. So the hype is not justified. I don't think so. I don't think Iran will do it. Hezbollah could do because they're just literally on the borders. Mm -hmm. and, but they will also be cautious, and they have been cautious. So they'll do certain things, but they won't go too far. They'll play a, a cautious game. They realize the enemy is quite strong, and the enemy realizes they're quite strong. So 
it's a stalemate at the moment. They'll do like skirmishes. I don't think they want to go further than that. But it's, all, it's more than anyone else is doing. So you think in order for Iran to really do something, it's going to result in World War III pretty much because China is going to need to get involved? I don't think so because I don't think China would get involved. I don't think they would yeah. protect them. I don't think they'll protect them. Why? Because it's what they got to what they got to gain from that. And China and China is not the country that would make the big difference because China needs America. They're in an interdependent economic relationship with them. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't think they'd be willing to you know risk that for to sacrifice that for this. Uh, no, I don't think so. It would be Russia that would be the key player, I think. But I don't think they'd get involved either. But Russia is has got a lot more to gain because they're in war with Ukraine and stuff like that mm -hmm. from weakening the West. Mm -hmm. um, but I just don't see, I don't, I, don't see um, I don't see it being in the interest of anyone to expand the war to a regional conflict. And I think America knows that. Yeah. And what about the, what about the end times? Is, is there any... What do you know about the red heifer stuff like that? Because people, they... Yeah, so the red heifer thing, I mean, that is... It's legitimate in the sense that, okay, this is some verses in the book of Numbers, and these guys actually believe in it. The Jews actually believe in it, or some Jews believe the in it. The red cow, by the way. The red cows that they've gone from Texas and they've flown over for $500,000, and uh, they're going to slaughter them tomorrow after tomorrow, I don't know, three yeah, or four days from now. Yeah, coming up, yeah. Yeah. And uh, the Temple Institute, you know, the, uh, in Israel, they're saying once that ceremony has been done, they want to replace Masjid al-Aqsa mm -hmm. with their own temple, the, th the second temple of Solomon. Um, and I was reading in the Quran, uh, Masjid al-Aqsa is actually really is more significant than I thought. It's one of the, this is the top three. Yes. Yeah. Very significant. Now, if Masjid al-Aqsa, this is a real question now, if Masjid al-Aqsa is attacked and destroyed, which is a possibility, uh, or attacked by the Israelis, would that create global up uprising throughout the Muslim world? I think in some countries it may do. It could create rebellion. Which countries? Jordan, because half of the um, population is Palestinian. What about Lebanon? Possibly. They're, the, they're the, I would say, the high alert countries. Uh, Jordan and Lebanon. I don't think it would do so. As, as bad as it may sound, I don't think it would do so in Egypt. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it... I think that now we're talking Iran, Hezbollah, and all those guys. Uh, there's, a, there's about four or five countries that could end up deciding to go pretty hard on, on Israel if they do that. But not Egypt, why? They're... I don't think it's, it's the, the size of the population. Your I, country, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that because... It's, a lot of the, the worry is that if Egypt gets involved in a conflict with Israel, that the, so many people will die. Like, if we're saying 30,000 people is a lot, Egypt's got 110 million people. So people are going to say, well, the, even the population, I think, a lot of them will think, is it worth it? I think even the population will think that. Wow. But I think a, a huge chunk of the population will say it is worth it. So that you'd have a, an issue on your hands throughout the whole Muslim world. If, it depends on what they do with it. If they desecrate it, that's one thing. If they destroy it and try and put the temple on top of it, I think in many ways that could be the, the catalyst for something massive to happen in the Muslim world. Massive, like complete change. And then America will no longer be in control. Because America wouldn't want that to happen. Because right now they've got the, con the situation under control to a certain extent. If, that, if something like that happens, it creates a new impetus, a new catalyst. So I, mm, it's, it's a really, it's a toss-up. It depends on what kind of images we see. I don't know. I, I really do. I think that might be the event that is required, something as significant as that, for there to be some kind of a new uh, phase. So this is a... Uh... This era in history is, is going to be really defining. I think so, yes. I think I really will. One of the things I want to do, I want to do a series on eschatology. I just want to go through all the minor signs and all the hadiths and go through, like, exactly where the... Because the, there's hadiths which mention specific locations. And I really want to see what, what's going to happen, because... You think you can predict it based on the hadith? No. no. No one can predict the times and dates, but we can get a better idea. We can get a good, really good idea, like, do you know what I mean?
I haven't seen a good breakdown on that. That'd be interesting. That would be nice, you know, if we could do that. But, be. I mean, you guys can donate right now. I think we're almost at 100000 I want to check the website now. Yes. Project Iftar. Must feel uh, so good that you were able to do that. It does bro. feel really good. Doesn't yeah, it? In, a, in a selfish way, like, yeah, yeah I'm really happy <laughs> about that. Well, I think it's, it's, a good sell, it's, it's good to be selfish about something like that. No, that's fantastic, bro. I've been doing this for a long time as well, you know, the, the, the charity stuff. And it's my first well, time. You know, it, and it feels good because it's like, no, and no one can deny that, okay, your platform is being used. Is it always on now? Is that what? What is it on now? Yeah, it's just showing the, showing the counter. Ooh, I want to see okay, what it's right. like. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but nobody can deny. But again, no one can deny that's good for humanity, bro. No one can deny. Even I mean, I got some detractors. Some people are like, "Oh, he's so arrogant, he can't even give his own money." I'm like, well, you Come think on. I would? You know, it's just. Come on. It's a slow counter. I don't know why it's so slow. Right, but good. Yeah, projectiftar.org/nico. Do you have any um, any charities or anything that you want to? I have, but I fatigued the guys by. I did the same thing. I don't know how much we raised, but I think it's over. I don't know. Uh, if I add it all together, I don't want to add it up in the middle. But, is it, what are you going to do? Uh, the, the original goal for the beginning of Ramadan was 60,000. We, we smashed that. Okay, so now, I don't know if it's updated yet, but now we're at 91,000. I think before the end of Eid, Eid is three days, correct? Not this one. No? This it, one's one day. Just one day? Yeah. Oh, it's going to be tough. <laughs> it's going to be tough. It would be nice to get to $100,000 for, for this Ramadan. I think that was very successful. Again, really happy with the community. And I saw the, did you see some of the footage of, of um, I want to show you, yeah. of the kids we were feeding. Um, I don't really get emotional often, but seeing that like made me. Uh, wow. These, the project is Iftar. It, has it got your thing on it? Yeah, wow. Project Iftar from, this is in Gaza. Uh, we weren't public about Gaza in the beginning because we didn't want the website to get shut down. But we just said it was like Pakistan, Sierra so Leone. That is, you know, this is really good because it shows the food is actually coming in. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's good to see like actually the, the kids eating from it. I'm, I'm showing Muhammad a job, but I, the footage is online. That's really good, bro. Yeah. Amazing. And they look like they, they need it, bro. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, they look they They're skinny. desperate for it, man. Yeah. But this is what you guys are doing, and it, it's something that's objectively good. There's no denying that. Um, very happy about that. Muhammad a job, thank you. Uh, Kiam just ended, so I think, um, I think this is good. Oh, you're getting, I'm seeing you getting some phone calls. Wait, come in. Come on. I want to say thank you to, uh, to, to Muhammad here. I just found him on the street. <laughs> I just found him on the street. I was praying next to his little brother yesterday, and I was looking for a cameraman because uh, Needles, you know, he's Christian. He, Where are you from? South Africa. South Africa. Which part? How'd you know? Uh, Johannesburg. Well, he's, uh, he's excellent. Johannesburg. Very beautiful, beautiful country, bro. Have you been there before? No, I haven't been to South Africa. Beautiful. God. Invite me, bro. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, we'll go, we'll go. It is one of the most beautiful countries you ever go to in your life. Really? It's not dangerous at all? Or there's nothing with problems? It is dangerous. It is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, it's not. Go with the right people, Ooh, though. Yo, do they find one? You have to go Cape Town in China. Oh, Cape Town. Oh. Well, why did you go to South Africa? I had the lectures and stuff there. You came? I came, of course. I came, brother. By which message you went in China as well? So many, like maybe at least uh, 50 messages or something. Did you like come that. to Roshan? I think I did, yeah. For real? I think I did, honestly. I'll find out. That's so cool. You should come also. Bro, honestly, you would love it. I would love to go. You would love it. Yeah. It's nature, it is beautiful. And the Muslim community is very powerful there, bro. Yo, very powerful. Especially in, in Johannesburg and Cape Town. Yeah. And also, Chad, I want to see what you think. Uh, so Muhammad invited me to spend Eid with his family. Because Eid is a celebration you're supposed to spend with your family, like yeah. going to different houses in the neighborhood and doing all that. But I have zero Muslim family. So I think it'd be good to, uh, to do that. I want to see what they think if I should, if I should, um, if I should do it. Yeah, absolutely. Bro. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to celebrate Eid with all the family in there, bro. Yeah. In, in Medina. The, yeah. All one family. So we're gonna, That's true. You know? You don't live too far away? Uh, no, no, no. Okay, perfect. They're saying next stream in South Africa. They're saying W, <laughs> so yes, do it. You should come. Yeah. Oh, even... Um, okay, cool. Oh, and $50 from, from someone. By the way, when you do the Super Chats, it goes to... Oh, Warner. Have no fear, the Warner is here. <laughs> <laughs> Warner, what's up, man? We miss you. Doing? He said, Hijab, you killed it on Fresh and Fit. Proud of you, my brother. May Allah continue to bless both you guys. Thank Warner, you. we miss you. I hope you have a good Eid uh, back in Shaitan land of Los Angeles. Oh um, we're spending it out here. What have you got planned for the rest of the day? For the rest of, uh, you're going to spend spending Eid here? Probably so, actually. Probably so. You should also come. Say no more. Send me your details, I'll come. And I, uh, His phone wasn't working because Saudi WhatsApp something is on. Uh, yeah, we'll figure it all out. Be really um, 
What have you got planned for the rest of the night? Uh, I don't know if I'm going to have a little nap, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I Probably, mean, uh, maybe a little nap. A little nap? Don't yeah. I don't want to end. I know I'm going to. I'm going to take the, I'm going to go IRL walk around a little bit. If you guys are in Medina, come say hi to me. Just let me plug in my phone. Muhammad Ajab. Thank you so much, bro. Have a good rest. I appreciate it. And um, this was a great Ramadan. And as I, I want to give a lot of credit to you. Like, the hospitality in London was, was next level. Thank uh, you so thank much. Thank you so much thank from the bottom so of my heart. Much. I mean, we want to appreciate it. We'll, we'll do better next time. No, that, that was stupendous. It was, you made it a great, I'm actually missing London. It's like, this Ramadan has been so great. Like, I want, like, recapping the whole thing. But then I, I want to bring up, uh, uh, Jordan Peterson says, said something that I really resonate with. He was saying that he struggles believing in God. And I was the same way as you, Andrew. I, I was an atheist for a long time. I grew up in the church, yeah. and then I rejected it for a long time. I didn't believe in God. And I think I found God from seeing all the evil that runs the world. Oh, absolutely. Seeing the demonic and satanic rituals that they do, that must mean in the inverse that God exists. Completely. But Jordan Peterson said that it's best for him to encourage his followers to follow God because that's the best way society functions. So I am saying, I always tell my stream to follow God. I praise Christianity, praise Islam, praise Judaism, because it's good. But I still struggle with the belief that God is the father. How much do you- Nico versus B Hall. All right, start, two minutes. Bryce, throw in some TikTok dances. Ooh, good contact. Ooh. Okay, it's getting spicy. Sneeko is going harder than the first round, that is for sure. <laughs> he is throwing those punches harder. Oh, there we go. Neon! This is the worst corner of all time, bro. <laughs> oh, good to the body. That was good. Oh, Bryce is quick. Bryce knows how to move. Look at him. Oh. No one thinks you look like Tom Cruise. I hear it all the time. Hey. I look like Tom Cruise, right? Yeah. See, she, she just said, yeah. That doesn't mean anything. See, she said I'm not lying. <laughs> oh. 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 All you got to do is say Indians are niggas too. And then we make a song. Five. Four. No way. Three, oh, my. <laughs> two. <laughs> one. one. Oh my God! Hold on, just give me, just wait. wait right, give me thirty seconds just for, to prepare myself. Oh, I just need to prepare myself. Bro, I'm gonna no, 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 no. He's actually. This is funny though. This is funny though. Everybody help him out. Five no. more seconds. Five. This your last five seconds. No, 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 no. Give me one minute. Three, one minute. One minute. One minute. Two. Now. One. Indians are niggas. Look at his face. Damn, Fucking asshole. Indian fart, bro. <laughs> oh, oh, you. Fuck that smell. Fucking oh. curry muncher. Oh, fucking... my God. It's, oh. It gets worse. <laughs> shit You've never beaten the Indian allegations, man. Oh, Sarah. Can I, I'm going to go sniff the chair before we leave. No, no, don't do that. I'm going to sniff. Bro, what are you doing? See, <laughs> my wallet in there. I heard you sniff. <laughs> no, I, was, I was doing doing drugs. Take a piss on it. Do you have any more piss in you? I, 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 I just don't pee. Yo, who got some piss? <laughs> <laughs> who got some piss? <laughs> <laughs> they, they're saying use dirt, but I but I, but I don't want to pick up dirt with, with like with like with, with my bare hand. Yeah, just a little bit of water. No shoes or shoes. I can't run any shoes. I'm not kidding about No that. shoes, fuck it. Black to black? Yo, uh, how are you both putting your foot in? How are you already cheating? Alright. On go. So three, two, one, go. Alright, we got Brad, we got Sneeko. You guys ready? 
Yo, Brad went first. Brad went first. Bro, Brad cheated. Yeah, I've been to replay. Okay, we're good. All right, we're live. This is, bro, I'm, I, I'm, I'm like that, huh? Hey, thanks a lot for the stream, huh? Wait, they didn't even get to see the view earlier. Everyone's leaving prayer right now. Okay, so wait, um, what, what do you want to do about the phone number? Just don't leak your phone number. Yeah, I won't leak my phone number. I don't know, do not have any other apps that you go for? Like um, Snapchat or something? Okay, here's DM Halal Co on Instagram. We'll get your contact from there. So go to Instagram and then go to Halal Co. He'll, he'll sort it out for you. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna just message him. Yeah, just message him. I was wondering where your accent was from. I had no clue. You know, look at the setup I had. No needles, just me. Just me. Well, also Muhammad too. <laughs> and, and, sorry, 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 sorry. My bad. My bad. But like I set it all up. I had the battery here. Everything's good to go. Okay. So a little IRL time now. All right. We're gonna go yap and walk around. Wait, Muhammad, can you uh, entertain them for a second? I gotta go pee. I wanna entertain them? Yeah, yeah. Wait, okay. no, no, no. Wrong yeah, idea. I gotta go pee. Wrong <laughs> idea. Just, just like keep, keep the bro. You do good, do good. Uh, to follow me on Instagram, Faris. Walla, follow me on Instagram. See the view. Sick, na? I don't know. Best experience of my life, for real, bro. I never ever thought I'd be in a position like this. Not waking up today thinking I'll meet Snoopo and then yo, like such a good experience, Walla. Um. Yeah, no. Inshallah, we have to eat together. Mm -hmm. I don't think people see me. I don't know. Like, there's no chat on this thing here. Oh, do you see my chat? I don't think you can see my chat. Oh, no. Ugh. It just gave me so like that. Like, at Sadu7, Z-A-Y-D-007. On Instagram. Don't forget to follow me. How cool is this? <laughs> it's the coolest thing in the world. In Medina. I don't know if you guys could hear the um the Quran playing in the background while you're while you were doing the podcast. Oh, whatever I was reading. Like it's wow, it was reading so quiet. Sorry if I'm using slang like South African slang. Here's a guy that goes back to me. Clapping around with the camera, you know. So awkward, you know. I don't know. Why is this thing here? Cool. <laughs> did you carry? Yeah, I did. I did. Did you do good? Yeah. Yeah, did you do good? <laughs> uh, How do you see the chat? Yeah, you can't see the chat. Uh, it's, yeah, no, you can't. Oh, they're going to say I'm being weird. They're going to say I'm ugly or something. No, no, I no. Show no. Myself. They definitely are, but it's fine. Don't worry about them. If they, if they don't like you, uh, F them. <laughs> I'll probably go, um, 
Yeah, bro, get some sleep, man. I didn't yeah. see you were getting tired before I went to bed. <laughs> I, in the beginning, man, yo, at the beginning of that pod, I was getting so tired. And, like, I was glad the tea came because I was like, huh. Ooh, I know you guys saw the, you, you can tell yeah. too, right? Me and Muhammad Ajab was like, you can tell the fasting was getting to us bad, bro. Okay. Coffee, right? Huh? Nice kahwa. There's, there's coffee here. There's coffee is called kahwa. Kaha? Kaha. I know, I'm teed up now. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Woo! Bro, I, I slept like 10 hours today, though. Okay, um, so let me get this. Okay, hold on. Sorry. Guys, message it, um, yeah, Halako? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll, yeah, you guys just message it from you. Huh? Can you not message it from you? Who, who's it from? Um, hello, I really don't. But he'll, he'll just, like, he'll DM me on WhatsApp, it's fine. Okay, so i just give you my Just message him. Yeah, just, just message Halako, we'll, we'll get it figured out. Okay, um. Chad, was he being weird when I went to the bathroom or was he funny? No. <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's go. Nice hotel, huh? Yeah, it's okay. See, what they don't know is I have three hotels, so they, they don't know which one I'm staying at. Ooh. <laughs> and he knows I'm right. Am I lying? Huh? Am I lying? What? Never mind. What did you say? <laughs> Never, it's okay. I don't look at this. Yeah, what did you say? So I have two. Uh, love you, Isaac. Shukran. Like a cigarette in here. Does it? No. Did, did you get any pictures during the broadcast? Yeah, I did. Can you send them to Hlaco? Like all the pictures you took. Uh, that's it. Thanks, bro. Oh, this like one. Hey, Salam. He was the best filmer in Medina. Oh, uh, wait, no. And his battery just, what a fold. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Mohammed is the best filmer in Medina, best guy in Medina. You got to tap in with Mohammed. Stop playing. <laughs> Stop playing. Whoa. What'd you say? You already got too much energy. You. Huh? I never seen you with so much energy. I know. As soon as I get this phone, I was ready to go. I need to get a haircut. Bro, see, this is what it, what it is with these Muslim people. Like, why? You, you, he's 15. You look yeah. about 38 years old. Man. Man, man, man. How, is, how, how are you 15? Oh, why is that bad? Huh? It's okay. <laughs> so you gonna dish me or are you gonna come stream with me? No, I'm gonna go sleep. And my what phone the? Is dead. My phone is El Mohammed. Dead. El Mohammed. What? El Mohammed. El Mohammed. Chat spam El Mohammed. No, no, no. That's, that's not the prop follower we're talking about. El, El, this South African. No, that's not right. That's not El Nelson Mandela Mohammed. Okay, bro. Thanks a lot. Thanks, man. W Mohammed. Appreciate you, bro. I'll see you soon, huh? 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 Eat? Okay. Alright. Don't don't flop me. I'm not. Don't. Alright, say bye to Mohammed. Huh? That's okay. It's, it's good. It's pretty good. Thanks, bro. Uh, no, I'm a rumbler. YouTube is shaitan. YouTube shaitan. Huh? Rumble. Rumble. Rumble? Free speech, Chris. Chris Pavlovsky. Russell Brand. Trump. Tate. Do you know Andrew Tate? Do you know Sneeko? It's okay, man. Be safe, though. Thanks for the perfume. Yo. Assalamu alaikum. Hey, where are you from, bro? I'm from Palestine, man. You're from Palestine. Yeah. Oh, free Palestine. Can you wait? Can you explain to this guy? He doesn't know like um, he doesn't know where I stream. He, th he thought I was a YouTuber. Sure. Put the bomb in there. What? What do you want? Oh, alaikum. Where are you from? Palestine. Oh, your, your brothers? Oh, okay, okay. Huh? We are friends. You are? Yeah. You don't look anything I'm alike. I'm older. It's older than two years. Ah, oh, it's two years older. You look like the older one. No, I'm the older. Look. Everyone say this. Everyone. Yeah. No, oh, the older is mine. Yeah. Ooh, mentally. Yeah. Mentally. Wait, me. try this perfume. He, this, do you think it's good? Give me a... 
cats for them. That's it, Sadis. Yeah, should we have? I don't know. حلوة 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 Bixi. Okay, how do you say uh, twins? Huh? What do you mean? I gave you the scarf last time. I see the screen, bro. You're like, you didn't want it. Like, look, it's my homie. He wanted to say hi. Oh, my bad. I'm doing, I'm doing good. Yo, tell your friend to get better scarves. Get better than scarves if you could. Hey, I'll I'll send you the scarf. Well, how how do I say goodbye? Ma salam. Ma salam. How do you say nice to meet you? Wait, one more time, one more time. Merjayed. 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 Woriyatak. Woriyatak. Do. Ro. Yeetak. Yeetak. Royetak. Yes. 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 Uh, how do you say my nigga again? Huh? How do you say uh, my nigga again? Zalmati. 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 Where are you from? I'm from America. America. Shaitan. Shaitan land. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm from Shaitan land too. You are? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Bye. Bye, guys. Shout out to these twins, man. Are the twins? Yeah, yeah. I'm a twin too. Who's your twin? That guy? No, no, no. Hell no. What's up, twin? Where are you from? Somalia, bro. From Somalia? I'm the captain now. <laughs> nice to meet you, bro. Yo, you got a drippy watch right there. Can I get it? Was that an AP? AP, man. AP, bro, man. AP in Medina is crazy. What the? Hey, that shit is spicy. Oh, somebody stop it. Don't be taking that. Yo, let, me, let, me, let me get a picture, man. Let me get a picture. Sure, sure. You let me get the AP, I'll get a picture. Oh, let me put it on for the picture. It's too small, bro. It's too small. No, I have small wrists. I have, like, female wrists. Stuff will I do. Ooh. Sorry, I put it the wrong way. Well, I'm a Okay, let's take the picture. What's he going to buy a Sneeko, Sneeko. Hey, Sneeko took my advice. Sneeko? Hey, Sneeko took my advice. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, hey, he's letting me hold the street. Look, look, he's letting me hold the street. Hold on, Sneeko, he already hired me as a cameraman, yo. Look at you. Okay. It's supposed to be perfect, bro. Let me see. Let me see. Perfect. Let me see. Yes, sir. Okay. W's in the chat. Whoa. Yeah, hey. You mean you made my heart stop? Okay. Great to meet you, bro. All right. I'm going to go get some coffee real quick. Great to meet you, bro. It was active. I didn't even leave the hotel. That was literally right downstairs. Chat's connection good? Is everything good? Let's see. Oh, Adele's here. We can link up with Adele. Yeah, let's, let's, let's meet up with Adele, huh? Let's meet up. Let's meet up. Where? Oh, he's. I know he's in the Majid. Okay, we can meet up with him. Let me see chat. Oh, he's at the roof? Okay, let's go to the roof, huh? Bring back the Warner, bro. Uh, tell him to come back. He's probably watching right now. Adel has the Kiat. Chill, bro. We want Warner, bro. Tell him he left. He, he flaked on me, bro. Another fake friend. L L. See, he's an LA cloud chaser, huh? Just like the rest of them. 
just like the rest of them. Yeah, that, that was fire. That was fire. Ten minutes start to the IRL, huh? We want Puree. I don't know where he is. I know where you're at, Sneaky. Everybody knows where I'm at. This is one of the most populated, like, obvious areas in Islam. <laughs> you snaked Adol. No, I didn't. Press the jaw. Zerka fan, go to Zerka's stream and watch him go on monkey for six hours. Why are you in my stream, Christian? We want Warner back. We get it. Okay, everyone spam like we miss Warner. Come to Pakistan. Did you guys see um, something happen? Uh, what happened to Neon, Chef? What happened to Neon? I can come to you right now. Pull up. Pull up on me. Allahu Akbar. Yes, sir, bro. Bring back that kid. Yeah, I miss him. Interview with Shia Scholar. Do they exist? Sneaky desktop stream? Bro, DGM, you were just saying that you didn't want a desktop. You just said that you didn't want me to do clips. No one cares. El Neon, bro. Why is the chat moving so fast today? What the... Did you guys see like the low energy that I had in the beginning of the stream? I was exhausted with Muhammad Ajab. And then the T came in and now I'm teed up, bro. I'm teed up. Spark a desktop later. Okay, we can after this IRO becomes like terrible. All right, before I go into the Majid, okay. I'll come meet, um, I'll come meet Otto in, I told him 30 minutes. I'll come in 30. For now, let's find content. I know I don't go to the food area. I'm too like in chat mode, chat, chat, chat to, to go in the Majid right now and disrupt and have a debate and like get all the feminists mad. You guys see the feminists like wishing death upon me? Bro, I saw like some some Starbucks hijabi feminist saying like, may Allah destroy Sneeko in this life and the next. Like, bro, holy, you that mad over, <laughs> were you that mad because I said men guide women? <laughs> oh, oh, feminist. It's okay, we're love speech. Ninety K in charity, yeah, I know. Morocco after Eid, yeah, that's uh, this is what I'm thinking. I gotta figure out what's next, Morocco or. But okay, the reason I didn't want to go to to Egypt at first was because Egypt, uh, Rumble's banned in Egypt, but Rumble's banned in Saudi, and I'm still able to stream in Saudi. You just can't view it. So I think we should be okay. Hey, I met you earlier before, right? Yeah, yes I did. How are you? Hey, right, what's going on? Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. I met you too, right? Hey, what's up, guys? Would you like to have uh, some sahur with us? Have what? Sahur. Sahur. What are you guys eating? Everything. Everything. Let's go. I'm streaming right now, but I hope you guys are okay. Say what's up to the say what's up to Love Speech. What's up, guys? You guys all you got your prayer mats for what? For Fajr? Or are you for who? I thought it was called Kiam. That's Kiam. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Are you guys Shia or something? No, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, where are we going to eat? I was gonna go over there. Oh, the hotel. Mm. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna let them decide, and you guys can read them. One, one, I go with them. Two, I, I, I keep walking. See, I, I let chat run my life. It's bad, bro. Let's see. Oh, hold on. Because I have to meet somebody in. Uh, I'm meeting. Do you know Adel? What? I'm meeting somebody in in 30 minutes. Okay. You think that's more ones or twos? Twos, twos. Twos? Okay. Okay, so then um what's the what's the hotel? I'll, I'll come meet you. If if I get bored over there, then I'll come meet you guys there. It's a brewery, it's right there. Yeah, on the left. A boy? A brewery. Right around? Okay, I'll come if it gets boring there and like thank you for the invite. I'll be there in like 10 15. Alright, bro. See you guys. Well thank you Salam. Where are you from? India. India? I like your hat, bro. One? Yeah, can I have one? No, I have only one. Can I put it on? Yeah, sure. Do you have yeah. lice? No, so I don't. I have hey, what's up, guys? Where are you guys from? Uh, from Egypt. Oh, look, you guys with the cameras out already. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, came up. Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> what's up, man? Uh, Wait, the oldest is looking at me? Uh, yeah, you're looking good, bro. <laughs> yes. I like a smile. <laughs> How are you? Where are you from? 
Do you Egypt. like my Indian hat or no? Egypt. You're from Egypt? <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. we come from Egypt. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, he is? <laughs> okay, yeah. Which guy? Oh, that's your son? Me, yes, yes. yes. Son. Oh, you're from Egypt? Yes. Who is it? Ahmed. Muhammad. Habiba. Great to meet you guys. Oh, wow, big family. Mashallah, mashallah. Thank you. Yeah. Do you know Mohammed Ajab? I just did an interview with him. He's from Egypt, too. Yes, yes, I saw the live stream. You know Mohammed Ajab? Yes, cool. Do you want to take a photo? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you came before? What's that? Where I came? When you came? Uh, like four days ago, something like that. I think I'll be here for Eid, inshallah. Yeah, but you guys have a big family. That's who you're supposed to do Eid with the big family? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we'll it's just here. me. We'll stay here. Yeah, you stay here. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay, okay. So I'm gonna like, I'll join your family. Okay. Can you adopt me? <laughs> Can I be one of the sons? Yes, sure, sure. yes. <laughs> You wanna be son? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. No, I'll take him. Okay. You yeah, sure? Yeah, thanks so much. Okay. Kosh, 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 kosh. You hold this? Yeah, sure. So what if he just ran away with my stream right now? <laughs> and he goes to the bathroom and he gets the band. Like, he could just flash the camera and it'd be over. Okay. Masala, great, great. All right, all right. Great to meet you guys. I'll see you for Eat tomorrow. I'm part of the family now, okay? I'm part of the family. All right. All right. Hey, what, what, what do you need? Follow me on Instagram. Guys, follow me on Instagram. No, okay. One, don't. Two, I'm banned on Instagram, so I can't follow you. Oh, yeah, yeah exactly. You are okay, okay. LPQ. All right, good to meet you, bro. PQ never fails, bro. <laughs> we good, Alpha G. <laughs> Sneaky is Muslim Mickey Mouse. What does that even mean, bro? This nigga really like stop my walk to promote his, his 200 follower IG chat. Show him some love, though. Show him some love. Say say WPQ. He's not gonna get it. Hajj, Hajj. Hi, who's up? Well, Lake of Salaam, how are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about knocking on the door. Oh, yeah, that was you. <laughs> this nigga knocked on my door to get a picture. <laughs> I didn't know you guys were sleeping. Oh, it's okay. Of course we're sleeping. It's daytime during Ramadan, man. Every time we're in the room, we're sleeping. But it's cool, it's cool. I forgive you. Don't worry about it, man. Don't worry about it. What's your name again? Abdullah, keep in my duas, okay? Inshallah. All right. You too. All right. May Allah bless you, brother. You done dinner? Huh? You done dinner? Huh? You done dinner? What are you saying? You did dinner? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did that. I'm just getting a coffee real quick. Okay. All right, we're back here. Oh my God, we're back again. Sorry for singing. Go to Dagestan, bro. Find the kid, what kid? Bro, unironically go to Egypt. Yeah, actually, I, I, did, I was thinking that today. Because I can, I um, think I will. If I can go to Saudi, it should be fine. I've seen this every day. I never got it. What's up, man? What's your name? Hey, say hi to the stream, Yusuf. Why are you running away from me? Yusuf, Yusuf. Come here, man. I'm good, bro. I'm good, I'm nice good. To nice to meet you, bro. You came alone? Huh? You came solo? Wait, no, we're friends now. We're together. What the? Hell, Yusuf, cha. Okay, I want to get this rice milk. Excuse me. Film the women. Hey, where are you from? Egypt. Egypt. That's a sign. You know what? I do want to go to Egypt uh, after Eid. Wallah, Wallah, Wallah. Where should I go, Cairo? You should go Cairo, Alexandria. Where are you from in Egypt? Cairo. 
guy. Okay, should I go see the the, the, the pharaohs, uh, the mummies? Maybe, maybe for uh, for a moral uh, thing, you can take the Eiffel. Yeah. Yeah. Can you be my my tour guide? Um, I'm still in same thing. I won't leave the Medina for uh, Cairo or Paris. <laughs> oh. Wait, what are you looking at in Batu right now? Yes, uh, I was just searching for a uh, oh. session with you. He's like an Arabic stolen video. You know yeah. I'm banned on YouTube, right? What? Really? Wallah, I've been banned on YouTube for two years. Wallah. But I have been seeing your uh, your your interviews with. They just with steal them. Mom. They steal. They steal. Like well, not stick with mom. But so I, I, I watch almost every, every meeting with uh, Sheikh Osman. Oh yeah, Sheikh Osman's a great guy, bro. Like guy. Great brother, great brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, you pray so much, you have the mark on your head. I need to get that. What mark? You have a uh, the the prayer mark. Oh, wait, uh, the prayer mark? Uh, it's not a big deal. Oh, wait, is that a prayer mark or did someone kick you in the head? Uh, the scar, I have, I have also a scar beside the, 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 the prayer mark. No, 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 but I'm talking about the prayer mark. The scar is separate. No, no there is uh, three, three stitches here. And, yeah, yeah. And there is one here. What was that from? What happened? Uh, it was an uh, accident while I'm being again. Oh, in Egypt? Yes. Oh, okay. Salaam alaikum. Where are you, are you from, bro? Brother? Good. From London. London, innit? Well, Bedford, yeah. Good to meet you guys. We follow you a lot. You do? Okay, I'm pretty hungry right now. Wait, so this brother's from Egypt. You're saying that I should go to Egypt. Should I go? You been? Okay. Those are the places you said? Uh, I said Cairo, but your guy that's like a beach. It's a beach? Well, I want to stream. I don't want to do touristy, like, shaitan activities. <laughs> No, 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 Shaitan. Palestine? The Muslim. Huh? I won't tell you. They give you there more than anywhere else. I'm streaming that was gonna be difficult. What do you want me to do? Beat the Zionist by myself? I, yeah, yeah. I, I, like, what, stream pray, and then pray punch him? Pray in Al-Aqsa. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Al yeah. yeah. I don't know if you can you fly there? Anyway, brother, we have to go row there. Okay, okay. Like, Great to meet you. Well. All right, brother. Yes, Great to meet you. Okay. Bye. Okay, thank you. I'll let you do what you were saying. Okay, bro. Okay. Huh? We don't have coffee. Wait, you're still here? Yeah, <laughs> Where? I don't, the coffee's on me. <laughs> no, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Hey, Salam alaikum. Where are you from? I'm from Jordan. From Jordan? Yeah. Great to meet you, brother. What's your name? Me too. Ahmed. 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 Yes. I'll keep you on my duas, brother. Okay. Can I take a picture? Yes, Can yes. Huh? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You want to take a picture or you take your picture? Huh? You saw that? Save it. No, no, no. One finger, not two fingers. One finger. One finger. Right hand, because you wipe your... You wipe your... Yeah, yeah. Shaitan hand, Allah hand. <laughs> Mashallah. Mashallah. Great to meet you, Ahmed. What's your name? My name is Hussein. Where are you from? I'm from Medina. You're from Medina? Yeah. Oh. Hey, where are you from? India. You're from India? Yeah, yeah. Oh, great to meet you. What's your story? I was like, you went from here. Yeah, it's good to meet you. Is that your dad? Yeah, yeah, he's my uncle. He's yelling loud. Oh, salam alaikum. Where are you guys from? You're from Mumbai? No, I'm from Bangladesh. From ba Oh, okay, okay. What, what language do you speak there? Hindi. Hindi. How do you say uh, when, visit India? when I visit India? Uh, I think I'm banned from India. Why? I, the Hindus don't like me. The most, I love the Indian Muslims, but the, the Hindus, they, they get upset because they make jokes about the, the cows and the poop and stuff. No, no, no. Yeah. You should, you should at least visit Bangalore. Should I go to India? Yeah, yeah. Most, uh, most welcome. Will you host me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sure. He has no idea. <laughs> I'm not a king. America, Oh, thank you so much. I look forward to it. I'm from Shaitan Land, America. America, Shaitan, yes, yes. Yes, we'll take a photo. Abibi, how are you doing? Good to meet you. Asalaamu Alaikum. Where are you guys from? UK. UK, oh, okay. Can you hold this? Yo, you guys have some weird phones out here. What is that phone? Nothing. Okay. Wait, can I see this phone? What phone is this? Uh, nothing. I've never seen this in my nothing. life. Yes. This is from India. Oh, wow. Made in India. Oh, okay. I need to go to India. Yeah, That's a sign. Yeah, please. please. Where is Sheikh Uthman? Where is Sheikh Uthman? Yeah. Hey, tell him to come to Medina. He's watching yeah. right now. Last year I watched this video. I was like, you'll come this year also. Yeah. Inshallah, inshallah. Okay, I'm gonna... okay, bye. All right. Go. Great to meet you. Great to meet you. Thank All right, guys. Much. Peace, bro. How you doing? Um, can I have a rice milk? Right now, only dark chocolate. Today. I'll get one. Yes. Do you take hard? Yeah. Okay. Uh,
Oh, don't worry, don't worry. No, nah, don't worry, bro. No, nah, don't worry, don't worry. Is this too much? Thank you, thank you for I, I, I would get you. I would like to get you something to drink or drink. Oh, don't worry about it, brother. Don't worry about it. Thank you so much. It's okay. It's okay, bro. Okay, bye. Yes, what's your, who's, what's your name? What's your name? My name is Lucky. Great to meet you. Yes. Where are you from? From India. You're from India? Yeah. Oh, that's great, bro. Oh, so nice to meet you. I'll keep you in my duas. May Allah bless you. Yeah. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a footballer. A footballer? Yeah. Who's your favorite player besides Ronaldo? Messi. Oh, no. Wait, can you do the celebration? Come on. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good to meet you, bro. Okay, bro. Hey, where did that kid go? Where did that kid go? Oh, well, alaikum salam. How are you guys? Where are you guys from? Pakistan. Pakistan. Salam alaikum. You came from UAE? Yeah. Oh, you got the UAE though, right? Oh, nice to meet you. I want one photo. Is this mine? Yeah. Mashallah, thank you. Just talk about it. Sure. All right. Hey. Yeah, sure. How are you? What's your name? Nice to meet you. Salam alaikum. Okay. Nice to meet you. Salam alaikum. Yeah. Salam. Speaker? Yeah, what's up? What's up, guys? What's up? Where are you guys from? Uh, Egypt. Egypt? Yeah. I'm going to go to Egypt after Eid, inshallah. Sneaker, Great to meet you guys. You didn't get a photo? Yeah, let's stick it all together. Okay. Yeah, okay. Then you take three photos. Okay. Can I take a video? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Nice to meet you. Salam, bro. Okay. So All right. Okay. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Salam. All right. All right. Oh, I need to drink my juice, bro. Oh, you know what we should do? We should give out this money to some homeless people right now. I have a lot of money. I ain't gonna lie. Oh, I can get change and then just hand it out to people. Um. So I have ten, ten, ten. I should split up these hundreds. Okay, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna do that. Did they just leave? Oh, they closed. Bomba Um. Let me go to the store and change it. Or I could just give it. Nah, this is so much money. I did not even know I had all this, bro. I've been paying with the card. I have a whole 500 thing in there. Can you want to say hi? Hi. Hi. Right, what's the shop called? Uh, ice cream. Can I have? Can I have one? Okay. Cool cup, sir. Uh, what's better? Ten fifteen, sir. I'll get the more expensive one. One ten? Yes. Okay. Also, can I can I have change? Uh, can I have tens? Yeah, I want to go to give money to the the, the hungry people. So. No change. No change. TikTok ice cream. TikTok ice cream. Number one. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. No, no. no one Here. One more. One more. Jazakallah. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hey, what's up, man? Salam, my hands full. How you doing? Are you guys from America? Yeah. 
Well, the first Americans I saw in like in uh, a long time. <laughs> you guys from LA? North Carolina. Oh, North Carolina. Yeah, what about you? I'm from, uh, I live in Miami, I'm from New York. I just left Miami for the last six years I was living there. Wait, Carolina, you saw your man J. Cole apologize to Kendrick? What's up with that, man? I see that. Yeah, you, I you're making Carolina look bad. Yeah. J. Cole put a diss on Kendrick and then he retracted it. Retracted? Yeah. I've never seen somebody subtract a rap diss. Yeah, that's crazy. That's happened. It's like he sent a text and then unsent it. Zay Z did that when? Zay Z did that when he dissed Nas. That's why Jenny just got that line pop shit, apologize, nigga just ask Kip. Ooh. Ooh. You remember that? Stop for cursing in Medina. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's okay. And yeah. rapping, music. Oh, it's okay. He was dissing, actually, he was dissing the locks. He did Jenny's. Uh, and then he apologized after. Was the song Takeover? No, nah, no, nah, that was about that was about Nas. Oh. But he didn't apologize to Nas too when he put out Super Ugly after Big Over. Well, um, what do you got to say to J. Cole, man? Like, I mean, yo, be honest, man. Like, when you grow up, you get older. Sometimes you realize you're in the wrong. I think that's what he was trying to say. In two days, though, it's not like he yeah. in two days. But you know, sometimes your emotions get the best of you. You just make a decision, and you're like, Nah, I should have done that. J. Cole had post this clarity. I don't know what it was. <laughs> but, <laughs> Wait, but are you guys reverts? Yes. What yes. made you revert to Islam? So in Miami, I go to a, an all-black masjid too, and it's um, is it some it's of them in, uh, in uh, Liberty City? I don't know if it's. In, I go to a couple. I go to a couple, and but you can tell. That's over there. Okay. In the forties somewhere. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, and you can tell a lot of them grew up Christian. Did you guys grow up Christian? Yeah. Then you. Be, yeah, what made you co come to Islam from Christianity? A lot of things. Man. I let him go first. Though. It just fits me perfectly. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't party, so I mean, it just fits. That's it. And me, uh, long story short, my grandfather was Muslim and he converted to Christianity. So I was always like fascinated by that. And then like some of my closest friends were Muslim. So like growing up, any Muslim I knew was just good people, like 100% solid. So I was always drawn to the religion. My man that we out here with, he took us to the mosque when I was like 17. So he gave me some books and I studied it, so it had always been in the back of my mind. And then like through the course of life, some things happened, I kind of you know, strayed away. Yeah. And I just found my way back like recently. So you guys don't really reverts anymore, you've been Muslim for how long? Oh, I just took my shahada like three weeks ago. Oh, my shahada, three weeks ago? Yeah, two weeks, really. On the, yeah. Allahu Akbar. On the, uh, three weeks ago? Like two, two, two and a half weeks, so three days. What about you, how long have you been Muslim? Ten months. Ten months? Yeah. Well, you guys are newer than me. Yeah, yeah. You're the first yeah. ones I ever met, wow. I'm one year. It's my first Ramadan, nice, but yeah. Nice, nice. Wow. How you guys like in Medina? Just got here tonight, like a couple of hours ago. So yeah, this is my first time here. We, we've been in uh, Jeddah. We was there. For yeah, it's close by. It's like yeah, a... yeah, we've been there the last couple of days. So yeah, I'm loving it so far, man. What do you have to say to? Uh, I have mostly an American audience, like, bro. To, I bet a lot of people at home in, in Carolina, they think like, what are you doing, Saudi Arabia? It's probably pretty crazy, but. Yeah, that's the thing too about Islam too. We were talking about it earlier, like it's extremely clean. You know what I'm saying? The people I've met, the people I've met, you know what I'm saying? There's always been like peace and love. You know what I'm saying? Even just being in in the masjid now, you see thousands of people. Like I've never seen nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? It's just crazy to see like everybody's doing the same thing at the same time. You got women and men. Like, in that large number, it's just crazy to me. Unheard of. Three million people in Mecca yesterday. Yeah, we was All in the Masjid al-Haram. You were in Mecca yesterday? Yeah. Bro, it was a madhouse, right? Yeah, yeah. Way way my own were there. And so just, just that, man, it was just like a, an experience, man. I've never seen that. Well, you both have the, they say that about me, they say the uh, noor. You, you both have the noor on your face, which is like a, a certain brightness. You, you can tell that uh, you're close to, uh, to Allah right now. Yeah. That's great to Definitely hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, before, I don't want to keep you guys too long, but like... What made you convert to it? You said you don't drink, party, smoke. What was like the, um, the catalyst? Um, so I kind of went through the phase of experiencing everything. The cars, the clothes, the women. And it didn't make me happy. This is it. What led you there? What made you open up the Quran and... Seeing kind of how the West is going. Yeah. Like, it's just going downhill, so. That's it. The West is falling, so go east. Yeah, go east. Yeah, yep, I'm yep, in the yep. same boat. Yeah. Hey, man, Allah bless you both and keep yeah. you steadfast yeah. on your journey with Islam, man. Yeah. Hope I see you again soon. Yeah, when you head back to Miami? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't want to go back. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I, I've been here all of Ramadan. I've never been away from America, I think, this long in my life. 
and I have no homesickness at all. I just want to. I want to go to Egypt next, and maybe go to Morocco. I was in Egypt. You going to Morocco? You just, I was in Egypt last August. Beautiful trip. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, I had a great time. One of my top. I've been to Morocco last year. It was, yeah, really fun. Yeah, I've been all over the world, but Egypt, like, really, like, one of the best trips I've ever seen. Where'd you go in Egypt? I was over in Cairo. I took my mom there. It was her birthday. So Mashallah. Hey, what a guy, man. Taking yeah, you there. Man, you know? So, yeah, man, I'm loving it out here, man. I, it's a short trip. I'm leaving on Friday, so I don't have a lot of time here. So, I'm trying to make the best of it. Hopefully, we keep seeing more Americans pop up in here. Oh, yeah, Ron, I, I'm here. Yeah, they're all around. I think you guys are the first Americans that I've seen. Yeah, around. yeah. Yeah, nah. Are you American? No. Yeah, no, no. Oh, you did? <laughs> Actually. We're having that whole conversation. Thank you. Wait, where, where are you guys from? Where are you from, man? Are you guys from New York? I'm from Brooklyn. I was born in Manhattan. No way. Yeah. Wait, what you, made you guys come to Saudi Arabia? We were here last year for um, Ramadan, and I just connected with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Wasallam. We made it happen in like four months. Actually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it happen in like four months. So, it's amazing. So, how long in Jeddah now? One year? No, it's seven, seven, eight months now. How was the transition from the west to the east? Uh, the transition for me was really easy. It was really natural. For my son and my two teenage daughters, it was Harder. a little hard. Yeah. But Do they speak Arabic yet? No, not yet. Uh, international school or something? Yes. Okay. The American International School, so I think that's making the transition a little bit easier, but um, I think they're really enjoying Ramadan, fasting with other people. It's way different than being in the U.S. where you have to catch the school bus at 6.30 a.m. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all about that. And, and, and no one gets what you're going through. <laughs> mm. So. Oh, may all, mashallah, may Allah bless you yes. and your, your journey here. Um, a, I'm so happy. Yeah, yeah I can tell. I can tell. That's beautiful. Yeah. Good things happen when you when Allah tells you what you should do and you really listen. Follow it. La bake, Allah huma la bake. When Allah gives you the call, you answer the call. You answer the call. Yeah. Are you drinking a beer? No, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. what the? That's haram. Oh, sure. Let's show. Let's do a photo. I'm underage to drink anyway. Oh, okay. We found you on a sketchy website. No, what the? No, it's like the other guy, like the believer, like the I am the warner. Oh, I'm the warner, yeah. yeah. Sketchy. <laughs> you might hold this for one second. Thank you so much, bro. It's all sketchy. I don't know where he found you, but he knows who you are and he your name. Oh, great. What would you say to Americans that want to take the, the jump? And I'm kind of in that position where I just want to take the jump and move over. What would you say to them who are like, thinking about it? as many people as you can while you're here. And it's too hard up. It'll happen for you. There's one American I know. Do you guys know Muta Beal? Yeah. Muta, he's uh, he's Tupac's adopted son. He moved from. Yes, no, 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 not adopted son. No, my bad, my bad. No, 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 that, that, no my bad. Um, it's he he was in uh, Tupac's rap group together. The Outlaws, right, right, right. He lives out here, right? Yeah, he lives in Riyadh. Yeah, I've seen his video. Yeah, and he, he started uh, He's in can you uh, take two cup take two cube take, take two cube take two okay take two can you have to Instagram. I'm banned on TikTok and I'm banned on Instagram. Yeah, you can I'm, I'm, I'm banned you on YouTube. You, man, you I'm banned on YouTube. Oh, so no, Wallahi, I'm banned on YouTube, TikTok, YouTube? Instagram. Only YouTube? No, I'm no, no, on X. X, I'm on X. Hey, Twitter, Twitter, yes. Twitter. 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 Halas, halas. Twitter. YouTube is Shaitan. Don't be a plug. Twitter, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. Wow. Wow, very good. Very good. Now, can I get free ice cream for the plug? Okay. No, no, I'm joking. It's okay. I just like a lot. They're farming.
That's it. I may just turn. I may just turn 18. Yeah. That's it. I may just turn 18. Sneeko. Sneeko, yeah. You have? Yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah, sure. If we just get here together, how do you? My team from Australia is just Oh, okay. Yes, sir. What's his name? Yeah, okay, say salam to him. He's watching. Okay, bro. Yeah, he's a big fan of yours. Oh, great. That's great. Thanks, bro. All right. Should maybe appreciate my scar, huh? Bro. Bro, I see the screen. Come on. He made it, I'm assuming. He's a doctor. He, he, uh, one of his students called him. He was at the airport. And he's like, what's all that noise? He's like, oh, I have a second job. I, I work at the airport. So, what? What about you? Why don't you leave? I did. I sold everything. Oh, you, you live here now? No. What do you do? You mind saying? What do you have in mind? Like Morocco seems cool. I could be in Saudi. Well, can you can you stand? I can't hear him. If he South America, Southeast Asia, or the Middle East. Like Thailand, you're thinking about? Oh, you're like a, one of those passport bros. <laughs> Wait, do you, do you watch Fresh and Fit? Yeah, yeah, I had a feeling, yeah. Um, but you, what do you mean you sold everything? You sold your business and your, your car? Everything, yeah. What, what do you hate about America? So, what, what, not hate, but what do you want to get away from in America? Places I've been to, the people are a lot more friendlier. They're way more humble. And everything's like 30% of the cost of what it costs to, uh, to rent, uh, utilities, everything is. What'd you say? Nah, nah, nah. Just, uh, nothing. It's okay. Oh, let me get the sisters in. But everything's cheaper? I know you. I don't know you. What's my name? What's my name? Wallahi, I'm banned on YouTube, bro. YouTube is Shaitan. Wallah, Shaitan. Shaitan. YouTube is evil. I'm not on YouTube. Wallah, I'm banned on YouTube for two years now. Yeah. Wallah, two years I've been banned now. TikTok banned, Instagram banned, YouTube banned, everything. Halas. Told the truth. Alhamdulillah, I told the truth about Islam. I talk about God. You can't give dawah. As soon as you, like, that's why they banned me on Instagram. I talk about Islam. My last post on Instagram was me talking about Ramadan and training and fasting during Ramadan. Say something. I'm never made it. I feel you will be mad at me. I just took my shot. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, anything happens. Oh, you're a Muslim. You're a tattoo. Oh! What? It, does this make me Kufar? Yeah, Muslim don't do that. I'm Kufar? Yeah, but when you do, uh, when you pray, this is, uh, you're a bad prayer. Well, I'm a new Muslim, Muslim Jadid. I've been Muslim for one year, and I used to be Christian. So, Christians get tattoos. But when you become a Muslim, your past sins are forgiven. Yeah, but not like this. What? So tattoos yeah. aren't forgiven? Yeah, not forgiven. How do you know? Are you Allah? No, I'm not Allah, but I know that. Because I'm Allah knows best, and Allah says he forgives past sins. Yeah, but take this tattoo. Have you ever seen somebody take tattoos off? Yeah. Who? You can? Yeah. Okay, you pay for the surgery, I'll get them removed. This is doesn't account. It doesn't account? Yeah. Ask Allah. How I ask Allah? Make dua for me. Make dua for me. Make dua, forgive my tattoos. Allah, 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 Allah. Mashallah, I mean, I mean. Okay, good. 
It, you can't just take out. What do you want me to do? Burn my skin? No, I've never seen that. <laughs> oh, man. The kids hate the tattoos here. Yeah, with the laser? Yeah. Okay, when you pay for the surgery, I'll get them removed. You will pay it. Okay, thank you. Thank you for paying for it. Wait, wait, wait. Band-aids. What? Band-aids, right? Band-aids. Band-aids? What would, that would look worse. It's still on my skin. How bad? They wouldn't see it then. I don't know. I don't know. I still can't see it. Unless he's our heart, right? Yeah. Allah does not see the skin. He sees the heart. If you have Islam in your heart, then you're a Muslim. Halas. Wait, so am I going to Janaham? Do you think I'm going to Janaham? Yes. Am I going to Jana or Janaham? Jahannam. Okay. Make dua for me. Inshallah, inshallah. Okay. All right, thank you, thank you. Don't touch my tattoos, they're haram. Now the haram pass on to you. Got it! Ah, oh, you're going to Janaham. You're going to Janaham. <laughs> okay. Inshallah, inshallah. Okay. Wait, all Christians will what? Or else what? Oh. <laughs> wow, she's funny. Oh, no more, no more. I, I'm, I'm on, I'm banned everywhere. What am I videoing? Yeah. I'm videoing the beauty of Medina, and then you started talking about my tattoos, and now it's about. That, yes, I went to. I did Umrah, everything. Yes. Yeah. I'm saying to myself, how do you go to Umrah? Oh my. <laughs> move on, move on. <laughs> move on, go somewhere else. Go with your brother. I'm not You're not? I'm my cousin. Your cousin? Yeah, I'm older than him. Oh, you're more mature than her. You're you're more mature than your cousin. Oh, he doesn't understand what I'm saying. Never. <laughs> huh? Yeah, he's a cool guy. No. No? Oh, no, no, I really don't like you. No, 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 no. What about the bag? Yeah, because Christiana, the t-shirt, it has no... Okay, you, you know more about Christiana than me. Yeah, okay, well, halas, halas. Okay, I'll get the tattoos removed, okay? Uh, what? That's a... <laughs> the haram. Okay. All right. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You don't have any tattoos on like that? Oh, lucky you. Lucky you. Do you have, do you, I want to, I want to give some, um, give some charity now. I'm, I'm like looking for a place, uh, you see like all the people over there that are like getting that food? Oh my God, this girl. Do, do you think you can, are, are you guys like, uh, busy right now? I'm about to get food somewhere. Oh, okay, okay. All right. all right, it was nice to meet you guys. Safe travels, Ramadan Kareem, guys. Great to meet you. What's your name? Sneeko. Sneeko? Uh, yeah. Sneeko, well, Lake of Salaam. How you doing? Good, good. Salaam. How you doing? Good, good, good. How you doing? I know you're from Medina. Salaam. Yeah, sure. Uh, a couple days. I'm not sure, bro. Have a good time. That girl cooked me so hard. Bro, my tattoos are just getting like... I, I, I need saw, to... I saw the thing on two. I know you're in oh! What's that? Wait, she's been cooking me for 30 minutes straight. Yeah, because I know that you're... Wallahi, wallahi, listen, wallahi, I am banned on YouTube. I'm not allowed on YouTube. What? I show Kaisana. What the? <laughs> no, listen, YouTube is shaitan. YouTube is shaitan. Why is shaitan? Because they allow filth. They allow LGBT, transgender. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> These kids are not. Oh, no, that's a Saudi education system. Yeah, I know. Why do you know that? I know, but LGBT Shaitan. Okay, you are on YouTube. How is Shaitan using you? He's on YouTube. Nice to meet you. Okay. He's a big fan of you, Yeah? Well, I stream on Rumble. Rumble? 
Rumble. Uh, yeah, it's not allowed in Saudi Arabia. Is it? Nah, it's banned in Saudi. You have to get a VPN. Right. How'd you get? You don't get stream stuff as well. Yeah, all the time. Bro, the, the, yeah, no, this guy's been following me for like three days straight. Yeah, bro. Nah, I've been here for two months. Okay. Why you upload this video? You think I can on Rumble? Video? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Do you hold this? Are you guys busy right now? No, no, no. Okay, you want to help me get some charity? Yeah, sure. I'll do it for you. No, I don't trust her. I don't trust her. I'll do it for you. No, let her shaitan hands off her. No, let her shaitan. I'm not shaitan. Kufar hands. What? Kufar hands is crazy. I'm not Kufar. Yo, I'm telling you. No fuel. I sleep with you. Okay, so I wanna, I wanna get some change and give some, uh, some money. Do you want to? Okay, sure. What is this life? Why are you putting your hand there? Bro, what the? This nigga was gripping the back of my lower back like a palm photo. Alright, so let me throw this ice cream out. It was very mid, and then. um, mid. Yeah, very mid. Do you mind if I throw this out here? Jazakallah, Jazakallah. You think it's crazy over here? Alright, it is kind of low key. Okay, let me try this uh, this coconut juice. Um, Where's the trash cans here? Huh? I'm not just touching there, bro. Can I put this here? Jazakallah, Jazakallah. Let me give you some money. Give me some money. There you go. Oh, okay. That was like thirty dollars right there. Where are salam? Yeah. What's your name, handsome? Uh, what the? F <laughs> What's your name? I'm from Brooklyn, man. Park You're Slope. Oh, okay. Are you Jewish? Huh? Are you Jewish? In order to be a Muslim, you've got to be a good Jew and a good Christian. You can't be a Muslim without oh, being a Christian. Play, oh, play oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Christian. Huh? You need to be Muslim. Because you have to believe in the Torah, you have to believe in the Ingeen, and yeah. all the prophets. Yeah. You need to Where are you boys from? Uh, all over. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I need to get some change. Okay, this is this good. Uh, today, today's income is like crazy. Yeah. Nah. Why are you trying to give this stuff up? Um, no, okay, so I, I want to get some cash and then I want to give it out to the hungry people. Yeah, that guy was weird, bro. Is it crazy? What the? Hey! Kufar girl, cover your hair, cover your hair. She just ran away with my Get your cousin. Oh my. What the? Unbelievable, bro. These kids are, so where are your parents? I'm telling you. Up there? Get your kid. Ow, she's pushing me now. Yeah. Yeah. How do you get hurt by that? Well, you want to fight? Yeah. I'll no, not you. Oh, come on, come on. Is it right it's right it's a it's a it's a a <laughs> okay, I actually do want to give charity though, so let, let's. What are you just going to buy stuff from here? Huh? You're going to buy stuff from here? No, no, I want to. There's people waiting in line. I can just give out cash. I think was crazy for Project Guitar. Yeah, you saw, wait, you saw Project Guitar? Yeah. Bro, Project Guitar is almost at $100,000 right now. You can go to projectguitar.org slash Nico. Almost 100K in the month of Ramadan. Mashallah. Uh, it's just me. He's not, he's not in Medina, though. Nah, he's not. He's not. Are they open? I, I need. I need cash. Cash. No, no, no. It's just, no, just let me change cash. Well, no, man. The shop's in the. It's in the frame, man. It's good I'll pay. Muslim. I'll pay you for cash. Okay. Okay. Now she's. They don't even know They just seen the phone. They know. I know. Well, I would have been able to get the cat. That little girl didn't grab us. Oh my charity. God! Go away. <laughs> we just want to know your name. On oh my God. <laughs> Leave me alone! What's 
Salam. Can I get a can I have change? To get, get some tens? I want to give it out for chair for zakat. <laughs> Hey, don't leave. This is the finger joints. You know they get the androids for the streams. Yeah, man. Of course. Camera's banging. The iPhone's the Percy. And then they get the Samsung. I have a hundred. Fifty five minutes. This is crazy. You don't have a hundred? Who sent that? Who's that? Why are you ignoring us? You have the 50? Let me give you 100 for 50. Crazy off the kilo. No, okay, I'm changing it for the tonight. No, that's cool. Okay. Yo, you lot pan up, man. The people are going to think this is what av average Saudi kids are like. We just, we just want to say sorry. Sorry. You don't yeah, my brother and girl. You made him run, you know. Yeah. He's I ill. Want he I want him to feel how Umrah is. Umrah is. He did Umrah. Huh? He's came. He's come so many times. Yeah, I know that. He had a fight the other day. He's, he's tired, his legs are gone. He was in the cage with the tiger. He's been back and forth, bro. What hotel he is in? He, he's with, um, he lives, he stays in the mosque. Mosque? Yeah. Go on the roof, you'll see him. You get to stay there the whole night, though. So that's the second one. You can't say Allah, Allah. How old are you guys? What? How old are you guys? Um, 18. Crazy. And 12? He's maybe 20. How many meals can I give? Me? 20. He's Nico. Yes. So how does it cost? Um, well, I just want to give out food. Whatever's best. I have 300. I want to give out food. Okay. Give me. Uh, okay, perfect. 60. Perfect. 60. How long will it take? No, 200 OG speaker. Huh? 200 OG speaker. So tomorrow, tomorrow after Asr, we'll come here, we're going to get about 60 meals. Easy. Easy, easy as. That's on top of the project as well. Put your number here. How are you? Uh, I, I gave away all the money. Yeah, it's perfect as well. It's the last Ramadan, isn't it? That was making it. All right. Go from Britain. America, America, Shaitan man. Me? Yeah. Yeah. Tel Aviv. T text me on, on WhatsApp. Yeah. Or plus, plus one, plus one. Okay, good? Oh my. I want to see something. Okay, you said sorry. I heard it. Okay. Yes. Jazakallah. Huh? Be the Yeah, I want Sneeko. Sneeko. Yeah, okay. What's your name? Mahmoud. Mahmoud. Great to meet you. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? All right. Inshallah, inshallah. Oh. Well, Lake Salaam. What's up? Where are you from? I'm from Portsmouth. Oh, great to meet you. From Portsmouth. Okay. Well, so I, I don't have any more, bro. I don't have. I gave it all away. I gave it all. It's genuinely friendly. Huh? It's genuinely just friendly. Yeah. Oh, so Lake Where are you from, bro? Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Oh, okay. What's your name? David. Great to meet you, brother. Great to meet you. Salam alaikum, all you guys. Okay. How's your experience been here, bro? Hey, what's good? How's my wife? Salam. Good, 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 good. A little hectic. These kids, are they still following or they left? Nah, they're gone. Okay, finally. Okay. I told them that you're going to be sleeping in the rooftop of the. On the rooftop. Oh, I need to go to the rooftop right now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll see you guys. I forgot. I totally. You just reminded me. I'm meeting uh, Adele right now. Hey, great. I'll see you guys soon, huh? Yeah. What's your name? You, you were funny. What's your name? Yeah. Muhammad, okay, okay. 
Maybe I'll see them. I'll, I'll be here at, at three, after Asa tomorrow to give out charity if you want to meet here. Tomorrow, yeah. After what? After after Asa, I'll be uh, right here, and then we're gonna. You can help me give away food, huh? Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. All right. Slap. Totally forgot about Adele chat. Hey, salam alaikum. Hey, someone clipped that girl running away with the phone, though. That was funny. <laughs> bro, what, bro? Help you what? Help me about this. Eat, Mavi. Eat? Eat, eat. It's actually Mavi. I don't have any more food. I don't have any more food, bro. I, I don't have anything, bro. Huh? I don't have money, bro. <laughs> okay, okay. L Ego, bro. I'm talking to 30 people at once, chat. What do you want me to do? There's literally... Chat. There's 50 people talking at once, and I'm trying to give charity. Like, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And everyone's mad now. What the? Assalamu alaikum. Where are you guys from? Where are you from? France. You're from France? Yes. Como ça va? Ça va bien? Pas mal, pas mal. Pas mal, pas mal. Comme si, comme ça. Comme si, comme ça. Comme si, comme ça. C'est quoi? Tu as pu le récupérer? Oui. Ah, ok. Oui, monsieur la petite, elle est partie avec un courant. Bien sûr. Ouais, t'as sprinté là. T'as fait un sprint. T'as sprinté? Oh, the girl took my phone, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where she is. She's been following me everywhere. Uh, elle est fou. Elle est fou. Elle est folle, folle. Folle, folle, folle. Enchanté. Ok. Enchanté. Be humble to the kids. I am, bro. Kids, good content. Yes, yes, yes. Are his daughters? <sighs> El Ego kids were cool. They were cool, bro. I'm joking around. Bro, she literally ran away with my phone. They were cool, but they, they need to go back to their parents, you know? They gave you free content. I know they were cool. Bro, why are you all saying El Ego? Bro, what do you want me to do? I'm literally like... Wait, are you, are you guys actually mad at me? Put a one if you're mad at me, two if I'm cool. Sister Revert wanted to talk to you? Yeah, I know, but you're not supposed to do that in the city, really. Like, I, I wanted to talk to her, too. But you can't really... Yeah, I know, she looked... Uh, but you're not really supposed to be doing that here. Especially, like, I'm a pretty high-profile person. It's a bad look. Okay, you guys mad at me or what? Hey, Salam alaikum. Hey, how are you? Where are you guys from? Uh, we're from Pakistan. We met you yesterday. Oh, okay. Yeah, Tarawi, I think day before yesterday. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was my cousin. Oh, okay. Yeah, you take a picture. Salam. Yeah, nice meeting you. Nice to meet you too. Give ice cream to the kids. Marry a Tunisian. Should have engaged with them more. With who? The Frenchies? Uh, high profile person. Am I not, bro? Like, literally. Don't call Muslim Kufar, it's a bad thing. I know I'm joking. Give ice cream to the kids. Okay, let me try to find the kids before I go meet Adele. Adel or whatever. Desktop, this is nonsense. What are you talking about? This is fire content. You think the kids left or what? I felt bad. Okay, now you guys are making me feel bad, bro. Find a wife. I can't do that on, in Medina. Like, you're not you're supposed to lower your gaze in the city. You're not even really supposed to be interacting with women. Bro, and I'm not going to do it for content just to entertain you guys. This is not... I love Saudi Arabia, I love the king, all this stuff. Like, don't want to make it look bad. You shouldn't be doing that in a holy city. <sighs> Free mixing a Saram, so. Buy them ice cream? Okay, fine, fine, fine. Okay. The desktop hits, this is boring. This is the fastest chats moved in so long. Thanks for the five. Um, Sika, go to Gaza and IRL stream placing sticky bombs in the tank. Actually. Okay, WJ Walker, let's go.
I'm literally going back to find kids right now. <laughs> I'll say sorry to them if I find them, if I can find them. Always buy kids stuff. Oh, yeah, I know, bro. It's, chat, stop acting. It's, it's, it's like, well, I, it's a little hard to focus on that at once. When you say LD, you go to one guy, there's like so many people talking at once. It's hard to like divert your focus. You can at least give me that, even if you think I'm a terrible person. Imagine being in that social situation where 20, like, come on, come on. Give me a break. Give ice cream to the kids. Okay, we're doing it. We're doing it. Hope you find the kids. Bro, are they the... You guys like them that much? I thought the those black, like, reverts were more content than them. I was trying to farm the clip of them, like, talking about um, becoming Muslim and want to get the shaitan clip from them. Okay, where'd they go? Where'd they go? I feel bad now. Uh, do you see him anywhere? Did they go back to their hotel? Oh man. Walaikum salam. How are you, bro? Where are you from? From where? Salam. Ah, uh, they're gone. No. They're gone. Is the Egypt stream with Arab? Well, Arab's got to stay home for a while, bro. I may pull up if Muhammad Ajab is with you. Bro, he let him sleep. He's with, you can see he was so tired. Go in the hotel. Oh, yeah. What hotel was it? They pointed. It was this one, right? It was. So we were standing here. Um, look at what the chat's got me doing. Like, literally, like, stalking down children. Like, what the? Why? What is my life? All right, they're gone. They're gone. They're gone. L Sneeko W kids. What, you, you guys turn on me so fast, bro. Creep co. <laughs> I'm not going in the hotel. Like, hey, you see any children? Um, <laughs> might have been eight or nine. I'm good. Yeah, well, why am I listening to you guys? Like, the girl, she literally ran away with my phone. Why? Oh, I, you know what? It's not a neon stream. I'm not letting chat run my life. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Okay? Okay. Haram tattoos. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. That kid kind of cooked me in the debate, too. <laughs> She ran fast. Whoa. Oh, we could fall model on the roof. We still have some time for Fajr. And tomorrow's the last day, or aka today's the last day of um, fasting. Hey, you're back, you're back. Where are you going right now? Your mom's still, uh, Fajr's not for a while. Fajr's not for a while. Yeah, I know. I'm just gonna bring a swimmer, man. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Just two o'clock. What are you doing, about? I don't know, bro. Everyone asks me that, I never know. Yeah. I never know, I bro. Like Rio, right? Huh? I mean, it's nice. I love it, bro. It's best, man. I love it. Best city. Best city, man. Best city. Ah, right, bro, take care. All right, man. Yeah. May Allah bless you. This city is fire, bro. How many of you put me right now if you're not Muslim and you're still watching this? Literally, like, how many places are you gonna find in the world that's all Muslims like this? You ditched the reverse? Yeah, I did. If you get him a little bit and then move on and then find some more side characters, huh? You get a little bit to move on. He sounds East African, he's Somali. Yeah, see, okay, let's see how many people are not Muslim watching this. Talib Hamasco, okay, stop, you definitely are. You? Bro, what do you mean, you? <laughs> you, but. Fine, Adal. Okay, let me text him. 
I bet there's a lot of non-Muslims watching this and they're seeing how dope this city is. It really is a vibe. Except that one dude, someone clipped the guy. Hey, salam alaikum. Uh, someone clipped that Brooklyn dude from earlier. What, what do you want me to do? Surah? Okay, let's take a picture. Yeah. Let's take a picture. What do you what do you want me you want me to take a picture of you guys? Hold on, it's a little blurry. Oh, hold on, hold on. Uh, one more, one more, one more. This camera's blurry. Yeah. Mashallah, mashallah. Okay, get back again. Yeah. No, get together again. It was bad. Okay. <laughs> Mashallah. Okay. Salam alaikum. Of course, bro. Bro, I think I have an L ego because I'm like, why is he holding the camera? Like, oh, they didn't want to take a picture with me. They just wanted a picture. <laughs> That's my L ego. Assuming that everybody just <laughs> wants to take a <laughs> Humbled, you fell off. <laughs> Humbled, co humbled. It's not always about you. I know. Well, like, uh, did you know? Let everyone who's like saying El Ego, did you, what did you assume? You probably assume the same thing I assumed, right? Okay, let me text Otto. Go back, mashallah. All right, let me be careful. Let's not get kicked out. Let's not get kicked out. Oh, I should have bought tattoo covers for today. It is what it is, bro. It is what it is, bro. Siga, you cannot leave America. America needs good Muslim leaders. You cannot abandon your community to shaitan. I can do whatever I want to do. You don't tell me what to do. Okay, let me text them. I'm here. I'll come up in 10. I want to walk around a bit first. All right, I'm going to put the camera close to my chest so I don't... Oh, he says coming. Okay. The fact that you guys just called me a Muslim leader is crazy. I'm a... First Ramadan is right now. Like, you call me Muslim leader and I haven't even done Eid yet. <laughs> you Eid yet, boy. It seems pretty chill right now. Hopefully the cops don't give me trouble. But do you guys know what happened to Neon? Did he get a, did he get detained? Like I don't know, I don't know the details. Free Neon if he did. Good kid. Already? It's 3:45. It's just non-stop prayer, bro. It was just Kiam. And right before Kiyama was Tarwi, right before Tarwi was Isha, right before Isha was Maghrib. It's just non-stop. Beautiful though, very beautiful view. I think it's 30 minutes to Fajr, so like the prayer call to the prayer call. We got a little bit of time. What the? Ashadu Allah. Remove the tripod, not a bad idea. Well, I'm fine so far. Fine so far. I'll move the tripod when I get inside.
You should IRL stream it all Axel Moss. I have said, okay, the reason it's tempting, but this is the reason, look at this. This is why it's probably not a good idea. Probably why it's not the best idea for me to go there. I'll just do, a, do one little lap and then we'll go meet Adel upstairs. And then we can yap for a little bit before Fodger. Good. You see it? He didn't even look. See, the, the cops only give me a problem when people surround me. Yep. See? Oh my days. Yo, what the? Yo, hold up. For one sec. Yo, take me Yo, hang up on her. I hang up on I Sydney. Hey, Sydney, 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 let me talk to Sydney. Oh. Oh, he's gone. You just told me to hang up. What in the? <laughs> Here, come with, come with me. Um, come with this way. Let's walk for. I'm just walking this way. Is this the Adan or the Adan to the Adan? This is, this is Tahajjud Adan. Yeah, it's like the Adan call to call to prayer. Yeah. Salam alaikum. Adan time. It's Fajr. Early morning, Medina. Come on, you get me. Yo, salam alaikum. Alaikum salam, man. Yo, how are you? Man? I'm good. I'm good. Yo, nah, this Oh look, let's go on Instagram. You can't tag me in that. I hope you know. Can't I? I'm banned on Instagram. For what? For giving dollar bro. You've got hella harassment for these tattoos, man. Why? What see, did they say to you? They, they don't want a young nigga to see like me, man. They don't want a young black nigga doing well with the uh, to really. <laughs> what? <laughs> we're in the, bro, we're in the house. You can't say nigga. Be... That's not really a curse. But still, come on, man. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> stop it. Let's stop it. <laughs> I, I feel like nigga doesn't count. That aside, how have you how have you found this? Oh, it's beautiful. I, I mean, I came here before. I came here back in November. I spent a lot of time here. I, like Medina is kind of like our second home at this point. You know, like this is really like this is really my city. Like when you pull up to Medina, you pull up. You got to check in with me, no? You check in with Sneeko when you pull up to Medina. First, first, no, no, no. First, you check in with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then you check in with Sneeko type. You know? So not the rest of the Sahaba, huh? Not the rest of the Sahaba. Not the rest. Not the Umar bin Khattab. Not Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, just you us. Okay, okay, you have to say salam to Abu Bakr and may Allah be pleased with them. Of course, okay, of course, of course, with everybody you know. But when you talk about the living, you gotta check in with Sneeko. Okay, alright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, I'm here now, I checked in. You checked in, you're good to go, you're good to go on the block. You don't need to worry about no kufar while you're here. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know what's crazy? What's crazy? I've been seeing your like, little, little clips of you on Instagram. I'm thinking, yo, why am I not seeing this guy? I've seen Adil. And, uh, yeah, I'm about to go link up with them right now. I literally, I seen them like a couple days ago. Wait, who do you think won that to me? Me or uh, Adele? Me, what, what's what's the Adele, Adele. Or he, Adele, he thinks that feminism is good. I think feminism is bad. Okay, I don't know about all of that. I don't talk on that. I got, I got three sisters and a mother. Oh, okay, okay. You know, so... So you're basically a feminist yourself. I'm, listen, I believe in the rights that Islam gives to women. That's what I believe. Right. I believe in the Quran and the Sunnah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is what I'm saying, bro. Look, everyone Yo, he just had thing. Umrah. Look at his head. Whoa, he got that Umrah head. Come on, man. Stop. <laughs> You're done, though. Come on. Done, though. Hi. Where are you from? I'm from Mauritania. Mauritania? Yeah. Salam alaikum. Great to meet you guys. How are you? Looking good. Like, those are looking fly. Yeah. Yeah, need me one like that. Let's trade. Let me get that one. Okay, I'm going to give you the Let me get that one. Inshallah, inshallah. Let's take a photo, bro. Great to meet you, brother. Great, right. great to meet you. All right, you got the Snapchat out, you see? Okay, all right. Damn, I fell off, bro. He didn't even want to take a Yo, picture. Yo, free this guy. Free my man, free my man. Yo, Sydney, I'm telling you, this is a crazy one. You get me? How long have you been here for? A minute? Oh, uh, yeah. No, like four days. Nah, I've seen you. Yo, I swear down, I'm not even capping. Swear, say swear, say wallah. <laughs> Yo. I'm seeing this guy, I'm supposed to go to my normal spot and I just bumped into this guy. What the heck? Come on. He's in the UK. What's his he's name? In, he's, his name is Sidney. He's in Manchester. Man like Sydney. Sydney. What are you saying? What are you saying? He's got the cam on you and everything. Man. <laughs> Man's all the way in Manchester. Are you live streaming right now? Uh, yeah. Oh, my Wait, say, say what's up to the chat. We're live on Rumble right now. 
Yo, see what's up. And now I'm walking with him. What is going on? You chill, man. It's, it's Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, it's Ramadan. Yo, tonight was the last night for Tarawi and Tahajjud, man. Yeah, did I you know. free in Jama'ah? Um, yesterday I did the Tarawi. It was 33 minutes, bro. It was brutal. But I, I, this is my first, I hope you know, it's my first Ramadan. Uh, so standing up for 33 minutes, like while he's reading the end of the Quran, that was brutal. Yo, brutal, brutal. did you stand for the dua at the end? Okay. Yeah, like, he was crying. You were there? Yeah. Well, he was crying OD, like, but. It was it was really deep. It was heavy. All right, the whole time I, I was struggling to stay up, man. I have a bad attention span, so like 33 minutes just standing you know, like this. You but know, to be I did fair, it. You know what I do? Like obviously I don't know whether it's good to do it or not. But you know within salah, you have something called khushu, which means concentration within the salah. So you stay focused on what you're reading, what you what the imam is saying. What I try and do is follow along with the surah that the imam is reciting mm -hmm. so that the english translation comes up like i'll show you now yo signal i'll call you back yeah hey listen one step so like here surah baqarah we we went let's over here let me see. surah baqarah is what we went over uh these first 10 rakat so if i click on the surah <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you'd be doing me a justice. So look, like obviously this is one ayah, this is one verse. That's the English translation underneath. Beautiful for those who disbelieve is the life of this world. And they ridicule those who believe. But those who fear Allah are above them on the day of resurrection. And Allah gives provision to whom he wills without account. I can't, I gotta, bro, I can't lie to you. And maybe a stuffle of this is bad for saying. No, but no. I've been reading the Quran like for the past three, four days. It's like I, in the mind that I go there, sit down, read. And you sit quite close to the roda. You sit quite close to the uh, imam's grave. I don't even sit this close. Yeah, I sit just right in here and I read Quran. It's the best place to read Quran, in my opinion. I have almost finished it. I think I have almost read the whole thing. But there's, I would say so many surahs are basically exactly like this. What do you mean? The disbelievers are going to hell. The believers are going to make it. Well, it's a constant reminder of your Lord. You ha we have to, like, look, for example, yeah, if you didn't have the adhan every day, you would oh, have the reminder. Exactly. Yeah. And we hear the Adhan five times a day in Muslim countries. When you're in America, when I'm in the UK, I don't have that. I have to read the time of Salah off a sheet, uh, off a timetable that I get from the local masjid. You know what I mean? But am I wrong for saying that, like, I would say 50% of the surahs either start or end with this? I don't know, innit? You like, don't think I'm so? Not half, I'm not a half of the Quran. I couldn't tell you. You can't read Arabic? I can read Arabic, yeah. Oh, okay. But that's why I read the translation for a better understanding of it. Yeah. Because with... Obviously, I don't understand the Arabic language to its full extent. So, what is the day of resurrection exactly? Because I keep no, reading about that in the Quran. Is that the day you die or the day that no, all no, humanity... No. So that's when the Jal and... The Jal comes before that. So, what's the day of resurrection? The day of resurrection is when there will be an angel who blows the horn. He will, he will blow the horn and everyone will die. Then he'll blow the horn again and everyone will be resurrected. That day is where we'll be held accountable by Allah on our, our sins and our good deeds. And Allah will judge on whether or not we are deserving of heaven or hell. On that but a lot of us are going to be dead already. You know, most of us yeah, are not even. Yeah, bro, you think about the whole, like, all the generations that have died. Yeah. All the generations that have died, they're going to be, they're going to be brought back to life. And Allah is going to, he's going to help, help hold everyone accountable. Yeah. That's what they, they that's what, you know, the day of resurrection is. Okay. Yom al -Qiyama. Do we have any idea when that's going to be? There's like there's minor and major signs. There's been a few. There's been a lot of minor signs. I'm not 100 percent sure about how many major signs there've been. But like music, for example, music is a is a sign of is a, is a sign. Uh, what else? Like the um, the fact that same same gender marriage is becoming more and more acceptable and this that things like that. I can't give you a full. Uh, description of what yeah yeah i just realized we, uh, we have to drink water before yeah, cool. i'm gonna get some let's get some zamzama -zam, huh? yeah, yeah wait how long do you have till fajr like 20 minutes no, more than that man okay <laughs> you got another one alaikum. Alaikum. where are you from from australia 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 yeah. innit man like hablos yeah cuz brother, uh. brother. <laughs> okay <laughs> second. Oh, hold on my, my phone is messed up i have the battery pack in there oh, wait, one more mm -hmm. yeah because the right side yeah there we go. 
Thanks, bro. Salam alaikum. Allah bless you, bro. You got some zam zam. Best thing to hydrate with, innit? Absolutely. I don't drink anything but that. Actually, tell a lie. I just drank a Mirinda. That's a fact. Oh? Who? Drink a beer? Mirinda, bro. Who said? Well, how can you even get beer in this country? In in, in this city as well. Oh, so what's a Mirinda? You don't know what? Oh, come on. Is this some British, like, I'm UK mandem thing? What do you mean? They sell it here. Oh. In Saudi, it's popular. I want a biswak right now. You want a miswak? Miswak, the, the... i got a fresh one in my back here. Oh, do you? Yeah, well, like, I In it. One. Can I have it? Yeah, of course. I don't know how to use it. I'm not... I'm a bit skeptical about using oh, it. Oh, you're a fake Muslim. I, I see, I know. <laughs> I'm <laughs> joking, I'm joking. That, that's what they call me. Who calls you that? Everybody. No, don't listen to them, bro. You only listen to your Lord. That's it. That's for you. Fresh sealed. I'm not opened it. Nothing. Fresh. Fresh. This is a, a, a big boy right here. That's it. It's a, Someone gifted me that, but I didn't open it. I just had it in my bag. All thanks, bro. I have not been through this gate. Okay, try pot off. Yeah, you gotta hold your. You gotta take off your shoes too when you come in here. Oh yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Oh, the stairs are here. Let's, let's go upstairs. Yeah. I know. I just want to show them inside a little bit. Yeah, I'll get some here. Best water in the world. Time we gotta fast. This is the last time we have to do this. Yeah, I mean, you, you can fast the six plus after shower, patch, after you can't believe. We're gonna do salon. How you doing, bro? Good, bro. You, you want some zanzan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want some zanzan? Yeah, I'll get you one. Here, bro. What's your name? Lee. Here, bro. And Lee. Drink up. Cheers. Slam it. Are you live right now? Yeah. I'm <laughs> Look how beautiful it is here, huh? How's everybody doing? Good. Doing good. Nice to meet you too, man. Allah bless you. Uh, Fajr? Yeah. Wait, oh, what do you call it? No, Tahajjud actually. Why, why do you call it that? It's right here. Tahajjud prayer. It's like uh, the prayer for. Uh, Wait, is this the stairs to go up? I mean, there's stairs here. Here, let's try. After you, mate. Is this the girls' entrance or something? I don't know. I wouldn't go up This goes up to the roof? Yeah, it goes upstairs. What? Africa? I think it's on the roof. You want to see the roof? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Adol's doing that too, he's sleep sleeping in there. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Have you got wudu? Yeah. Uh, yes. Wait, did I? If you go to the bathroom, then you're. Yeah, no, I don't think I did. Haji, Haji. Haji, Haji. 
That's you now. You're a Nah, I didn't do Hajj. I've done Umrah. You've done Umrah, but you're still you. They're still class you as a pilgrim, innit? Yeah, but you need to do actual Hajj. Well, you can do that, man. Best place to read Quran chat right here. <laughs> what the? Is this where they assassinate Kufar? I need to get a prayer mat like that. It's like come to. Do you want this? No, 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 too much, too much. I swear I don't take it. I know someone gave this to me. Well, I someone did gave this to me. No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I just don't want it for now, but I, I can't fit in my suitcase. Haram library. That's you, chat. This is you. Haji, Haji. Oh shit. Let's go before he gets rid of me for my tattoos. Bro, I don't want to get arrested. I saw, I saw the video of the Somali keep calling you a kafir. Yeah. That killed me. What like he said to like kafir, kafir. Yeah, yeah. Bro, the kids are like roasting me for my tattoos all day. I and you just cooked. ate it. Huh? And you just got cooked. It's like, it like a three-year-old kid. Oh! Like kid, what do you want me to do? Hit him? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> like beat a random African bald kid? Like, there's like four of them too. Why I did you have to emphasize on his ethnicity though? Uh, because uh, it was funny. Like a bald black kid is just funny. Like, Kufan, Kufan. <laughs> it's just funny like that. And it was like, I did chase him down. I didn't let him do that. I chased him down. Plus, I'm a reaper, so the word Kufan doesn't hit to me like it does for other people. Does it bother you this what? You nah, it. it doesn't bother me. Nah, not I, even a bit. Nah. It's annoying when the police, like, like I'm streaming here, like, we're giving good dawah, and then they interrupt. How many people are watching back right now? Uh, 6.5, I don't know. Something like 6.5. That's too many, man. That's too much social media exposure. Yeah. There's 6,000 eyes on you right now. I, I, I'm eight, I have 89 following yeah. followers on Instagram. That's they're, they're, they're learning they will not tell you. Yeah, that's, no, that's the whole point of this. I'm oh, showing Islam in a good light. Yeah. Especially for the Americans. Well, if we were terrorists, there's two billion of us. The world would be caught. <laughs> the world would be caught. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine if we were in this was the time of the Prophet. And we had Walid. Salah alayhi wa sallam. Oh, Zawad. Oh, okay. Yes, he did come. So people are sleeping every day here? You want to put your thumb on? No, I'll just carry him with me. No, no, you don't put your thumb on. Guess how much these cost, bro? Two grand. It's like two less than that. Like $700. dollars Okay. Seven hundred. You said yeah. that like it's nothing. Yeah, I know I'm rich now. Wait, but so everyone just sleeps here this whole time? Alhamdulillah, Do you want to sit back here? Um. Where do you want to sit? Um. Oh no, here. I'm meeting Adele. Oh, there he is. Is that him? So, wait, can you, can you hold this on me? Just point it at me. I need to go text uh, Adel. Any any big guy with a beard? Any? Where he? It won't. He looks just like that guy in the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watching. Oh, you know who he does? Yeah. Man said he should be watching the stream. That's jokes. I'm here. I used to watch his videos when I was small. Now Adil, I, I, I clocked Adil from TikTok, man. His his content was actually quite helpful. Oh, really? Yeah. Wallahi. Good brother, good brother. And he, yo, I seen him, I seen him debating bare, like, I seen him debate one transgender, Donny. Well, that was nuts. Why would you talk to him? Do you live in London? Nah, I live in, I live in uh, Manchester. Uh, I live in London. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long have you been there? Bro, I've been there like uh, two years. MashaAllah. Yeah, yeah. And where did you move from? Switzerland. Okay, yeah, MashaAllah. Yeah, I speak French as well. MashaAllah. Where did you pass on to? Ah. It's Muslim for Yo, wait, one thing. Where are you from ethnicity wise? Where am I from? Filipino. Yeah. Yeah, no, not just that. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I took even the, the Swiss passport for you. Yeah, I took Swiss passport. It was before I only had a Yemeni passport. I'm, I'm Yemeni, you know. Originally. Yeah. Oh, where should I tell Otto that we are? Let me hold this. Sorry. I was, I was Yemeni. Bad cameraman. That's okay. We used to, we used to, I used to have like always problems with the airport. It took me to have this feeling, like the whole ISIS thing. Yeah. I would get like very. Actually, my last name is Islam. <laughs> yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So I, I used, I used to have like uh, problems all the time in the airport. Yeah. They always stop me. We yeah. get like interrogated for nothing because I was from Yemen, you know. Yeah. You wanted to do a room. So I had to like. Uh, I'll post up right here. 
I'm gonna post up here. Well, so everyone's been sleeping here every day. Yeah, it's, it's it's mainly, in, mainly in these little hooks. Mainly in these little hooks. Okay, Adil's coming right now. How do you say his name? Adil. 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 Adele. We're like rolling in the deep? Adele, bro. Oh. Like, hello? Nah, that's the, that's the singer, bro. Oh, my oh, bad. Sorry. You can't sing. Yeah, so, you, can't be, you can't be singing the words of a chapter, bro. True. <laughs> true, true, true. Why are you, are you growing out your beard? Huh? Growing out? Yeah. You look good, inshallah. Inshallah. Asian beards don't look good. I'm not gonna compare. Chill out. He's funny, bro. Okay, yeah, he knows where we are. We're right by the tower, so. Yeah, so I've tried to, so Just use it for now. Let me go do wudu. Use this. Okay, cool. I'll sit right here. No, I'm fine. I can get it out here. Oh, I use Umbra more. I don't even do wudu with that no more. Allah, Khan. Really? Yeah. Because yeah. it just feels... The new bid'ah. Not even bid'ah. I'm kidding, I'm it kidding. Feels, it feels pure. Like, well, I'm trying to explain on this. Did you have the bid'ah solution? Please. Oh, bro, I didn't do. I didn't. I need to make wudu. After the Muhammad Ajab podcast, I did go. I, I took a. I went to the bathroom. Uh, you think Allah will care? Oh, what if you don't do wudu? Yeah. Yo, listen. I'm, of course he will care. He'll be counted. In I know. I'm joking. I'm joking. I will. I'll, I'll go. <laughs> Just give me. Give me like two minutes. I'll wait for Adol to come down and then we'll go. Well, one brother is already here. Hey. Well, like him salam. <laughs> What's poppin'? <laughs> How are you? How are you? How are you, bro? How are you, bro? Yo, there's a bottle of water if you want to use it. A bottle of water? A bottle of water. Yeah. 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 Wait, so you can make one do this right there by the... Yeah, bro. You can do it anywhere, bro. Huh? You can do it anywhere. Like, multiple uses on the floor. Really? Just on the floor? No, you don't even need water. You don't even need water. Huh? You don't even need water. You can use dirt. Yeah. Like no, I thought you were the police just now, bro. <laughs> but look where he's dressed, look the way he's stepping. I thought you were grabbing uh, my tattoos brother, here. Brother, brother, oh, <laughs> I had enough. Brother. Yeah, but how you doing, man? Alhamdulillah, man. How, how's your day? Um, you're going you're gonna to fall. I am? I'm posing. I'm just showing yeah. you. Want me to get up for a second? Okay. Get you some. No, you you know, have, can you yap to them? I'm going to go make wudu real quick. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'll do it canceled again, bro. Probably, uh, cancel him off the rumble. Assalamu <laughs> <laughs> alaikum. Yeah, so what happened? Who are you? Huh? Who are you? What do you mean? I was just at a podcast with Muhammad Salam. Talk to Muhammad Salam. Salam, he's like, he asked me, he asked me. Okay. Just podcast with Muhammad Ajab and then just flying around. He was where, online? No, no, no. He came to the, I got a hotel to do it. Oh, he's here? Yeah, he's here. Where is he? He went to sleep now. He's super tired. Sorry, everyone's tired. I'm super tired too. What you up to? Last day, right? How you doing? Last day. Exhausted? Exhausted. exhausted. I didn't sleep. Sorry. Where's the salon? <laughs> What's the... Yo, bro. Please, bro. Oh, that was very tiring. Even though I took the escapees, but it was very tiring. Hey, welcome, man. Where, where, where are you coming from? Uh, I'm from, uh, from South Africa. You just ran from South Africa? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty true. Man. I, I was pull up, pull up, pull up. They can't see you. Stand, stand over here. Uh, so, I was here. When I kept watching the stream, I ran around. All the way around to the point where I saw you going up the stairs. I saw I usually came here, so I came up the stairs. And I oh, it's Mohammed. Well. <laughs> nice to meet you. Can, can, can I get a picture, please? Yeah, sure. So how's it been overall? Like uh, sleeping here and everything? It's hard, man. Why well, are you guys doing it to cough as well? Yeah, it's tough, man. Really? No yeah. food. You're right. doing it at the job? No, I Wait, wish. I wish. wish. You're, really, you're really sounded like, you like one thing, on, on, thing you say to the chat. Um, come to Umrah and come to Medina. It's the best thing ever. Mashallah. Okay. Yes, sir. Right, See you soon. Shout See you in John, inshallah. What? What's wrong with that? <laughs> it's not nice. Not it's nice. Living? Huh? Why would you not want to see him while he's living? Because he's going to breathe loud. <laughs> Wait, are you coming back? I got this papers. <laughs> yeah, Why is it always winning? <laughs> I don't know, bro. He's, He's probably got to catch up with his family. Um, but yeah, okay. so how was the experience overall of being? He needs to do wudu. Yeah, I do. I do. How, how long do we have to fajr? You have a lot of time. Okay, we're good. No, I was, uh, it's crazy. Like imagine you're sleeping on the ground with like 
Bro, let, let, me, let me show you how, how many people are there. Like, bro, like, I, I don't actually think you understand. Look how many people. This is where we sleep. Looks like a refugee camp. <laughs> bro, people stepping on you while you sleep? Yeah. People step on your face, step on your food, step on... Yo, it's crazy, bro. Like, let's... And so, you have barely any space to sleep. You have, you know, barely any food. And like yogurt and bread and... Yeah, it's, it's good. Wait, it's you been eating yogurt and bread? Huh? Yeah. It's good, but after like four or five days, it's like... You, like yeah, you guys haven't had chicken? I mean, listen. Oh, okay. We're not going to disclose any information, but we might have sent some people to get us some food. <laughs> but we're not supposed to have any chicken. Is that legal, Islamically? Uh, yeah, no, no. Oh, yeah, you no, guys no, no, us getting out. No, no, like we sent people. We sent people to get food to us. No, no, we can't get out. You guys are eating just yogurt and... Yeah, we eat whatever they give us here. No, no, no. What are you eating? What am I eating? He's eating good, I can tell. Yeah. What you do you mean? You, you call me fat? No, no, no. no. I can hear by your voice. <laughs> well, I've, I've, I've been exhausted. I've been actually complaining too much about like the lag. I've been, I've been really tired. I'm ready for this to be over. Yeah, but honestly, oh, like, uh, that the head is all better. I saw some, some, some feminists getting mad at you. <laughs> what did you do, bro? You're getting me too right now. I, I thought women that's are smart. <laughs> we're defending the women too. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, they, that's, that's hey, bro. That's the whole you point know, of this. You know what's so crazy? Saying, you try to white knight, they're gonna stab that, you. That, that same sister sent me a message. She's that's like, me. look, my first instinct is to believe women and then so to check stupid. for the facts. So stupid. I'm like, so you tried to expose me and then check if I was true. So stupid. She's like, no, I wasn't trying to expose you. I was just trying to distance myself from you. I'm like, you could just delete. You just the, don't the, the just video. shut up. Yeah, just don't. Like, I didn't want to endorse you. I'm like, I don't need an endorse. I like, I wasn't looking for I anybody know. to support me. <laughs> yeah. Like, I wasn't looking for backup. Hey, brother, it's almost like women need guidance. It's almost <laughs> like women are easily manipulated, and women think emotionally, and they need a man to explain so, to them so, how to so, think. So, so this is where I think you got it confused. Not how to think, but how to between guidance and influence. I don't think women get guidance from men. Yes, they get influenced by men, but guidance is from Allah. It always has to be from Allah. If you say it's from anybody other than Allah, it's not proper. Guidance? Yeah, guidance. Just the word guidance is specific to Allah alone. No, no, like, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says specifically to the Prophet, you can guide whoever you love. Verily, Allah guides whoever he wills. So therefore, you assuming that the guidance comes from other than Allah is problematic. Influence could come from men, sure. Okay, th th that I'll, I'll say, like, um, women taking their shahadas and becoming Muslim, that's majority women. I don't want to detract that at all. That was incorrect. What is correct and what I really meant, the bigger point, is that men should take the responsibility to guide women. Well, men and women should Religiously, take spiritually, like, we need to go and take charge because, like, even, I think that the girl who's, like, accusing me, I don't even know what she's accusing you of. <laughs> she's, like, she, she didn't even oh, say what it is. She's, she like, doesn't even know herself, I saw, by the way. Because I asked her. I have the DMs. I'll show you, but I don't want to post it. No, you should show it. You should show no, it. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. He look, should. Look, look, she's look. accusing him. I, I said so. Honestly, he should because it's part of defending himself. I said, she's doing accusations of their I said, what did I do? She's, like, I don't know. People said you did one, two, three, four. I'm like, what did I do? She's like, apparently you were defending uh, age of kids. No, she's like, oh, you're you're defending uh, underage marriage. I'm like, somebody came to me. He's like, I'm 22 year old. I want to propose to a 17 year old. Is that haram? What's the answer? What's the Islamic answer? No, it's not haram. Is it? Of course. Yeah, yeah, you. It's not haram. Like, there's nothing I could say. Like, I can't lie about the deen, just because you don't like the answer. And also, in the state she was in, it was also legal. It was legal in in the state, in the state, in the state of like, you have to ask that question. It's also legal, so so it's legal and it's responsibly correct. Okay, the second one. They said that I said that if a, if a woman doesn't sleep with her husband, it will lead to divorce. I'm just like I'm not saying this. This is the leading marriage counselors that say a lack of intimacy in a marriage will lead to divorce. Like I don't know why you're upset at me. Like it's it's like if I the, said a the lack of problem is the, is the is the infiltration of feminism within Islam and with these uh, these conservative ideologies. Like Islam is perfect. No Muslim is perfect. I make mistakes. Women make mistakes. We make mistakes. Islam is perfect. But when feminists try to infiltrate and they bring those Western lies, like that's what I was talking about when before that before you got canceled, I was saying <laughs> <laughs> which you did. If we're gonna be honest, the same people that you're defending ended up canceling you. Um, you they know, have I found this that idea. so crazy, subhanAllah. That's what happens when you white knight. Because when no, I, but the, the but thing the is, is, I don't care. Because like, look, even if no girl defends me, my, my, I was defending Islam. My point was Islamic. Give me a second, give me a second bro. Um, my point was Islamic. It wasn't, uh, it was like, if all the girls still hated me, my point still stands. I still think that we can't say guidance comes from men. That's why.
why I don't actually care to cater not religious speak. guidance, but over, like worldly guidance. No, you mean you mean influence? I have no problem with influence being okay. You could say men have more influence because maybe you like they control more things. Fine, bro. Th but this I don't lady, necessarily even she agree. genuinely believes that we should believe all women. Do you know how stupid that is? That's like no, don't there's believe no don't all. believe anyone until no. there's actual evidence. <laughs> you, like what does that have to do with believing women? Women are like switch up. They don't even know what to eat for lunch. No, but you know, know what's crazy? You on an no, 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 that's <laughs> messed up. No, it's not. not. What, what, well, no, what, it's what not. Hurt me? <laughs> well, hold on, hold on. When you, you take a, a girl out, like they never like. I don't know. It's you know what hurt me? What? You know what hurt me? What she posted that post. Then she DM'd me because I'm like, yo, expose me if you're truthful. Bro, we're in Medina. You're insulting me. Yo, I'm gonna make dua from for Allah to 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 protect me. Allah got her. So then she messaged me. She's like, yo, I'm, again, I'll show you the messages after. She's like, yo, I don't, I'm, that's what they told me. I said, okay, but like, what's your proof? She's like, I, I'm, a, I'm a medical professional. So I, I, I my instinct. I'm a medical eth ethicist? Uh, I don't know. She's like, my first instinct is to believe women, then to see the truth. That's just stupid. I'm like, okay, you just told the whole world. Take I did. a degree away. Bro, she's like, I just did sexual, uh, uh, inappropriate uh, misconduct. Uh, misconduct. I'm like, what do you, and then, and she's like, no, 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 I'm not accusing you. I'm like, right. you, so basically what you're saying was, I was right. Bro, but that's the problem. But you know what my problem was? <laughs> With her doing that one thing, it gave people like you the, the being like, okay, yeah, you see, this is why we need what we need. Am I wrong? But then, but, <laughs> but then, but then uh, the same way that girls believe that men create feminism, I believe some women create men's retinal. Yeah, the, for sure. The extremist men create feminists and the extremist women create retinal. Or the bigger point is, Zionists created feminism and then red pill was created by men who are tired of feminism. Feminism is a. Uh, I think we just need to stick to Islam. Islam. We can't. We can't. Of course we do. Of course we, we do. need to not and, lean towards. And you, you know what you made me realize? Like I do still have some of that, and that's what I think some people should be more a little like. Uh, bro, oh, can oh, I say oh, one thing? Let me finish, finish first. This is my first Ramadan. It's my first Eid coming up. For, for people to think that like I'm gonna be a shake automatically, I'm still learning. Like I still have a lot of red pill ideology that, admittedly, I need to get rid of. You know, that's it's not perfect. That's, and that's the most even some things on the stream, I've said some things like just now. I'm like probably should dial that back. Bro, you know what was so crazy? I was looking at some of the comments under these posts. Bro, listen, you could say what he said was stupid. Fine, that's mess like not the nicest way. But I saw comments of let him kill himself. Oh yeah, let him shoot himself. About him, someone oh, Allah said. Feminist women said, "May Allah destroy him in this life and the next." Did you see that? Bro, no. I, I didn't oh, see no, that. No, I saw. No, I saw. No, no, no. Why? Why is he not? Why? Why did he allow him to accept Islam? Why doesn't he not leave Islam? I'm like, but isn't that? I'm like, you, 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 you don't like one point of his. You want him to end up in hellfire for eternity? <laughs> like, like, hey, it's almost like women. Don't make sense without a but, but to be fair, <laughs> men are dirty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Kevin. I'm joking. It's out of pocket. Is like, but what, 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 what I'm saying is, this is what upsets me. It's like, yo, you you think Sneeko is an extreme, then don't go the other extreme. When the Prophet ﷺ, the people of Mecca just converted to Islam, he went out to, he wanted to go to Ta'if, he wanted he's going to war. They saw a tree. There's a tree that they used to put like swords on, and then people kind of like, it's good luck charm. It's a good luck charm. So they came to the Prophet ﷺ, new converts. They said, Ya Rasulullah, ja'alna dhata anwat ka, kama kana dhata um, uh, make, make, Let us have a dhata anwat. That, that's the tree it was called. Let us have a good luck charm, like we used to have a good luck charm. The Prophet ﷺ said, what you said is like what the people of Moses said. Oh, oh, this golden calf. This is kufr. But the Prophet excused them because they're new Muslims. They're new Muslims. They just, like they just converted. Like you guys have to understand, you can't put everybody... Yes. It's my first Ramadan. Like, like, but that's the problem. Like, our, the same prophet that they try, like the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to refer to when he was gentle and ha with with people that were with women, he was also gentle with men. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says in the Quran, He says, "Muhammad Rasulullah, wa al-ladina ma'ahu ashidai ala al-kuffar, rahmat bainum." Muhammad is the prophet of Allah. So that prophet that you're referring to, Allah saying he's the prophet of Allah, and the people with him are soft and kind towards believers and harsh towards disbelievers. How many of these people agree with people that are kafir, complete kafir? Oh, they're so nice to kafir. They're so like gentle. Oh, what will the non-Muslims say? Who cares? Oh, kafir will insult Islam, like, oh guys, don't, don't insult them back. And then when a Muslim makes one small mistake, everyone hops on him. will make kufr. Yeah. Like, SubhanAllah, there's no rahmah between each other. And in Ramadan as well. That's why you're best off just doing what you're doing right now. Yeah, I'm just going to keep just on giving zakat, giving dawah. I'm actually surprised too, and I'm going to like pat myself on the shoulder a little bit. 
we need a hundred thousand dollars with Project Guitar. That was last week. Mashallah, we smashed the goal of sixty thousand. And I'm not seeing any of these like Starbucks feminist Adabi girls talk about that. Like we talk about, oh, let's like, make a joke about Gaza. Well, I gave a hundred thousand because of the love speech community. We're able to. If you actually saw the people that were being fed, and I, I, I no, I'm just saying, like, not to. I, I want to say something. A lot quickly, of people... quickly, not to pat myself on the back about it, but I think that's that's a more important thing to highlight with your use of Twitter. If we're gonna try to like you know get to some conclusion and we try to spread something that's good, why don't you talk about the good that I'm doing as well? The people that are accepting Islam because of these streams. The people that are. You know, I've actually seen a lot of Muslims, like born Muslims, say that these streams from a revert, it's helping them stay on Dean. I agree. But a lot of people said, like, and I saw, they're like, why are these Dawa bros giving Sneeko a platform? I'm like, do you guys realize Sneeko is giving us the platform right now? Like, Sneeko is putting us Dawa guys on his stream. We're not, like, he's the one giving us yeah, he's an the audience. One, he's he's carrying the whole to Islam. So I'm like, what, like, you guys clearly don't even understand what he's doing. Just the fact that he's letting these Muslim guys talk to spread Islam. We're not putting him on our platforms. He's really putting us on his platform. He's bigger than all of us. And alhamdulillah, look, at the end of the day... And he sacrificed a lot for Islam. Like, I'm sure like he could say wild stuff and get 10 times more views. I'm pretty sure it's harder to grow as Islam. a Muslim. Oh, it is. I can't do The content is so limited. Exactly. Like, who else is doing content in a masjid? Yeah, like, but I could be in a casino right now. I could be with uh, Kufar women. Bro. You know, look that, at some Muslim streamers see. are doing yeah, haram stuff yeah. right now. But that's the thing yeah. is, some Muslim streamers are doing haram stuff right now. The idea is have mercy on Muslims. And I think the people who are cutting up your clips should also choose better clips. Right, than yo, clips. Sneeko gets kicked out for the tattoo. Yeah. No, wow. but that's fine. But they're like, Sneeko and Adil debate. And I'm like, oh, cool. This is. I thought this was a nice conversation. Bro. It was. But well, it, I went bro, that, that's the nature of social media. It is. <laughs> bro, no, I thought it was a nice conversation. It was. Uh, like, of, oh, he destroyed him. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, bro. I'm like, I'll shut him down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Well, that's social media, bro. So you got you to gotta understand what it is. You got to know what people are going to clip up and go viral. But then you just got to stay steadfast and continue to give dawah because eventually people are going to see the truth. Well, ultimately, ultimately, inshallah, like, I believe uh, the most, un and this is the truth, by the way, the same way I don't like the red pill ideology, I believe the most unforgiving group of people are feminist women. And I'm telling you, honestly, they, they don't care. They don't care. Bro, it's just enough. And this is what I find crazy. That same girl called me a predator. <laughs> and I, I found it so mind blowing that in the bro, bro, wallah, in the messages she's like, I didn't see the evidence. Bro, she said I didn't see the evidence. Yeah, well, Allah al Azim, I have the message. Well, she's she said I didn't see it. Then you should <laughs> call it bro, you know actually you know what's crazy? What? After I spoke to her, she removed that picture uh, that, that tweet, then put another tweet, I spoke to Adil and we're good me and him and and he's sincere. <laughs> Then deleted that Allah, to put Allah back that I'm a, that, that well, I'm a how's he gone from there to there? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah they're twin brothers. That's Baz lost my mind. Oh, she, she reposted that she's calling you a predator. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm No, she's like, she's like, oh, I'm sorry. I should have never uh, complied. I was just very scared that somebody's gonna dox me. I'm like, bro, I didn't what? even make a video. Like, 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 I have, bro. I just started on Twitter, and no, really, it just don't even. Let me explain something. You know how this whole situation could have been avoided. Is if I she did not tweet and just made a sandwich instead. That whole oh thing. Oh my. Am I wrong? Oh. If she stayed in the kitchen and she if she was like providing. Is the woman that you had a debate with, is she Muslim? Yes, she is. I with her. I didn't have okay, a debate with her. Am I wrong? She, I'm saying, when if, she accused if she was making she a sandwich, this whole thing would have been avoided. That's she would not have been afraid of being doxxed. <laughs> you would not have been called a predator. No, no, listen, listen. More false information I, I th I would not have been I think what you're saying is a bit crazy. Yeah, no, yeah. What's wrong with what's wrong about what I said? Okay, but she could have been reading Quran. Yeah. Oh, even better. Okay, but, Mashallah. There, but you said sandwich to get a reaction. What's wrong with this? Look, 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 I'm look, hungry, look. bro. You've been eating yogurt for 30 days, bro. You, you deserve a sandwich. Come on. <laughs> the real problem is that she attacked you and then played the victim. That's what I like. Yeah, that's she, that's you know what she tweeted? She's like, I, by the way, thanks for all I'm of you asking attacked. how I am doing. Yeah, thanks I'm doing good. I'm like, you're the one what the hell? putting false claims and accusations. Like, how are you playing the victim now? I hate this. You know, subhanAllah, I actually, I have a couple of, I'm like, yo. I didn't, start, I didn't use my platform. I have a million followers on TikTok. I'm like, I'm, you still didn't see me posting anything. But I will after Ramadan because I don't think that this should ever happen where somebody just freely says somebody is something and says <laughs> I don't have proof. Thank you guys for reaching out to me. I'm doing fine. That was like, crazy. She made it about herself. Exactly. But I will, I, like, like, if she, like, I will, bro, I, I thought she was so sincere. Like, oh, she came up to me. She talked to me. It's like, I'm sorry. Like, it, it, forgive me. I'm like, yeah, no, how much that's it? She said, sorry, Walmart. Then you deleted that and doubled back and called it instead of calling me she actually straight up called me a prick i'm like subhanallah like and all of the in, and i realized something by the way haram 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 yes yes bro yes bro yes bro yes okay brother muslim to deep okay okay look at that one word two words you learned i know a lot more bro i think i think uh 
uh, Muslim sisters need to kind of not <laughs> lean towards left too much and Muslim brothers need to not lean towards right too much and you know find the middle ground I think men and women can't be rough towards each other and I think some extremist women <laughs> cause men to be red pill and some extremist men cause finish. women to be red pill okay the wudu time so do your the cup is it finished I was gonna throw it so overall, the takeaway is that instead of yapping on Twitter, women should make sandwiches. Just so here, clip that part. That's not our takeaway. That's not our takeaway. That's not our takeaway. That's not our takeaway. Why, why do you do that? Huh? Like you do that knowing that everybody's going to be mad. <laughs> oh, you're in the prophet. Hey, you're trying to trick in, in like the last night of Ramadan. In what, what, I didn't say anything haram. It's not haram. So what's wrong? But you said what hurt. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, اِتْبَعْ بِاللَّذِي هِيَ أَحْسَنِ Say what is best. Yeah. That is what's best. That's oh okay, better, better. 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 Okay. How are you doubling down? Okay, okay, okay. No, no. okay how, are how are you doubling down? Okay. down? This could have been, I'm making a joke. She should be reading Quran instead of yapping on Twitter. Sure, that's better. Better? No, that's better. Okay. That's better. And if you finish the Quran, <laughs> you have been hungry, go to the kitchen. Okay. Right. Make it with the Can you hold this for a second? I gotta wash my feet. They're not gonna want to see that. Yeah, entertain them. It's live right now. Entertain them. I didn't know how to do that. Turn the camera on you. I just, I just, come on, wait. So no, no, no. We go away. Uh, say what's up, Jack. What's up, Jack? Where are you from? Uh, India. India. Yeah. Oh, okay, great, great, great. Aren't you guys supposed to be Hindu? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Mashallah, great to meet you. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Is Sheikh Uthman not here? Uh, he's not here. He's going to come soon, inshallah. Tell him to come. Uh, Tell him to come, yeah. Yeah, Sheikh Uthman will be here soon. He's soon. Ready for you. Okay, we'll like it's not. Okay. How are you, bro? Good, bro. Nice we'll to meet you. Nice to meet you here as well. Here as well. Oh, great. Can we get a picture? Okay, well, if you want a picture, then I got to make a picture too. Oh, come on. So, which, that's not fair. Okay, let's take a picture quick. Okay. Okay. Salam alaikum. Sorry, I was reading her, her DM. That she, this is what she said. <sighs> I'm a medical ethics student. My first instinct. What does that even mean? <laughs> a medical <laughs> ethics. She's collecting her degree. She's collecting her degree. Is, is that it a fan? An ethic? Ethicist. Medical, Medical ethicist. ethicist. Okay. My first instinct to believe a sister who claims assault, then inquire if she's she's telling the truth. I'm like, okay. But it seems that until there's full evidence, I cannot accuse you of anything. Before she made a whole 50,000 people saw that she called me a sexual predator. Okay. Alhamdulillah, you were waiting. Like, if you weren't waiting, what? what? <laughs> I'm like, all right. No, look enough. at these dudes, bro. What's up, guys? <laughs> hey, which one's older? Yeah, how older? Wait, oh, what's your guys' names? Abdullah. Abdullah. Wait, did you share uh, bunk beds when you were gr when you were growing up? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Wait, which twin is the favorite of the parents? Is that a haram question? No. Oh, okay, question. okay. Um, wait, who's taller? Same height. Twin off. Wait, which twin wins in a fight? That's that's a good question. Yeah. That's what we want to know. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, okay.
Okay, what about uh, kickboxing? Uh, I never kickboxed. Jiu Jitsu? No, no Jiu Jitsu. Okay, okay. Uh, which one do you think will have more wives? <laughs> no, this one. How old are you guys? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm 17. You're 17? I didn't even look 17. I know, all these guys look like they're 38 years old, man. <laughs> like, bro, you, you look about 56, bro. <laughs> like, you look like Osama bin Laden before he died, bro. <laughs> Is that Laden Rumble or? Yes, yeah, so bro, we could say anything, man. I'm 21. You're 21? What's yeah. Lacey? Yeah, same thing, man. I'm 24. You're 24? 24. Wait, I'm the oldest one here? I look the youngest, but, or how old are you? I'm 30. Oh, okay. Yo, bro, how old are you? I'm 25. You're 24? Yeah, 24. And he's 30, mashallah. Yeah, I mean, people think we're twins. Are you, well, I, I always get that. When, like... I when I first saw you, when I came to Medina, I saw you on the first year I got here, mashallah. And I saw the both of you. Nah, people always like think twins. we're twins. Always. I like, nah, that's crazy. Did you eat suhoor or not? Not really. Do you have time to eat? Uh, you have like, you have a You have a Huh? I don't. Yo, so how, what would you talk about with hijab? Um... Everything we talked about feminism. Did about, you talk about that whole podcast where yeah, we did. We did. He, uh, he didn't stay silent, bro. In that clip, he was. <laughs> like, no, but that was the, that was the clip. Is that he stayed silent? I mean, like that's what the clip. No, the whole of, of I know, the bro. It's crazy. He, like, yeah, of course he talked about it. Um, and I, I told I told him about um, you getting accused and stuff too. Really? What do yeah. you say? Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did he? Did he? Okay. What do you say, Mr. OCD? Huh? Uh, what do you say? He said stuff. I, I was tired. I'm not really? gonna. He said stuff. He said some stuff. Yeah. Brother Sneeko, subhanAllah, I'm so proud of you. May Allah multiply your blessings, vouch your strength. Salam alaikum. Thank you, Yo King. Appreciate that. W Real Men, yes, sir. W Brothers in the Hut. Oh, they like you guys. Oh, he said, Talk to them. Talk to the twins, chat. <laughs> what should I ask them? <laughs> Call Neon um, later. I, you think I didn't try? Bro, I, I tried. I, I, don't know. Well, I, I was in Dubai with him and I tried to bring him to Tarawee prayer, but he didn't want to come. Yeah, yeah, so. Bro, everyone wants me to do that. Like, I'm, I'm not, that kid is not my son. Like, we're, we're alone. Oh, wait. Huh? <laughs> All right, Michael Jackson. <laughs> All right, talk to the twins, chat. Talk to the twins. <laughs> Oh, they're saying you guys are like Jake Future. <laughs> you, how are you laughing? You know what that is? <laughs> okay. It just sounds that. Who's Jake Future? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are kind of like... Yeah, how's your boy Myron? Is he coming to Omra or what? Huh? Is Myron coming? No. No. All right. <laughs> huh? Is Myron Muslim? The, off the fresh and fit? Yeah, of course. He's Muslim? He is Muslim, yeah. He's just not on Dean right now. Is he a convert or is he born Muslim? He's born Muslim, he's Sudanese. He's Sudanese, I'm sure. Even you, you say like, oh, look at all the sisters. Bro, read your chats. What? But they keep calling me Fadel, Fagdel. I'm like, no, stop for law. That's what they're calling me. Bro, well, you, you get mad at me for saying sandwich and you're saying faggot. Like, bro, <laughs> they called me this. I'm calling myself this. Don't repeat it, bro. Uh, like uh, salam. Uh, oh, you got a nice kufi. Thank you, brother. Can I have it? No, no, no. Honestly, yeah. No, 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 no. And that's a nice stove, too. This one he doesn't understand. Muslims will give it to you. Yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> look, look, look. It's not even that. I'm not going to lie, speak up. They're calling you. Sit down, sit down. Come here. What's up, man? I'm glad you converted. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Wait, can I ask you a question? Yeah, for sure. Which of these twins wins in a fight? <laughs> Honestly, the big one. <laughs> and keep it open like that. Yeah. Keep it open. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Canada. Canada, okay. okay. Yeah. Toronto? Calgary. That's more north, right? Or west? Yeah. I don't know. Canada sucks. I don't know. Oh, okay. When are you going to get out of there come to Saudi? Inshallah, that's the plan. Once, once crypto explodes, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's plan, once crypto explodes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. we're all going to be broke, bro. <laughs> Wait, isn't crypto haram? Uh, it depends on the coin. The, the yeah, use of the coin. I've seen your video. You're talking about, I, I don't know if it was you or if it was a different creator, but you're talking about how. What's the best crypto? Haram, haram. Okay. They're not because yeah. they have nothing backing them and stuff like so. Yeah, there are some scholars that have, depends on what the coin does. Yes. So any coin sneak was in? What the? <laughs> <laughs> how, how long you guys been? I, I was watching the stream actually earlier today. I kind of I knew you guys were here. So obviously I came to pray, but like. like uh, I don't know why you had. I this. hope so. Like nobody was doubting that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Until you said.
said it. <laughs> oh, what's that called again? How long are you guys here for, though? Until I eat it, inshallah. Until I eat it, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. When are you flying out? Uh, I don't know, bro. I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. And by the way, you guys, can the feminists, like, can you guys slide on the feminists more? When, like, all of Muslim Starbucks Twitter is mad at me, uh, why are you guys all silent? Like, nobody's doing anything. You just, like, all, you just post in the community and then don't do anything to, like, you know, oh, wait, he's actually not a bad person. He gave up a, you know, I gave up a $20 million gambling deal. You know that? I was offered $20 million to gamble for a year. Just click fruit on the screen. Click fruit, 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 and make $20 million. But gambling's haram. So I said no. Wallahi. I said no because it's haram. And the, the, all the, the Starbucks people, they don't yeah, talk about why that. Why did you say that girls have to make that decision? <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they don't have to. I'm saying it's better than like being yapping on Twitter. Yo, listen, you know what's crazy? That's to objective truth. What? Uh, it's crazy to me. And I feel like, especially online, I think people don't see you as a real person. Now, one thing I realized throughout the year, the, the more followers you have, the less people see you as a real person. Is that true? Uh, Is that cop? 10 followers? True. <laughs> <laughs> when I had nine, it was crazy. <laughs> no, do you believe? Do you not believe that? Do you not see that the more followers you have, the less people see you as a real Well, I mean, person? they keep taking all my followers. I'm banned everywhere. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Assalamu alaikum, guys. Where are you from? Uh, huh? Rumar. What's your name? He's from Yemen. Yemen. Yeah. Good to meet you. Assalamu alaikum. Come on. Boom! Yeah! Come on, what's your name? Where are you from? Come here, man. Boom! Come on. Ready, ready? On, on three, boom. One, two, three. Oh. <laughs> what do you mean? They came here, bro. <laughs> Like the thickest view, this, I feel like the best view yeah, of the, just, uh, the whole sunset. The sunrise, the sunrise view right here, over there is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> bro, uh, They're calling you liberal, <laughs> liberal down. It's crazy because I didn't get on TikTok. Gets called the opposite. Of, of I know, liberal. I know. Because we're on Rumble, bro. These people are straight <laughs> up like. like but you know, you know what I realized? Well, I think I got called every name. Got called racist, feminist, yeah, me misogynist. You, bro, I told them like they, they think I hate dogs. Like it doesn't matter. Like what it is. If you tell them something, and I believe that even some of the people that are roasting you, half the time they have wrong Islamic beliefs themselves. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Wallahu alam. I don't even know why you guys are calling liberal. It's just like, bro, you gotta understand, like, my Rumble chat, we got some hardcore people. <laughs> like, a lot of people Yeah, I think a lot of people. Yeah, they're trolling, they're trolling, they're trolling. Okay, uh, this is like Quran study. Can you like, can you carry right now? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm the you grab my revert. So what do you mean Quran study? What do you want? I don't know. Like, so, can you recite? Wait, that guy with the Yemeni hat looks like he has a sick voice. You can tell him. He has a sick voice. Tell him the sick voice right now. Can you? Oh, sorry. Well, do you know how to recite? Like I'm, I, I'm not like I don't have the best to do. It doesn't what? matter, bro. But you look like you, 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 you are, look like you got this. Can you recite? Yeah, I try. Let's do some I, I reciting. Try to focus more on other aspects rather than like tajweed and stuff. But like I, I practice a bit of tajweed too. Drop a couple of verses. Can you guys recite? Okay, we'll put it on the Like, like two, three verses, quick, quick. Okay, quick cool, guys. Yeah, well, he's uh, okay, 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 okay. Well, the I'm twins not, are I'm so not. funny, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, boxers or <laughs> salt and then oh, boxers. Okay, they're so slow. Okay, haram, haram, haram. <laughs> من أبل من أبل. Yo, wait, wait, wait. Muslim The same question I asked Tam. What? And actually, actually, let me record a TikTok with this. My Bruh. question is gonna be simple. Bruh. <laughs> who, do you, who do you think is gonna be the next like popular person to accept Islam? Do you have a name? Don't tell me. I want to actually record it. I'm gonna think of it before I get it. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is the same thing I did with Tam. Like, yo, I want to ask you who you. Think I, know, I have a couple, but they're not cloud enough to go viral. So I need to think of, I need to think of the viral one. Um, Will Smith. Interesting. Yo, what's really interesting is. Tam oh, said, I got one. I got one. I got one. I got one. Can you hold it? Because it's the truth. Well, it's the truth. You ready? Okay. Three, two, one. Sneeko, who do you think is the next famous person to accept Islam? 
Okay, he's upsetting me right now. He called me out to a fight, but I still think he has it in his heart. I think Ryan Garcia is the next Ooh, to come to Islam. Ryan so, Garcia, that would be amazing. That's TikTok. That was a good response. <laughs> I told you, I got the brain, bro. I, okay. I got the TikTok okay. brain. Am I right? Yeah, you're right. When was the last time you've been to the Philippines? Um, when I was like eight years old, a long time ago. I've been to Zamboanga not too long ago. Okay. Mindanao. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Wait, no, sorry, sorry. I want to hear him recite now. My, I, buy, oh, I, yeah, I know it's tough, bro. It's tough. It's tough. <laughs> it's tough. I'm, I'm not so good at reciting. You've got six minutes until the Adan. Six minutes. Let's hear. <laughs> وتكون الجبال كالعهن المنفوش فأما من ثقلت موازينه فهو في عيشة راضية وأما من خفت موازينه فأمه حاوية وما أدراك ما هي نار حامية بارك الله فيك well, I'm not, I'm, I don't have the best recitation. Inshallah. That was great. That was great. Yeah, come on. Where do you put that? That as your screen? Yeah. What is it? Nico. It's really long. Hadi up. Hadi Nico, he wants to recite for you. Right here. Can you recite? Quran, Quran. Did you guys like his voice? Why you putting him on the phone? My guy pretends like he can't hear us. They came here, you know, I'm just asking him. Well, I heard you got some sick voice. <laughs> yeah, come, come, do it, bro. Rate their voice one through ten. Ten out of ten. Thirteen years old. Thirteen? Mashallah. Great. Beautiful. So now the question is, what sort of was he reciting, guys? Okay. Okay. I know this stuff. Yeah, I knew that. Nico Turner, what? How many how many chapters are in the Quran? What do you think? How many chapters? 140. 14. 14? Yeah, I don't know where you got an extra like <laughs> times 10. It's close though, just minus is it. Yo, Nico Turner recites, like, bro. No, 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 no. no. I, I, I just said it's really small. Surat Al Baqarah. It's just too easy. It's too generic. It's like, oh, that's the basics. It is. It's like too normy, you know. Sir, where are you from, bro? Uh, Ronald. Right, come here, my, come here. My, Let's take a photo. My friend, Rian. Do you know me? Yeah. Oh, okay. I watch you. My friend, Rian. Where do I stream? Oh, he's here? He's here. <laughs> come, come, sit down. Yeah, he's, asking, he's asking if you're going to change your name. I was literally just about to ask. Abdullah Ahmed. Oh.
Beautiful, right? I saw your brother like four times today. Yeah. This trip was <laughs> so I can see that. All right, good to see you, man. It's a pleasure, bro. Yeah, I was also saying, bro. Welcome to Islam, man. Right? Thank you. Thank you, bro. Zakala, Zakala. You guys mind if I sit with you? No, we have 40. Happens at Fajr Adhan. Salatu Khairu Min Al-Nawm. What's the difference? It, it says that a, a prayer is better than sleep. Why? Because usually you're sleeping now, right? Uh, so this is the only time in the Adhan that you, you hear this. Fajr every day? Every Fajr Adhan, the difference from every other one is Salatu Khairu Min al Prayer is better than sleep. The other Adhans don't have it. Or guys, what's better, prayer or sleep? Uh, where are you from? Originally Afghanistan, but I'm from California, from San Diego. Oh yeah, yeah you know Sheikh Usman, right? Yeah, yeah, I met him like a month ago. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you go frequently and do uh, Jawa at Baldola? Sometimes, I yeah. went there one time. 
Are you gonna go to Australia with him in the summer? I, I heard him talking about that. He didn't invite me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go. I didn't invite you. I'll go. He said, he said maybe. I asked him, are you gonna go to Australia? Because I have uh, friends over there, and he's like, inshallah, maybe. Shake with me. I'll go. I've never spoken to Sheikh Uthman yet. Very humble guy. Because I had a problem with entering the States for a good while. Wait, which twins do you think are better? These twins? Or these We're twins? Canada. What the heck? What twins? You look like which twins are better? Let's settle it. 2v2 tag team match. Let's settle it. Wait, who, who you got in a 2v2, guys? These twins? Or these twins? Let's settle it. The Palestinians? Palestinians. They're warriors. Honestly, we're probably gonna warriors. They're silent, but I can see they're silent killers. Allah Allah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, Silent but deadly, exactly. Nah, Who do you think wins in a fight? These two? <laughs> These two got it? That's not a fight. That's not a fight. Nah, bro, check this on Twitter. Nah. No, honestly, you know what it is? Some, some people on Twitter are very creative in their research. They use chat GPT. You know that praying right now, this prayer, before the actual prayer, is better than the whole world in Muslim. Like the Prophet said, I'm sure this prayer before Fajr is better than the whole world in Muslim. You will be the wealthiest person. It's not only a wealth, but whatever it is, like it's better than the whole world. Should we do two rakat right now? Yes, sir. Well, how about this time you finish the whole thing, you know? <laughs> you know well, I, he, Fawana was there interrupting me. <laughs> well, I saw the clip. I was like, no, we yeah. did that. I didn't okay, guys, I'm going to end to go pray. Bro, if you skip this prayer, I'm going to call Strickland by the phone. What do you mean? <laughs> he, he, didn't, he didn't work the first time, so no. it's not going to work the second. Stop playing with me. I love you guys so much. Join the Love Speech Community Project of Tell. You guys already know. Love you. See you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Say bye. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Where did the twins go? Hey, say, say bye to them. <laughs> bye, guys. Bye. Love you guys, and I'll see you soon. This is Islamic Brotherhood right here. If you are thinking about becoming Muslim, you're going to find brothers all over the world. Mashallah. No discrimination. Absolutely none. All races from all over, all different walks of life. Look at this. Where else do you see strangers come together and have a conversation like this? Alhamdulillah, it's very beautiful. Love you guys. Bye. Kennedy. Sneaky, do you mind sending a, a video to my little cousin? He's a huge fan.
Damn, I came just in time before he ended the stream. Oh. Alright guys, and I'm just going to leave right now because the stream just ended. And make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, and I will be here every time he goes live, alright? I'm out.